Hi. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna um. There it is. Hi. This is too sad. Hold on. Give me a jam. There we go. Mm. We're going back in time. Hi. How you doing? Um. So, um, we're gonna, um, we're gonna get back to this game. Early boys. I, it's, you know, I'm not early boys. I'm just not as late as I usually am. Hi! Yeah, I'm, 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 I was up early this mor- Thank you. That's very kind of you. Hello. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get going. Uh, uh, I had to get up early this morning. Uh, and take care of some stuff. So, uh... That meant A, I could start stream slightly less late, and it meant B, that I'm a little bit loopy sleep deprived. So, let's jam. Let's do it. It's fine. I, this is not a game that ever requires critical thinking or thinking out of the box. So, we're gonna be fine. It was good. What about Gangplank Galleon? You want Gangplank Galleon on there? Um, but anyway, uh, uh, I'm excited. I have no idea what's going on in this case. Um,. Hope y'all doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh, if you missed last stream, we are uh, deep in the case four, and then we're going we're going back to what happened seven years ago that resulted in Phoenix getting disbadged and and uh, shunned from the profession. What defined him? So, thanks back to the best. Yeah, to play the shitty games that were pretty good. Uh, so I'm excited. Um, hope we're all doing good. Uh, let me, but, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I, my brain is also extra fried because while I was having lunch, I was, I was finishing watching. It took me a couple days to chew through it. Um, but there, there, some of you will know, there's a YouTuber by the, the name of Pan and Koic that does very good Super Mario 64 deep dives into how the game functions and is coded. Um, and they just released a video, a three plus hour long video. Yeah. Um, 50 minutes for going to bed. Have a good snooze soon. Um, I don't know what that is, Jay. Um, is it BZ? Oh, no. No, no, no. No, I want to watch Better Call Saul, but we're very behind on that. Um, I got Kim excited. I, w listen, I want to watch Better Call Saul. I would just, Bath was like, hold on. I want to watch it from season one, episode one. So we're halfway through season one, episode two. It's going to take a while. Um, I know, Co Knight. The entire so the video the video is about the invisible walls in Mario sixty four, which uh, if you're interested, I have a video recommend to you. Uh, he goes into extreme detail on all the various causes of invisible walls in Mario sixty four, as well as every single example. Three hours forty five. Yeah, let me let me find it to drop a link. Um, and uh, uh, it's fascinating and also so vindicating. Uh, there, game's got it. Thank you. Yeah, Pan and Collect 2012 is the name of the channel. Uh, which, dude's been doing amazing stuff for years and years and years. Um, very good Mario 64 channels. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's um, it's wild because I haven't played Mario 64 a million times, but I've played it like maybe like a dozen times in full. Like I've played it quite a lot. Um, and I've played on stream. Uh, I've done like randomizers and races and stuff on stream. And there are so many just like times where you just like walk off a ledge and then Mario does like a weird like stutter or like you're you're running along and then you just get smushed into a pancake for no reason. And you're like, what? There's so many little things that pop up in Mario 64 and that video goes, here is this exact bit of geometry. Here is why weird things happen here and why it's not all the time or why it's every time um i'm not gonna repeat what's in that video because it would take too long but yeah my c4 is poopy zero ten good no it's great and even in the video he's like we love it glitches and all and it's like we do uh it just kind of goes to show um how much of a miracle that game is that it exists because i i the more time that passes the more impressed i am that mario 64 even works at all or frankly, any N64 or early 3D game. Any video game is a miracle, and anyone will tell you that. But like the early 3D games, any of them that are somewhat functioning is just like, 
the amount of hacks and tricks that they had to do to make anything work um, is fascinating to me. And uh, uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff in Mario 64, they get into like, it, the one thing that mildly bothered me is there, there's a few times where he's going to like the code or, or the programming or like, here's what the assumptions the developers made were. And sometimes he's just like, I don't know why they did this. It seems like they could have done it this way. And it's like, they probably had no fucking bandwidth. It was probably, the, the, the hardware is not very powerful. So they had to make all these hacky uh, solutions to be like, yeah, we can't check pixel perfect accuracy for collision. So we're gonna do this more generic kind of test. Um, there's a lot of little things like that where it's like, I'm assuming they had restrictions based off the hardware that prevented them from doing more accurate, more specific kind of checks. Or just like these assumptions of like, yeah, we'll have ceiling hitboxes stretch up into infinity. Why not? What could go wrong? So that's my point, Quasars. The fact that it was so, so early, the first real third person platformer in 3D that wasn't hot garbage and holds up at all is astonishingly uh, astonishing. And and the fact that there's all of these little pockets of weirdness and it's fa and, and the way he does um, uh, the visualizations, uh, it's like in the Mars 64 engine showing like, here's where these pockets of invisible walls are. Here's them running during gameplay. Here's the interactions that can happen. And he shows off, here's things that are used in the tasks. It's also great because throughout the entire thing, he cuts to footage of speedrunners having terrible times. And it's funny every single time. He's like, here's this weird little corner that has this thing that due to things we've talked about creates this invisible wall here. Um, and and you might like run into this and it cuts to a speedrunner just sitting there. You can see that they have like all gold splits. They're like on a really good run, jumping across the thing and then just like bonk flatten and fly into space. And they're like, what the hell? And then he cuts back to his explanation. He's like, so here you can see it's just like, it's so funny. And it's just like, you know, I've never been like hardcore, like I'm trying to do great in Mario 64, but like, yeah, like you, anyone who's playing Mario 64, it was just constantly, it, it like every five minutes in that video for three hours and 15 or 45, whatever it is. Um, did I forget to remove the drama? Does still apply? Does not apply. No, it keeps re-adding itself. And I don't, I added that tag. <laughs> okay. I added that tag for the Hitman stream, like what, a couple weeks ago now? And every time I reload the page, it's re-added itself and I can't get rid of it. I just, I, I, I get rid of it and then save it. Yeah, yeah, Ace Attorney drops, so I don't know. I, th I want to play Hitman. Uh, but anyway, yeah, So, but it's like every every five minutes of that video was like the, the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Leonardo DiCaprio pointing meme. It was just like, wait, I do remember that weird room with the coffins that go up and down and just standing on one and then getting squished somehow underneath it. I, I That's happened like a dozen times. Like it's so many weird little edge cases. Even stuff as specific as like in Bowser in the Fire Sea, the second Bowser level, there's that elevator in the little contained cage um, that, that raises you up. And if you leave, once it gets to the top, if you walk north, if you walk away into the screen, Mario does like a little like, trip he does like a book and he explains why that happens and it's i was just like oh i just assumed there's like a little gap in the geometry there it's like no it's a weird over it's just like it's fascinating so if you're into that kind of stuff definitely recommend uh uh chipping away at it over like a week because it's there's a lot in there um and also if if you have not heard of pan and Colec and you're like that was a fun video definitely go i'm sure it's one of his most viewed videos you look up his um half a press explainer video it's kind of a meme in its own right, but it's it's fascinating. Um, good stuff. Fear jumping out of being poisoned, yeah. So anyway, Dan doing his hitless zooter runs and backflipped onto a coffin got warped, yeah. It's just, N64 games are bonkers. The parallel, them, yes. There's a lot of bits from that video that have kind of become memefied, but it's that guy, there you go. That made the connection, yes. Um, this is very good stuff, very smart dude. Um, the guy did half A presses. Well, yeah, he's part of the, the task community that looks into that kind of stuff. And some of that does come up in the Invisible Walls video where he's like, this invisible wall stretches from the bottom of TikTok clock to halfway up. And we use that to, to reset our position and do uh, perpetual ground pounds to climb up an invisible ladder. And it's just like, it's nuts. It's just showing like, tassers can take advantage of these and do crazy things. And speedrunners, and it cuts to a speed, like, it's not a comedic video, but there's so many parts where it's like just showing back-to-back -back clips of speedrunners flying into walls and just being mad. And then Tasser's doing crazy shit and clipping through space and time. It's just, it's a good time. Anyway, uh, it's good. 
Same schedule will be damned. I recommend breaking up into chunks. It's all broken into chapters in the YouTube chapter system. So I, I, I chipped away at it. It's very good though. Um, so that was fun. Um, yeah, I think, I think we should play the video game. Um, I think some people mentioned in on time early boys chat that we could possibly finish this game today. I don't know if we will or not, but we're approaching the end. I'm assuming case four is the final case. Um, so uh, uh, let's try to get into it because hell, if we can finish, we should try to. So we'll see if we go late. We may, 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 maybe, maybe we can refresh. We should refresh chat. I'll refresh you right now and prove to you it's not working. Here, bam. All right, show show me end quote. Show me the boy. Boom, not working. I could bring in um, the other. I don't. I still don't have it fully set up. But the um, where is? The slime to stream chat. There you go. There, VOD watchers. Now you know what you're missing. Aren't you so glad? <laughs> Aren't you so happy that this is not showing up? Ugh. 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 Go. Get, go away. Go away. Go. Be gone. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't care for that gentleman. I hope he committed crimes. Well, here's... I'm conflicted. Nice. Thank you. I'm conflicted because on the one hand, I hope that he's guilty of every crime, including the current case, as well as what happened seven years ago. But on the other hand, that would mean we have to see more of him. And that would also mean that he has a sprite where he's more upset that we haven't seen, where he's pressured, other than wrapping himself up in a horrendous fashion. Um, so maybe it's for the best that he's, he's, maybe he's innocent and he, we can just move on from that. He's the most cooperative witness. <laughs> he, he, if there was a tier list of cooperative witnesses, he would be up there for sure. That doesn't make, it doesn't endear me to him. It just goes to show that when it comes to an Ace Attorney character, it's not just whether or not they cooperate that, that makes them likable. So, yeah. Better than Dr. Yeah, Dr. Hottie. Who weirdly is still practicing. Practicing? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, never thought I would have missed Lada. Yeah, I, I, as we said last time, though, I think I think Old Bag still takes the tier, the, the, the still takes the win for please never again. I don't want to summon her. I should just get caught up and get in the game. Uh, in between streams, there's some subs and resubs from Shifter087, Kuromoto, Rusty Riley4, Dashira, and Korgiba. Thank you all. I hope you are well. I hope you enjoy the emotes and such. Uh, Unclever title, thanks for a year. Enjoy your mildly Chris Gelnicky. Thanks for the bar perceive. He is perceiving. Speaking of perceiving, um, can you can you tell that I made this VOD thumbnail at like three in the morning when I was like, oh, let me just uh, let me just uh, slap some PNGs together. Take a screenshot of the case, slap some PNGs, done. <laughs> some of my finest work to date. I think. Uh, unclever title, thanks for a year. Uh, Smash by 600 bits. I thought I could rely on Barry not starting for at least another 18 minutes. I'm in the middle of something, BRB, hopefully. Have good luck with your BRB. I mean, listen, I always, almost always take a bit to start stream and then get into the game, so. You got time. Moonwing, thanks for 21 months. Uh, 21 months, really? Gotta take another look at that. Perceive. Thank you. I love the genre of Barry's sleepy ass poor judgment thumbnails. Yeah, the, it, it, like, if I'm fully conscious, I'll be like, time to spend an hour and a half uh, finding the perfect screenshot to encapsulate this, this, uh, this, this stream. And then I'm going to go through and crop things out and add depth and layers that you can't really see when it's a tiny thumbnail, nor does it really matter for the VOD of an old stream. And then when I'm sleep deprived, I'm like, shit, I forgot to make a thumbnail. Then they, then they're, then those are the best ones. So. Mr. Beast, the old snake thumbnail lives forever. Yeah, that ain't never, that ain't never uh, 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 drop it on YouTube. I don't know if I still have it or if I deleted it. Um, I don't even know where I would have saved it because that thing was horrid. Um, they'll be in the Discord. Yes, yeah, somewhere. Uh, I'm going to check real quick if I know where it is because it is funny. <laughs> it's just, it's just bad. It's just really, really bad. Um... Would that be in here? 
Uh, nope. Wait, wait, nope, I found it. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right, well... Okay, uh, um... It's not good. It's bad. Um... So this was the VOD thumbnail that I made for the, the the final part of the MGS4 VODs. Um, and I was in a Discord call making this thumbnail. And I, I'm, I'm, I think, I, I don't think I can blame anyone other than myself for it. But um, this was the, uh, the, 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 the first attempt of VOD thumbnail, which I decided against. I didn't. I didn't think that this would fly. I. I, th I think specifically this is against YouTube's TOS for a thumbnail. The Mr. Beast part, I should say. Um. But anyway. Um. Yeah. The, right. We were talking about the Chrome extension that added Mr. Beast to every thumbnail, and I was like, what would be the worst <laughs> possible thing I could do with this? Uh. Anyway. 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 Let's move on with our lives. Uh. Should've been in a burrito. Good. Should've made him pose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, what the fuck? I can't. And I won't. Uh, Brain Rod is real in here. Thanks for 13 months. Who boy? Give it up for case four, I guess. I hate Brushly so much. It's okay. We're gonna have to deal with seven years ago, Brushly, maybe. Elix, for thanks for having me. In my birthday, here's some bits as is tradition. Happy birthday, Elix. I hope you're doing well. Happy Borf. Thank you for the ham. Not a werewolf. Thanks for a year and a half. Enjoy your very mildly crisp skeleton key. I'm back. Bar proceed. Senator Serbot, thanks for 37 months in a tier three. Let's do the time warp again. It's just a jump to the left and a jump to the right. Put your hands on your jump and your jump inside. Kill a chair, thanks for the raid. Hello. They keep finding different ways to not let Apollo talk to any clients before the trial. This game has been nuts for that, hasn't it? Randomly drop frames. Uh, right now, you should not be getting in. I have not dropped any frames on my end. Four and five match together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it seems like every single case, there's been a different stupid reason for Apollo to not know anything about the case going in. Which is, you know, kind of fun. It's, it's, it's I don't know. I think for my, for my two cents, I, I like there being a lot of variability within the cases. Generally speaking, if it was the same thing every time, it'd be boring. But generally speaking, I, I prefer when you understand the rough outline of the case, and then during the trial, new things come to light that flesh it out in our twists and turns. But when it's just like, you have five seconds to prepare, go, and you're like, I'm learning everything in the courtroom. It's just kind of, it's a different structure, and it's not bad. I just kind of prefer, I prefer having a little more context going in. They like boing, they sure do. Still amazing truth has been accused of murder being arrested. Yeah. Auto's dropping earlier when I was talking about drops enabled tag. Oh, weird. That's strange. I don't know. Um, hopefully it's fine. So since last stream, I did manage to upgrade our internet. Uh, uh, I reached out to the ISP and said, can I have more data, please? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, are there any promos available? And she was like, no. And I was like, cool. Um, so it's cool because I, I, I effectively doubled our down, which is great, and I got 10 more megabits per second up, which, uh, you know, eh, we don't have fiber, so you get what you get. Yeah, that fucking stuff, right? It's just like, oh, you get so much more down. You get a little, a little bit up as a treat. Uh, so yeah, it's great. We love it here. Uh, so hopefully that, that helps. I, I think if there's still too many, like, too much congestion and collisions on the network, it's not really gonna make a difference, but I figured it was worth a shot. Um, hey, Space Melon! Almost caught up, did some art based on a joke? Share in the Discord, what? Where is it? Show me. Is it in Arts and Crafts or somewhere else? Um, do 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 I want to see. Um, oh. Oh, I see. I see. I found it. I'll play some fiber. Please do. <laughs> I would I would love nothing more. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah. Um, let me see. Like, yeah, that's fine. This is what Space Melon made. <laughs> this is very good. It's, it's, uh, 
What would Phoenix Wright do? He's got his little bracelet. It's what gives him strength in court. Oh, we, oh, I just had a thought. We might, if we're seven years ago, even though Kristoff is the prosecuting attorney in the case seven years ago, I wonder, I wonder if some other familiar faces might show up. It seems, it seems likely, but I guess we'll see. Um, no spoilers. This is great, Melon. Thank you. It is delightful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Clavier's prosecutor? I thought it was, I thought it was Kristoff. Kristoff's the defender? I thought Kristoff was also a prosecuting attorney. I thought both of them were. Get 50 appliances a year. Hope we see Gumshoe and Mr. Boy. Yeah. Clavier's a defense attorney, not a prosecutor? Kristoff's the Kristoff was always? Wasn't Kristoff the prosecuting attorney in the first case of this game? Did I misunderstand everything about that case? He was Apollo's boss. He w you're right. He was he was our 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 what what's the word? What it was pain in the I first case. What? I got that all twisted thought. up. I am not having a single thought. The mentor. Yeah. yeah. Have some not I don't know what I'm saying and I'm not having a single thought. That's a very appropriate hammy. Thank you. Um yeah. No. I I, I was trying to think uh, uh I, I keep wanting to say like confidant. Like there's a name for the person who's like off to the side providing support, not just mentor, but like co-counsel. Yeah, like counsel. Um, I told why I I, did, I don't know why I just completely was like, yeah, no, he was standing on the other side of the room. No, he was not. I just my brain retroactively was like, he's the bad guy, but we didn't know that at the time. So yeah, consultant, companion. Yeah, what, what all the all the above. Okay, no, I got it locked. Thank you, chat, for helping me clarify. So okay, yeah, Kristoff was 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 right. He was defense. Clavier's the one who's been, oh, well, as far as we've seen, only prosecuting. So what was his connection in the case seven years ago? I thought that he was the attorney. On, was he the defendant? Defense attorney? I guess we'll find out, because they probably told me and I just forgot. But I'm sure we'll see. Anyway. Senator Sirbot, thanks again for the 37 and the tier 3. Colonel, thanks for soup. Same as it ever was. Having no brain. Oh, shit. I'm running out of time. Arbiter Agent. Uh, sorry. Arbiter Argent. Thanks for 100 bits. Did you know that Brushel is an exaggerated shoot Takumi? In the same interview, the dev said they physically couldn't stand to look at him. Yeah, I believe it. That's rough. That's rough. And you're like, here's my self insert. Everyone goes, ugh. <laughs> That's rough. Nuclear Sun, so thanks for soup. Four minutes before soup. Where's the ghost trick game that's all about preventing soup from getting spilled? You have to just hop through all the different locations around town. It's not just me. What's not just you? We arrested in the first case for something. Soup trick. Yeah. Yeah, soup trick. The shoe blinks like that too. Like, ugh. Uh, five Leisure, thank you for the five bucks. Who's ready for shenanigans? I am ready. Kytastrophe, thanks for 40 months. Main critic, gifted a sub to Zardak134. Welcome to the house. Enjoy the emotes. Thank you, main. Pangolin Montanari, thanks for 10 bits. Hi, Barry. Have a raisin. Thank you. Corkiba, thanks for three months. More shoot to come logic versus bar brain. Yes, please. I think the shoot Takumi logic is going to win, but we'll see. Thank you. Enjoy your silver key. Zoop. Ghost Trick 2 Sizzle's back and he's soup. <laughs> what do you mean I'm soup? Uh, and then Ray's just bouncing around. He's like, I Sizzle, I got good news and bad news. You're soup. And what's the good news? That is the good news. Uh, Smash Brothers for 69 bits. End quote. You know you love him. Agree to disagree. He's not... The worst thing I've ever seen. I'll give him that. Killer Chair, thanks for the raid in 66 months. Enjoy your Kiwi Key. Thank you for five and a half years. That is so many. I hope you had a good stream. Thank you. Space and love. Thanks for 15. Nice. Sup. Boy, Perry, thanks for 68 months. One more month before I am comedically obligated to unsubscribe forever. Let's go. Thank you for 68. I look forward to next month. It was a good time. Nice. What were you up to? Warframe. Nice. Hell yeah. Hope it was good. One day we'll evolve in the soup. It's like the carcinization where everything becomes crab, but uh, soup. Maybe a crab bisque. Uh, brainless, thanks for 45 months. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Thank you. Mr. Max M, thank you for the hammy. You don't even know. You don't even know. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm about to. Appreciate it. I'm already having fun looking at the title screen again. Alan Brass Music, thanks for gifting a sub to a Space Melon. And thank you again for the good Edgeworth art. I appreciate it. And thank you, Alan Bryce. It's very kind of you. And Argento Natsu, thanks for 69 bits. I did my chores early so I can catch the stream. Let's go. We're going to do it. A very good set of images. Shoots coming in the shop. Dog missile. Throw them out. And then I'm going to start the game. Uh, we're going to. Uh, so uh, last time. 
What the hell is happening in this case? Um, a man... A man perished? This is very good. Especially with this music. The real missile! Look how happy he is. That is the man is full of whimsy and wonder looking at that dog. That's good. Yeah, that's good. This is real good. And then one more. Oh! A murder has been committed. He does not look like Brushel. No, Shutsuko, he does not look like Brushel. If he was meant to be based on him, that dude does not have a high opinion of himself. And he shouldn't be that hard on himself. It's good. I like that the, the Shutsukumi, Ghost Trick, Ace Attorney, Key Mash. Forgot how much this got to me. Tumblr is still an enigma to me. But I appreciate it. You can kind of see the resemblance. If you squint really hard. Um, there was a painter by the name of Drew Misham who has has who uh, was has not left his apartment in seven years. Seven years ago, he, but actually his daughter, Vera, forged evidence in the trial that got Phoenix disbarred. Um, and then whoever was like, yeah, thanks for the forged evidence. Here's a stamp with poison on it. Make sure you use that and lick it a whole lot in order to mail me back this information. Um, and instead of using that stamp, they framed it in a very, very tiny picture frame for seven years. And it wasn't until seven years later that uh, urgently Mr. Misham needed to mail something out and used that stamp, thereby poisoning himself during an interview with Brushel. Uh, we don't know what was so important because that envelope has vanished. Uh, I think Brushel took it, but I don't know for certain. Um, and uh, some of that's going to tie into stuff from seven years ago because he forged evidence seven years ago. Also, this is a test of the new juror system. There's apparently a bunch of jurors off-site watching a feed of the courtroom or something, uh, which seems to be important. Um... And Phoenix is responsible for that, and he's the one who decided to bring this whole case to light. So I'm assuming that Phoenix is innocent. I'm assuming that he was set up and was unintentionally using fabricated evidence in order to help the other people. Um, special Force found the envelope. <laughs> Just eat this envelope. Uh, well, yeah, and then Vera uh, collapsed when she was about to give testimony. Um, because she received a light amount of poison. Not enough to kill her. They specified she's just a little bit poisoned, uh, but not not too bad. Um, she's just taking chip damage right now, but she'll be okay. It, the meter's filling up. She'll be fine. Um, so somehow she got, and it takes 15 minutes to go into effect. So somehow she got poisoned during the recess, I guess? Uh, it has to be. I don't think anything would have happened during the trial. Um, Satan was the one to hire her. Did we establish that? It's still poison. It's still good. It's still good. She microdosing poison. Yeah, building up a tolerance. Uh, so yeah, but now we are going to flash back to seven years ago and presumably learn more about what that case exactly was that resulted in having fabricated evidence. Uh, and Phoenix is back on the case because it was playing the old music. So I guess we're going back. She got hit with the Crimson Rod. You got to bring some boluses with you. Yep, you be prepared. Come on, everybody knows that. So anyway... Uh, imagine poisoning yourself, huh? Sips whiskey. Yeah. But this poison I can buy in the store. So it's good for me. Uh, she was about to say who asked for the forged evidence, and she stared at Clavier, right? Which made me think of Kristoff, and I was like, Kristoff was up to no good. Um, which he actually might have been, because we learned in the first case that he's maybe not a great dude. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Um, so, let's, uh, resume. Yeah. I love that I just have a quick way to test to make sure. I mean, I could just do that. Where's the fun in that? Uh, boom, back in. Take me away, shoot to Kumi, to the place with the case. Turnabout succession seven years ago. Trial former. Yeah, this really is a couple cases all mashed up in one. It hasn't reached DL6 levels of shenanigans yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Showdown time. Oh my god, full house. Bellatro. I lost! It's only a game of poker. 
a game I've played for a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Phoenix killed the man. Well, it seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why, yes, over a game of cards. That's how we first met. Hello. Hi, Reb. Thanks for the raid. Weeb's definitely not here. How you doing? I'm glad that Weeb's not here. We just started. I hope you're all well. Um, we, we're f f flashing back seven years ago to find about a case that's affecting our current case and nothing makes sense. Welcome. Hi. Check out my 3DS theme. Anyway. Hi. Seven years ago. Phoenix Wright's final trial. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Thank you. How you doing? Four and a half years is a lot. April 19th, 927 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby, number two. We got the old music. I'm so nostalgic for a game that I played a few months ago. It's been a long time since I felt like such a rookie. Gotta try and relax. Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Enigma. Is this an, like, Riddler situation? Where his name was Ed <laughs> Mr. Ligma? I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. I'm assuming this is Trucy's dad. I, uh, uh, there's only, uh, there's only two characters that this could be in terms of magician men running around in this world. And, and I don't, I don't think it's, uh, Valent in a slightly different getup and different facial hair. Goated fit. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine this isn't Zack and this is some other magician. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand I'm asking the impossible of you. It's Maximum Galactica. He's trying a new look. Well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't, trust me. Whoa, little. Oh, morning, Daddy. I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? Ha, 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 ha. I'm fine as always. This old boy is here to help me after all. That young, that's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. The heck is she talking about? Oh, old boy. Huh, me? Look what he started. Um, uh, here. It seems fate's clock... Of course it's a clock. Will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than ten swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks farewell. Magnifigramry. What's this? The letters of why is this paper ticking? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or some such? Hmm. Not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. That's not important. Notebook page. <gasps> what is in my inventory? What is all that? Well, how you feel about the trial today? Hold on. Ooh. Ooh. No. Oh. Each attorney's badge has a number engraved on the back. No two numbers are the same. So if you drop it, people will know it was you. Better make sure I don't lose mine. My badge. Um, oops. Uh, crime photo. Body found in hospital room. Shot in the forehead? In a hospital room? Oh no! Oh no, it's Stardew Valley Grandpa! They shot him and the clown! Oh man, what the hell is happening? What? What the hell is he doing? They shot the clown and they shot Grandpa. They were filling him up with Mountain Dew. 
On the table is a syringe and a golden golden gun. He was playing Goldeneye. Boy, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Double on his side. It was either the clown or the old man. That's the twist. Uh, content warning and trigger warning for this case. Good to know. Thank you. That's always a generally good idea for these games. They definitely touch on some serious subject matter from time to time. So I appreciate the heads up. Uh, I don't know if there's any more information to give away without spoiling too much, but if you think that might be a problem for you, definitely uh, keep an eye out. Uh, how do you feel about the trial today? Well, you know, I feel about like that. Um, Magnify. That's Magnify? That's the man. That's the magician. That's how he died. Uh, okay. Cause of death: single gunshot to the head. Estimated time of death: 11 to 11:30 p.m. Loss of blood from bullet wound. If, yeah. Is that? Is that how that works? Remarks: Malignant tumor confirmed in victim's liver. Oh. Try to catch it with his teeth. Why are you posing a picture with the gun? I don't. Not the bullet. Yeah, like if you get shot in the heart. And your heart explodes, they're like, yep, blood loss. That's what did him in. Uh, notebook page, we got that. All right, well. That was Henry. 59, that's so many. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And I'm to blame. Well, we'll get through it somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys just before the trial. I know it is a difficult situation I put you in. But allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yeah? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. Ha ha ha! I see you do not understand. You see it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. Impossible? Yes, isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday, and the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can, for their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I'm in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. My client is... Sh Shady? Shady Enigmar. Where have I heard that name before? Known to the world as Zack Grammarie. A wildly popular magician, star of Troop Grammarie. It's it's fascinating that um he's only lost poker twice, both times to a man named Shady. What are the odds? What are the odds? Shady Nasty. His mentor, Magnify Grammarie, was a rare breed of magician. Oh no! Yeah, we'll see. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. The fuck? What? I don't know. I'm trying- I'm like... It could be either he's the same dude or it's someone using that fact to fuck with Phoenix. Don't know. And Zach Grammarie is the sus. April 19th, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number seven. Oh, there's a list right there of the content warnings. Thanks, weeb. It does have spoilers, but if you want to check that, please do. Court is now in session for the trial of Shady Animal. The defense is ready, your honor. Look, he's back. They said, shoot to kill me. Please put Phoenix in the game. And he's like, I don't want to. And he was like, okay, fine. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wow. Huh. Do you think do you think he actually canonically doesn't know how to snap? He thinks you just do this with your fingers. But there's no noise happening. But he just thinks that this is the action, that's what snapping is. He can't. He <laughs> eh. eh. My fingers keep missing. Eh. He makes the noise and goes, snap. Every time. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking, is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is this some new kind of crime? In the DS versions of Apollo Justice, he's reused the old GBA Phoenix. Some of the judge look out of pace with the new character. That's hilarious. People mentioned that the old that the they reused the old judge art in the original version. Was that only for this section? Or is it for the entire game? Because it's kind of genius. 
if they only use the old art for this part of the game where it's a flashback, it's the whole game. That's not as fun. <laughs> to just make the entire game super crunchy and use fewer frames for animation and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, and I noticed that the old court back rooms, the, the, the back rooms, the backgrounds, the, uh, the very off-putting, sickly shade of yellow for the background is back. One of the worst. This is a trial. Yeah. Don't hold corn in the back rooms. You can't stop me. Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts? A Gaviner's concert's got ten times the thrill this gig's got. Who were you again? Clavier, Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started legally. Yeah. Gavin? Defense attorney Christoph Gavin's... Ah, oh, figures my bro's more famous in this part of town. Clavier Gavin. Lead singer for the mega hit band, The Gaviners. You're out of your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. <gasps> How do you know? True, my debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this. Yeah. Joseph Joestar asks, Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up, Herr Attorney Wright. Perhaps you would be so kind as to fill us in on the case. Achtung, baby, time to call on the opening act. What was his name again? Ah, yes, Detective Gumshoe hit it! Yeah, we're back, baby! We're so back, it's so back! We're so back, and you are? Hey, you're the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe? Long time no see. Has it... Has it been long for him, actually? Outside of the flashback, hasn't it been like, maybe a couple months tops? Hey, you! Uh-huh, me? Today's the day, pal. Today I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? He misses him when he's not there. <laughs> What, you normally lack confidence in your testimony? Hey, detective, this is my stage. Can the antics. Huh? All this hey you wing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Uh, very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. So the real hospital, not Hottie's Clinic. The facts are as shrimp as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient to sleep on a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. Not Grandpa. Them's the facts. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifique Grammarie, was a famous man. Yeah, Stardew Grandpa. They put him on the poker table in the hospital room. He had the entire country under his magical spell, as it were. I want to know more about that headstand turtle. It's pretty cool. Ah, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation, you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes, you millennials and your... Lack of interest in magicians, though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Grammarie has made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired magnifique has been in the hospital for the last year. What was it? Uh, a mal, a mal ignorant tutor, or something. Mhm. Mm Millennials killed the magician industry. Sure, fucking did. Doing something to his liver, I think. Yeah. A malignant tumor, perhaps? In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Magnifique's chart added to the court record. Hmm. The facts do seem shrimple enough, but something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door? You're mixing up your classic rock song heaven metaphors. Why shoot him? I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes. In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with a pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. 
I thought they said he was asleep. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Small syringe out of court record. Hmm, I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? I'm assuming he was like updating his will or something. He was like, oh no, what reason could he have had? Very well, detective, because in, in uh, we're not going to have it here. In the present day, we have a letter, presumably from Zach, that has something to do with um, the Magnify, uh, uh, whatchamacallit. They're, he's like, his, like his secrets are copyright or something. Or not, not they're, they're copyright, but they were passed down from Magnify to Zach. And that it took seven years since Zach disappeared from to be declared legally dead. At which point, yeah, the IP, I guess, yeah. Um, and then, and then, uh, uh, Valent was able to then go, okay, now I own the rights, I can legally do his magic tricks. So, yeah, the performance rights, that's a good way of putting it. We got Shady, usually goes by stage name Zach. Magnify was 67, so close. The victim in this case died after being shot in the head while in the hospital. Trucy is 8, already dresses the part of a magician to the hilt. Clavier is 17? Dude is 17. Star prosecutor and leader slash vocalist for the rock group, the Gaviners. Dick Gumshoe 32. Homicide detective of the local precinct in charge of initial investigation. All right. Good. Small syringe. Used for administering insulin shots has been washed and shows no sign of use. You got, you got anything in here? Anything, anything tasty in here? I always hated getting shots. I guess Magnify was giving himself the insulin shots. There's no way I could do that. Wait! If Magnify used this to inject his insulin, why are there no traces of it having been used? Hmm, something to keep in mind. So it hasn't been used, has been washed. Shows no sign of used. And his chart, given three months. Money tumor and liver has progressed to the final stage with no hope of recovery. Patient has three months to live, has chronic diabetes, requires regular insulin. All right. Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting. Yes, sir. That's when chunky insulin syringe. Yeah, I don't know if they're usually that big. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The ball was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Maybe this is a big magic trick. What? You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here the letter in question. Nani the fuck? To my beloved student, Zach. And it's just got a little scribble on there. Very unusual indeed. Let me, let me read it. To my beloved student, Zach. To you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Magnifique Grammarine. Maybe you wanted to make sure it was loaded, and so he fired into the clown to test, but there was a trick to that bullet that wouldn't have actually killed him, and then he used the real bullet to actually shoot him. And the old man's like, you stupid man, I said specifically shoot once. Maybe something like that. No. Game of the boots. You get this from law for seven years, just reload. <laughs> just, you have a save, right? Clowns are notoriously immune to bullets. I think most survived this roll this long. Very unusual indeed. I remember how this case goes. We're gonna go. Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, you cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Herr Attorney. Well, was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for a half hour, starting at 11, 
The victim, Magnify Grammy, was given an IV. I assume that it's something to do with the hospital schedule. An IV? A, a four? There it is in the picture, off to the side of the bed. They filled it up with Mountain Dew. At 11, the doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption. During his IV. Just like he's turning four. He was given a four. Mm -hmm. Very well, shall we begin? Four sounds like death in Japanese case solved. It was the... It was the the, the the nurse at the hospital. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. It's so good to see him again. He looks great. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. What do you mean, dick? Too poor for IV, have to sell for three. <laughs> I'm sorry, your insurance came back. We can only afford a three. Uh, just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he had commanded. It could be a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Fine, I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Two days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. And this letter was sent by the victim. There it is. Gotcha. You're all mine this time, pal. Huh? I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's. No mistake. I see. <laughs> Score one for the boys. Lads, lads, lads. I didn't lose. I was just ascertaining the facts. So why am I so annoyed? But a letter ordering your own death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. <laughs> Back in my day, what? I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, Your Honor. So anyway, I guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. Gumshoe looking in the eye and stall his cop buddies cheering him on. Woo, yeah, Gumshoe! Finally a win! How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Get that noggin cranking. You failed to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. Is he advising that I commit a murder? You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people is bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright. Not up or shut up, pal. Get a blastin'. As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. This photo is so funny to me. Fuck. Most of the time, the, like, scene of the crime photos aren't silly. But this is just... There's... There's so much happening that's just kind of comical about it. Down to those fucking the 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 fight the fucking the the, the 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 sleepy time hat with the ball on the end, which notably has spades all over it because I guess that was his playing card. Mhm. Mm they done killed Mo. They done murdered my boy. I've abandoned my boy. The photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. They're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead, and then there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, he... I have no clue. He didn't pull the trigger. He shot something else. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal. That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. What? And you can prove that with this photo? I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. 
If he didn't shoot the victims for it, what did he shoot? Hmm. Right there. Bam. The crown? Take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead, too. Oh, there's a hole in its forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Ha! And I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll? He was calling his master a clown. It was quite a brutal insult. He didn't just shoot the doll, he shot the doll's forehead. Oh, don't remind me of those commercials. His forehead? Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead, which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. Hair forehead. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead, it definitely looks like it was shot. Bailiff, send someone to investigate this matter. I admit I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead as ordered, but the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown's doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue, yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. You also can't definitively say he did. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. Hold it. Phrasing. So let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim? Hey, not a bad summary, pal. More of a confirmation than a summary, but whatever. That was really more of a confirmation than a summary. But our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. Do these people ever miss a chance to mock me? Well, now that Mr. Wright's gotten that out of his system, shall we continue with the testimony? I don't have time to gather all the details before coming in here. This testimony might be my only source of information. Better pay attention and read this letter carefully. Mo was shot. I'll be fine. Uh, this is shot on the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. Hold it! You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one. It's a funny looking gun, so there's no mistake in it. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullets fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. He gets shot makes a slow, squeaky toy deflation noise. <laughs> Why are you so certain? What pile of sand has your head been stuck in all this time, pal? You never heard of Zack and Valid's quick draw shoot him? What's that? One of the defendant's specialties. Zack and Valent stand on either side of a girl. A female magician? Then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used in their show. Got a great design, huh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls joined the police because of that pistol, I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. <laughs> <laughs> Trope Grammarie stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Uh, it looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is in fact a fingerprint of its own. Yeah, I used that before in trial. Aha! Intriguing point, well made. 
Well, well, not well made, not intriguing. In any case, the court accepts this evidence. Pistol at its court record. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this, but now it's time to return to our testimony. When is the judge's grandchild gonna commit a crime and wind up in here? And then we're like, this is, your honor, this is a clear conflict of interest. Now, now, I will remain as impartial as I am in every case. Which is to say, not at all. Have we ruled out ghosts? Well, I don't know if Maya's in the room with us to prove that ghosts are real. Uh, fires one, real bullet, rifling marks, match bullet found in victim, no fingerprints found. I hope Maya's enjoying a burger in prison somewhere right now. Because we're, we're one for three in terms of re returning characters I want to see. Not that I need to or anything. I'm fine with this, but it would be nice if we get to see Edgeworth and Maya. If you look closely, you can see how the pistol's made the bend here. It's a one-shot only model. I guess this bend is where you load it. So this is the famous Grammar Your Golden Gun. They say kids used to love pretending they had one of these. I wonder if they pretended to miss their targets too. There's no other clues here. That's all we got? That's it? All right. Okay. So I'm supposed to read the letter again. Nope. What's in the letter? I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse. We know the reason why. So what is the contradiction here? Enough times I got details. I'm going to read this letter carefully. Okay. So the new line of dialogue that was added from the photo from shooting the clown was the last bit. So I'm going to focus on that. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim. There's only one bullet. Yeah. Wait, so is that the gun? Does the gun say only holds one bullet? Fires one real bullet. You only got one bullet, gumshoe. Objection! The trickiest cases often seem the shrimplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Uh, yeah, but like I just said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went in. And... Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, your honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah. If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim too. Yarg! Yarg, you may deed. That's not a contradiction, not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Objection! We're back. Where did he get the extra bullets? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. Yark. Things are going really well for us. Oh, never mind. He's laughing now. I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling... Startle, startling record sales. It is startling. And utter lack of humility. Hmm. Ah, what's this? It seems the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Air Detective was just the warm-up act. Yar. Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who you will find can prove one thing for us. That it was Zack Grammarie who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15-minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zach. Court is adjourned. I don't feel all upset or worried about how well this is going so far. Better not be a fucking old bag. <laughs> oh. uh, April 19th, 11, 21 a.m. Lobby number two. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. We've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discover the truth for yourself. Got a lot of faith in your client, in your, in your attorney. Do I feel the dread? Not yet. But I see it rumbling on the horizon. I was thinking of you, you know. 
I think we need less thinking and more talking. That night in the hospital, what really happened? The way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the letter. The one shot in the forehead one, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say. For now, at least. What's this for now business? I have done many things in my life, some well, some poorly. But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? You wanted to know about the night of the incident. Finally, this guy sure likes to take his time getting the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. Ain't that a kick in the nuts? And found there upon his bedside table two pistols. Two? Yes, the one I had used on stage, and the one that had been used by my partner, Valent. Oh, for the Zack and Valent's quick draw thing? Two of them. This is getting out of hand. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. So he was not asleep. It was a test. He had the look of someone asleep. Then I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered then for a moment. You faltered? You mean you thought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So there were other requests you couldn't refuse before. To be honest, I've not always been steadfast, and I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnifi coercing his disciples somehow? Sleeping people breathe. That's not the part I have a problem with. I have a problem with him saying he had the look of someone sleeping. That seems a very specific way of phrasing that. He didn't say he was asleep. He said he looked like he was asleep. Yet in the end, I did not shoot him. I did not. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol I'd fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. Oh yeah, well you look like you're asleep. Yeah, well. I'm asleep. Uh, what were those called? Rifling marks. Yes, well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the case? You mean there's something else you can tell me? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, you are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks. Yes, there is something. My mentor, his eyes opened. What? Magnify grammar ye? The old devil, he was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, he's pissed. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion, maybe five, ten minutes or so. I'm assuming he sent him a letter that said 11.05 and he sent Valent a letter saying like 11.15 or 11.20 or something. Although, if he was... Yeah. If he was trying to test both, all it takes is for him to have shot him in the head, and then Valent shows up, and he's like, what the hell? So, what was his play here? What did you talk about? Ha, Mr. Wright, did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Zach Grammar, he seems pretty steadfast to me, or maybe just stubborn. How do you maintain that crazy-ass mustache? Sheer will. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Once again, I'm in your hands. Right, let's get back in there. April 19th, 11.37 a.m. District Court number, room number seven. Court is back in session. I fell off the swings and have a booboo on my elbow, so I'm in a rather sour mood. I hope both prosecution and defense take note of this. During our recess, a bullet was found in and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news, and the rifling marks. There wasn't time to do a detailed analysis, though they did find the weapon type matches the murder weapon. Can you do a more detailed analysis, please? Hmm, well, that's not very conclusive, is it? My boo-boo requires kisses. One from you, one from you. Whoever gives the better boo-boo kiss wins the case, which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. Your decisive witness. How many times have I heard those words? Though they often turn out to be far less de decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry on my account. I'm quite confident those witnesses will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players in our little production. 
being the other half of the Troop Grammarie's famous duo, Zack and Valent. Valent Grammarie. So we get to meet the great Magnifi's other disciple. He don't have the stash yet. Why do they keep mentioning it as Zack and Valent and the, the two disciples? And every time we've seen a photo, there's also a woman in the middle. And they're like, she was part of the act. They just keep glossing over it. I'm sure she's important, but it's just, the omission is bizarre. Perhaps we'll start by asking your name and occupation. Valens Grammarie, magician. She's a lady, she doesn't get crediting. <laughs> uh, and you're the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow students your partner's guilt. Not playing stream because of music reason, but dang. What, what these... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh... The Mystery Skulls music video. Turntable turnabout. Is good. Fish good. Love me some Mystery Skulls. Fate! The grand illusion filled with traps and tricks. Wait! The shooting took place in that hospital after 11 o'clock that night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is... Mesh. Uh, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. Th that looks very familiar. Wait, that's the same letter Zach Grammer you received. Yes! Or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Look at his fucking stance. <laughs> order, order, order! And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. 11.20, yeah. For it to be a fair contest, you probably should have... I don't know. I don't know. There's not really a way to have them there at the same time and not have it conflict. It just seems like this is entirely dependent on Zack shooting him. That's It's like if Zack shoots him... First of all, I don't know what he's proving. Second of all, if Zack shoots him, then there's no way to know whether or not Valent would have shot him. Unless... 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 I'm thinking, what if it was... I mean, it was a real bullet. Maybe there's some kind of magic situation going on. And if he tried to shoot him, he would have been like, Ah! But now I can talk to you because I know what your intentions were. Except somehow he actually got shot and killed. Real fake bullets. Yeah. We'll see. It's practically the same. The court accepts us in evidence. Because if he shot him and he was like, Oh, but now you're out of the will, my boy. Get out of here. And then 1120, he's back to being asleep with two guns. So, or just the one gun? I am. I'll stop trying to guess what's going on. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks? What exactly was your true grammar you up to? By what you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion here, Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and in so doing, shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there is strain. A warping of relations, you might say. Yet this has nothing to do with the case at hand. By which you mean you're not going to tell us. I mean, it seems relevant, but okay. Which makes me wonder even more about this reason they couldn't refuse. Stage pistols are famous for shooting real bullets. Well, let's get on with the testimony for starters. The defendant, Zach Lamarie, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. From where he, for where he walks, the red roses rise, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though I hardly need to remind you that the evidence could just as clearly point to you as the suspect. The letter, the murder weapon, and now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. Ha 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 ha! As every magician knows, timing is everything! Yes. And now it's time to get this party fired up. Goddamn magicians. That night, I visited the hospital room at the time Magnify requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow students might have received the same instructions. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss 
I gave to the clown. Then I informed the doctor and the police. Because they didn't hear two gunshots inside of a hospital. So you were the one who reported the crime? Indeed. I would think this fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. Classic self-report, man. Come on. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes before the conclusions in this court. But if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Zach Grammery, is guilty. If it wasn't Zach, then the killer was you, Valent. And no disappearing act will get you out of that. That night, I visited the hospital room with the time magnify requested. You have active berry frames again. What do you mean by active berry frames? Like the stream is stuttering and stuff? Yo, uh, what? Where? Where? Who? Wait a minute, pause. Weird. Frames are working fine here. Small stream to the back. Strange. I don't know why that's happening. I haven't dropped any frames on my end. So I don't know if it's on my end or Twitch is having a time. Well, yeah, let me, keep me posted. If it keeps happening, maybe try a different browser or something. I've extended window to go, what? It's true. What? It's, uh, according to the letter, it was 11.20 p.m. Hmm. They're invincibility frames. Yeah, of a sort. Indeed! How did I Weird. I'm sorry about that. I'm not victim blaming. I'm just, if it's not frames dropping, I don't have a clear indication of where the problem is. And sometimes it is an issue with the user's browser or app or something. It's happened before. I'll side brief pause. I'll open more tabs. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we'll suffer a minor. It might be Twitch or weather doing stuff on the internet. Maybe a shark. Maybe. And magic timing is everything. Right. Also, yeah, it's more Twitch blaming, but sometimes streaming is complicated. Uh, consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double has left, how would that look? Why, it would reveal the very secrets of my magic. Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic for all of us, let's move on. Have a good rod. Thanks for hanging. How many berry attacks of Super bar Barmer? You went at the designated time. What did you see? The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. Probably Twitch had it open on TV and have all side of freeze. Hmm. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes? What if the shooter was still nearby? I did not consider this, to be honest. That was quite a reaction. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. Uh, really? Is the magic all about illusions and imagination? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. And now you are the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. The witness will refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding. Judge ain't having any of this. My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. I did not imagine my fellow students might have received the same instructions. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnify wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel, of course. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't all that strong. So which is it? Mind if I continue? You didn't answer my question. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Mwah. Just like this. There were two bullet holes at the scene, one in the victim, one in the clown. You saying, you're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt my partner Zack has said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed a murder. I better dig around here a bit more and see what I turn up. Mr. Valent, let me ask about something else concerning the crime scene, namely, the bullet in the pistol, location of the pistol, number of pistols. Let's go through them in order. The bullet in the pistol. In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was the bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for... 
One never knows when a miracle will be called for. A magician always has seven doves in his pocket and a white rabbit up each sleeve. Clearly, we're dealing with professionals here. <laughs> Clearly. Hmm. Is this bullet that was loaded in the pistol really so important? I mean, let's say no for now. Actually, let me ask about something else. Very well. The witness may continue with the testimony. What can I do but obey? Inform the doctor and the police. Hold on. Actually, yeah. Oops. Might as well. So you informed the police. What did you do then? What do you suppose I did? Use my magic to levitate my mentor's corpse, perhaps? I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Now please answer the question and skip the sarcasm. After I made my report, I called the doctor and we returned to the room. While we waited for the police to arrive, we discussed stomach medicine. We've confirmed this with the doctor. It all checks out. <laughs> he praised Mr. Valen's knowledge of stomach medicine, in fact. Is that going to be important? Ah, uh, it is an honor I do not deserve, but I accept. Both the Magnavi students received the same letter. Both admit to having gone to the hospital that night. Two bullets were fired, and one of them killed Magnavi. Time to find the cracks in his testimony. What if there were three guns, and the third bullet is in the ceiling or something? Tell me about when you kissed the clown. Uh, location of the pistol. Where exactly was the pistol when you entered the room? Atop a small bedside table, it was. As if to say, here I am, take me into your hand, pull my trigger, shoot him. The victim clearly wanted to be shot. But why? Perhaps he wanted to go out with a bang? Hit it, gumshoe! He's on a drum set in the middle of the courtroom. Yet we will never hear the truth from his lips, so all we can do is guess. Hmm. Is the location of the pistol all that important? I don't think so. Probably not. Actually, let me ask about something else. All right. Okay, number of guns. Come on. Gotta be something in there. Yeah, number. How many? How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what, precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zack and Valent quick draw shoot him, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet. Only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? I don't remember. I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol and fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photograph, after all. So you picked up that pistol and fired it. Indeed I did. Alakazam, Alakazing, Alakaboom. Hmm, I also like Pokemon. Is the number of pistols really so important? Yes. The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. Very well. Pretty, please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. Yo, no! Get down, Mr. President! So you took the only pistol there and fired it? That's correct. And that pistol was this one, which was left at the crime scene. Good show! I see you too are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Damn! So, you, do you have any idea what you just said? I see the fire in your eyes as you glare at the witness. So how about heating up this trial a bit? These slow ballads bore me. Hmm, I've got a hunch. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something else. No? The second thought. Let's run with this testimony for a while longer. Hmm, yeah. Can I prove that there were two bullets? Other than... Well, I'm gonna save. Uh... I think we can probably get something with this. We can just be like, hey, the gun only holds one bullet. Meaning there had to have been two guns. Isn't two bullets likelier than two guns? 
Because the implication to his story is he showed up, someone had already been there, and shot him in the head. And then he was like, let me now shoot this clown. And he didn't question if there was another gun. Yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna try it. According to the defendant, Zach Grammer, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on that table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant has some brains in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Valent has told us? You see, there is something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. I shot the clown, but I did not shoot the... Uh, the other clown. That's your story, at least. But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valent. Shot the Magnify. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with a bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. Yeah. Mr. Valent, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Boom. Boom. Bam. Pow. Got him. Order, order, order. Well, this is all rather sudden. <laughs> what have I done? Prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. Uh-huh. But that's not what you told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you now, quite sincerely, I might add. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? You're an attorney, what do you mean? Oops! That was just this morning. I am still young. <laughs> and I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Hmm. Valent Glamoury? Yes, Your Honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness, but you've proven to be more divisive than decisive. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. I was working on that earlier. You'll see in time. The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Is the proof in the pudding? Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Valens entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove, hey, right, the real fight is about to begin. Bring it. Very well. The witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20 p.m. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11.10 p.m. What about, what about the time of death between being between 11 and 11.30? Being in the official autopsy report. Wait, where, why is that not in the autopsy report, then? And the one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Things being a lot more confident. Yeah, it's fun. Those times are rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. To use a ten-minute discrepancy as the basis of your alibi is easy to explain in this situation, eh, Judge? For example, take our debut hit single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Cue to the song, press the play button, and it will play for 2 minutes 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. The debut single is only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long. What a ripoff. Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus Pocus requires admirable focus. And in the means and the time of death determined by the doctors, there is an incontrovertible truth. Very well, the prosecution warns us that we are dealing with rather precise times, and we can expect the cross-examination to require the same level of precision. 
I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad sweeping accusations, lest we blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Baseless remarks will result in a penalty. Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry on, right. Carry on, my wayward son. Carry on these wayward nuts. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is 11, 20 p.m. Can, can I press freely, or am I going to get a penalty just for pressing? Let's find out. Objection, Kansas. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Alas, such a feat may be beyond even the great valent. For there was no one in that room but Magnify, and he was departed after a fashion. I have here defendant Zach Grammer, you sworn deposition. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was ten minutes before I left the room, and the victim was still alive. The time indicated by this letter to Zach was 11.05. Exactly. Which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15. Because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. You see, someone did their arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does that all make sense? Not a problem. That's fine. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so. How old is Phoenix here? 26, 27? So, sounds about right. Let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical thing of all is the truth. Oh. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation and called in the doctor. Doctor! Turn off my clown inhibitors! You walk in on a murder and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request without reason had caused for me to... Caused for me a surfeit of sorrow. For what would I, Valent, be now without him? May the soul of Magnify the Great find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled that lonely trigger. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments, Herr Attorney. May I remind you that basis remarks learn penalties? Proceed with that in mind. Yes, Your Honor. What a pain this is turning out to be. He's 33 seven years from now. Gotcha. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. Hold it. Is Clavier 17? Sure is. Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? Why, yes, I believe he screamed, My God, he's been shot in the head! It doesn't take a doctor to notice that. I believe I would have said much the same thing. And I would have penned the requiem that arose in my soul at that horrid sight. Whatever happened to good old-fashioned investigation? In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting, Mr. Wright. Hey, remind you, base of structure and penalties. What a pain. What a pain. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11, 10 p.m. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually get an estimated time of death, true. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic revels in making the complex appear simple, but the reality is the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The point here is the four the IV the victim was taken. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Recall we heard earlier about the victim, Magnify Grammar's schedule. Every night at 11, Magnify took an IV drip for 30 minutes. Hey, groovy thing. Welcome back. I can see the IV bag right there. Yes. Now look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the bag to the end. Ah, the needle's been removed! Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. What? Huh? What? Fell out when, what? What do you, fell out when he was shot? What do you, <laughs> what the fuck? I, uh, huh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> those shits don't just fall out. No, and there's even tape. There's medical tape, so it was probably taped down on his arm. During his death, he went, whoa, and then he hit the, hit the, the, the tube and it went flying and then taped itself to the, yeah, okay, great, got it. Absolutely, without a doubt. Doubtlessly. All right, good. I hope Phoenix is like, sure, that makes sense. Mm-hmm, that would seem to be the case. 
When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Ah, you could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Precisely. The IV liquid functions for our purposes as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined that the IV had stopped 10 minutes after administration began. The IV bag is a clock! <laughs> Whoa! Shoot Takumi's done it again. IV report. And so it was when I, Valent, entered that room. Ten minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Yeah. 30 minutes required to administer full IV from the amount remaining. IV stopped 10 minutes after administration began. Now, why would he have taken it out? If, if our client's telling the truth, then Zack came in, shot the clown, and then he woke up and he was like, Bro, either you've passed my trial, or he went, you son of a... You were supposed to shoot me in the head. What's wrong with you? And then they chatted for a few minutes, and then the IV was taken out. Because that would have been 11.05 is when he shot the clown. Then there's a five-minute span where they talked about stuff, and then he took out the IV. Either Zack did or Magnify did. But I have no idea why he would have done that. Unless it was some galaxy brain move to be like, this will make Zack seem sus if Valent shoots me. Which he has to do if the clown was shot. If we're working off of magician logic. I don't know. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Did that seem important? Yeah, it's probably important. Yeah, it's probably important. Why well, that's, ten That's like, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Seeing how it's the biggest clue we have to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. Behold the power of arithmetic. Very well. The witness will add this detail to his testimony. Sometimes the most magical thing of all is arithmetic. Okay. The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When first I entered that room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me, next the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then his left arm did I spy a rose drooping and wilted, its thorn the discarded IV needle. Knocked from the vein by the force of the shot, luckily for you. If that IV had not been there, why, you might be a suspect. He is a suspect. Indubitably so. Even if you're saying this in indicates his innocence, he's still a suspect. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Piss yellow. Your lucky color? Indeed, even today I wear it proudly upon my suspect self. He just called himself a suspect. For it always without fail brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valance won their first Magician's Grand Prix, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians, I was adorned in this attire then too, and our trophy, a bust. Ah, oh, what a day that was. This is one trip down memory lane no one needs. My lucky color, yes indeed, and that IV too. I say I think twas huge, especially for me, Valant. Is he saying that it was piss yellow in the... Is, that looks very green to my eye. Does, is he colorblind or am I colorblind? Hmm, that does seem to be the case indeed. Oh wait, no, it's cause the, the IV bag is blue, isn't it? Wait, but why would... Hmm, hmm. So the IV bag is blue, making the piss in there look green. But most people would just go, that's green. So he must have seen the IV fluid outside the bag. Per per presume perhaps when the IV drip was yanked out of his arm or something. Maybe. No. That seems like a sus detail, though. Any thoughts on this testimony? None thoughts, Your Honor. Valen sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this? Lucky color testimony. Uh, are, do they want me to go look, it's green, and then Clavier's gonna be like, actually, the bag is blue, here's the penalty? Shh, 
what are they? Ah, fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it, but... It certainly sounds like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valance, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor, the witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be duly penalized. I do hope this latest accusation is well-based. I assure you, it's utterly based. Your Honor. Don't worry, I've got all your bases right here. Base is loaded. It's based. All your base. Very well. Let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Valent has told us? It's gotta be the photo. It's just gotta be the photo. Um, well, you know, it's green in the bag. Your Honor. Your Honor, if you shrimply look upon this photograph, I believe you will see the detail with which I point to. Your Honor. It's quite based. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene? All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white, clear-cut simplicity. Tell us, Hell Wright, just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure, and I assure you, it's quite trimple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. <laughs> Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? In the bag. Valent Grammarie, let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes? Kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. What mystery? Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Take another look at the photo of the crime scene. Watch this! I like that no sleep berries on a roll. I don't know if it's if it if it's due to lack of sleep, but I feel like this case is deliberately made pretty easy because you're meant to be with Phoenix being like, this case is going great. And then some bullshit's gonna show up that's like, wait, this is impossible. I'm fucked. Now I need to fabricate evidence to get out of here. Confusion doubt. Tell us what do your elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valent. Look at that IV bag. Back. What is this? What foul magic? It would be hard to call the IV liquid yellow. And I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. Ah, uh, Alakaz. Alakaz, no! The bunnies! Oh, there's a lot of bunnies. There's a lot of bunnies. Order, order, order. Gumshoe! Gather the rabbits quickly before they multiply. What does this mean? This This is some kind of mistake. I this is my favorite thing. When the prosecution is confident and immediately snaps into their upset pose. Steals your bunny. This is also when it'd be nice if every shot now just has bunnies like on them in the background. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin, your witness is mistake. The greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. The Valence Grammar, as you reminded us several times. Your lucky color is yellow, but the ivy's clearly not. Well... This contradiction can mean only one thing! And to think, you almost had me. Hmm? I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Pixel. Pi pixel. Pixel. Get right. Get back here this instant. Get back. Get back. I don't. I, you're not leaving. I don't think. But get. Get. Get back here. We need a fight. <laughs> this is so good. This is so fucking good. Oh my god. The guns and the fucking clown. Jesus Christ. Where's that mod for Stardew Valley? <laughs> <laughs> Not Grandpa! The fact that it's animated too is so good. Stardew Bod Wed. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Khan's missing the hole. Well, both guns are still there. That's before the, the guns were shot. <laughs>
He said the line. He said Ace Attorney. He actually, you're right. He did. Is that is that the first? Surely there's another point where they've said Ace Attorney, right? In the game, maybe. Thank you for the bits. I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. TM. Ace Attorney 3 Case 2. Gotcha. Zvari? Oh, does he? Something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. Ah ha ha. Yes, a contradiction. The one that I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. We're back. I think Maya says it at some point. Does she look into the camera and say, What are we, some kind of ace attorney, TM? How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree at a glance, the IV liquid does appear a sort of greenish yellow. That's pretty green. Full stop. That's not a very greenish yellow. Or a yellow green. He's jamming. Hands you a contradiction. Hands you a contradiction. Hmm. He still doesn't know how to snap, but goddamn, he's got the spirit. I'm I'm glad that I was right. I I was I, I I guess this is how these cases go. They don't usually have a contradiction that you point out and they go, "You're being penalized for it." It still moves things forward, even though he's like, "Here's the problem with that." But I'm like, "There's a problem with your problem." I assure you, the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the IV bag itself? The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a... What to say, light blue? Precisely. Figured it out yet? Puts a yellow liquid in a blue bag and... You get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. I see. Your explanation does have the ring of truth to it. As I thought, there's no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. What? You may tell a good tale, but you've just proven something rather grave. For you, that is. Grave? The liquid in the ivy is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know that? Well, he's a magician, and, and there are sticklers for details. It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? <laughs> Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the ivy liquid appears to be green. So let me ask. How did the witness know the ivy liquid was actually yellow? Out of kazoo! Zoo MG! They threw it. They threw a oh my god, in the video game. Order, Mr. Wright. I, you will explain this at once. Zoom G. The witness clearly knew the color of the IV liquid. So I'm sure it means something. But what? Alec, I'm fucked. <laughs> I can think of only one possibility. Your Honor. The witness, Valen Gramley, has testified that the IV liquid was yellow because it looked yellow. He'd seen it before, he knew the liquid's color. These are kind of the same answer. I think it's because he knew the color from something that happened. He'd seen it before, it's too vague. From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. That's not what I said. I picked the third option. But not inside the blue bag we see in the photo. He saw the liquid by itself in a clear, colorless bag. I suppose you would have had to, but I'm still not clear as to what all this means. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the IV liquid's color? Leave the getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny bopper fans, ya? Yeah? The ivy liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. Also, you're a teeny bopper. You're literally 17. You're talking about people who are like three years younger than you. The ivy liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30 minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, 
There's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. But wait, I know! An hourglass uses sand, but an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body. At which point, like magic, it disappears. The human body? A mystery, Your Honor. We don't know how it works. We drink water. Where does it go? Nobody knows. Magic. Ta-da. It's gone. However, what if the amount of ivy liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. He refilled the ivy bag clock to make himself look less sus. Do that again. You should think. Watch as I turn this water into piss before your very eyes! Ta-da! A beer all week, folks. Tell your friends. Let me get this straight, all right? You're saying the witness watered down the victim's IV bag? He's a witch! <laughs> Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Now wait, wait, I said wait! How might an amateur such as myself essay to perform such a test? I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? Mm hmm. He has a point. Amateurs. I, at least, would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I tire of these fairy tales lacking evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? We're firmly on Earth, but I'm gonna save anyway. Because we're on a roll so far. Hey chat, you wanna see another magic trick? I got two rings here. Two of them. And now they're connected. Look at that. Now they're separate again. And now the rings are gone. Don't try that at home. It's really scary. Uh, any solid evidence to bring us back? Uh, Valent Grammar, ye. Game of soup. I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Shit, suggestion? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was the syringe. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I, well, that's, it's probably, I'm thinking it's probably the syringe, because it was cleaned and not used. The victim's syringe. It's the perfect prop for the magically increasing IV trick. And easy enough for an amateur to use. What kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. Exactly. And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? The victim had the syringe to administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. Well, Valent Grammar Yee? As you pointed out yourself, the IV liquid makes the perfect clock. One that you could manipulate at will. Alec... Kazar! Mm hmm Scrunch the old man like a Capri Sun. How do I get more, more IV liquid back into the bag? Roll him up like a toothpaste. And it just goes right back up. <laughs> Alka Bazinga! Uh, I do believe, well, this this being his first. That also explains why the insulin syringe was so big. Because if it was a smaller syringe, it would be like, what, is he gonna do that a billion times to fill it back up? Makes it more plausible. That the burden of this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. Alka, damn it! I'm afraid that while there is a doubt as to the amount of ivy liquid in that bag, the time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to a close for today. 
Yeah, well, okay. Maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this. I can do a little much needed investigation work. Hmm. I see there are no objections. Court is a. <laughs> Truly, there's no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. A word to the wise. Underestimate the young and they'll sweep your feet out from under you. In a way you never ever expected. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. What's he talking about? Me? Thinking? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the IV liquid, but there is no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. <laughs> Phoenix has learned how the judge works. So he's like, I, I, I just have to make him nod and I win. <laughs> Don't, what, what, like, come on. Yes, quite true. Huh? He's admitting it? Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This I admit, after all, why linger in the past when the future holds so much? Why linger in the past when we're in the middle of a seven years ago flashback? You have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin? Proof here, Judge! I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. What's this? Is this the book? Is this the book that's the fabricated evidence? Then why did Phoenix get disbarred for it? What's this? This is the victim Magnifi Grammergy's diary. Diary. After going into the hospital, Magnifi began writing his memoirs, it seems. The story of his birth, his starting de startling debut, and of meeting his disciples. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end, quite appropriately, with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't refuse his last request? Sadly, it does not. What's important here is on the last page. Apparently, the victim wrote in his journal that night, even after the IV had begun at 11 p.m. Let's read it, shall we? Tonight's IV is in. Maybe the last. I leave the rest to them. The first should come soon. This journal may end here or it may go on, but not long. Something. There's very visibly a page torn out, too. Can we use science and do like a charcoal thing to see what was written on the last page? Hmm. This does appear to have been written just before his death. That depends on his hand. All that's left is something. The court accepts this under evidence. More evidence. Read the very last part with particular care. All right, hold on. What? Hey, look, there's a little sim there's a little symbol. Just like we was told there would be. Emma's still in Europe. Damn it! There's no science, huh? Wow. This is the last page. The diary ends here. Huh? What's this? Looks like a page was ripped out. Well, now, isn't that interesting? That. Nah. Alright. Well, I didn't ca catch what the very end of it said. Oh, there it is. All that's left is mine. Uh, to mine? Stop talking over it. All that's left to mine is uh, something down this pen. Lay down this pen. Mm -hmm. Have a good snooze. Nick wanted more investigating. This journal may end here or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. Of course, by his, he refers to our defendant, Zach Grammary. It would make sense, yes. He was the first scheduled visitor, after all. But look at what he said before that. This journal may end here or it may go on. It may go on. Magnify Grammary intended to write again. That is, if Zach Grammary didn't pull the trigger. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on. It ends. There is so blatantly a ripped out page. Because Magnify's life was brought to an end by the defendant, Zach Grammary. Order, order, order! Prosecutor Gavin, are you certain that Magnify Grammary wrote this? There is no mistaking his handwriting. Unless it's a really good forgery. This does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnify did intend to continue his diary. Yet if his diary ended here, which plainly it did, then the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Zach Grammary. Well, how do you like me now, Herr Wright? 
Still too green for your taste, hmm? I think you're looking a bit yellow on account of you being a little coward, yellow belly, filled with piss. Double yellow. He's right about the diary being pretty clear. Still, I find it hard to believe that he'd overlook such an obvious problem with his precious evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony we heard was lacking, but put together with this evidence, it seems quite sufficient for a case. If the diary's accepted like this, the trial's over. Maybe it's time for me to show them something. I'm left with no choice but to show my own evidence. What? Why don't we just point out the ripped page? What other evidence? What? You have some evidence that overturns this diary? Or maybe the evidence that turns it over is the diary. Hmm, it's not too late to rethink this and avoid more embarrassment. I, I, we're winning the case. I don't know what embarrassment you're talking about. I'm not embarrassed, you're embarrassed. Very well, please show us your evidence, Mr. Wright. Incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary I've just shown the... Why? What do you mean? Why? Don't think of showing us this diary I've just shown the court. Now that we've come this far, I hope you have something a little more decisive. You son of... Show us evidence that proves the victim continued writing his diary. But the diary would prove that! Alright, I'd be happy to. The decisive evidence proving the diary didn't end with this page is... Uh, well, uh, uh, um, ha, ha? Is it here? Can I, oh, the page is, the page is torn out in the photo. Did I forgore something? Maybe I forgore something, but first of all, Cheer for Gore. Hold on, chat. Hold on. I'm cooking on something else. I'll get to the other, the back burner in a second. The page is clearly torn out in this photo. Um, so that's also potentially a thing to point out. And he was writing on the left side of the page, which was what we saw in the, in the journal. What did I forget? Let's see. Uh, something else about the diary. His autopsy report. Mysterious paper received before the trial. This is the right side of the diary, isn't it? Is this what I forgore? I didn't forgore. I didn't realize this was part of the diary. Maybe that's it. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it, oh, oh, this is the fabricated evidence. Oh, maybe, maybe. If the journal is legit, but then what we were handed by Trucy was faked, and it's like, well, look, here's the missing page, but that's not actually the missing page. That's pretty sneaky. Okay, what else we got? His chart is fine. The syringe is fine. The other letter, first letter for 1105. First stage pistol, letter for the second guy, IV report. Well, yeah, then it's probably this. Size web is proving the diary because he said don't use the journal. So even if I point to it in the photo, it'd be like, but that's just the same thing. So let's try this. Let's get ourselves disbarred. Take that. First, take a close look at this diary. We just said don't look at the diary. He just said. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. What's this? I hadn't noticed that at all. That's why we're still here talking about this. As it just so happens. I have here what I believe to be the missing page. He said believe. He doesn't know. He said he believes. That's not grounds for disbarment. Alec, I don't believe it. <laughs> He's running out of everything. Check out my badge. Looking at this page, it's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot Magnifique Grammarie. That's the defense's position. Wait, let me see that. What in Sam Hill? Why, this is the continuation of the victim's diary. And if we're like, we believe this is what it is, and the prosecution has nothing to object about it, why would we get this part over it? It's not like he knows this is fake. Note the torn edge of the page. 
It's a perfect match with the torn remnants of the, uh, the torn remains of the last page of Magnifi's diary. Quite remarkable. Would you care to explain what all this means, Sir Attorney? The diary continued after his first visitor came, which means that the victim was still alive after Zach Grammarie left, leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valence Grammarie. No. No! The handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is without a doubt the genuine article. Hey, you little bits. Order, order, order. But wait, that's, that's impossible. That old man couldn't have written that. Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you, Air Right? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Hey, Judge? Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Might I request we put the current cross examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. But, Prosecutor Gavin, this evidence overturns the current witnesses. I ask only to put it on hold. Please, my new witness has a very, very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes, no more. I promise, Your Honor. Well, if you put it that way, Mr. Wright, what's your take on this? Well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So might as well be sooner. Then, though this is highly, highly irregular, we will put the current cross-examination on hold. The witness may step down. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring the surprise witness to the courtroom. I had a bad feeling just then. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. But why? How? When? Who? And I should have known it was a bad sign all around. Is that, is that, uh, what's his face? Mr. Misham, holding trial with no audience is a first even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. I beg the court's understanding, but I had to make- what is his hair doing? I had to make a judiciary deal with the witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal? The details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we say? I thought it best to contain the information to this room. Hmm. Very well. And you are the witness, I gather? Ah, oh, yes, yes, sir. State your name and occupation for the record. Eh, my name's Drew Misham. I'm a painter. A painter? And you are somehow related to this case? No, well, not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Mr. Misham, was it? Do you know what this is? Oh, no! Oh, yeah! I know it well. How's that possible? Have you seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah. I mean, I made it. You, you what? You made it? I made this. Yes, you might call it one of my works. The prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach Grammarie. Illegal evidence? I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large, Drew Misham has another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. F forgeries Well, so, we ought to understand that this page here is... A fake. Prepared by a certain defense attorney. Hold it! No, you said objection. Hold it's for the other... I didn't prepare this evidence! Oh, the attorney speaks something about this page, I presume. But what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who presented this evidence to us, Phoenix Wright. Witness? Uh, Mr. Misham, was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? Hmm, that... I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous, even to me. I make the items they want and receive my payment. 
That is the extent of my contact with them. B but there's no proof this is a fake. It's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. What's the what's the mark? Mr. Wright, you have just presented illegal evidence to this court. My court. Yeah, but I didn't know. It was careless of me. That's all I can say. Oh, old boy. Um, uh, here. He puts a really tiny mogus in the corner. What's this? I don't know. I just got over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. Thank you for the bits. They said it was really important. Trucy did this. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. It's gum shover. <laughs> Thank you for the... Uh... Mr. Wright? Yes? Do you have an explanation for yourself? If I did, would the court hear it? Probably not. <laughs> well, fuck me, I guess. Forging evidence is a serious crime, and presenting it in court a serious mistake. He said, I believe that this it matches up. And then Clavier said, actually, before he did anything, we knew it was fake. And he goes, I didn't know it was fake. And I said, it matches up. And he's like, this is illegal. Bang, bang, goodbye. This is all fuck, it sucks. Fatal too, perhaps for your client, I fear. Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Objection! Your Honor, wait! I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. I am sorry, Mr. Wright. What? Your Honor? Another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, boy, was it steamy. Everything would have gone the way you wanted it to, yeah? I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. I see no need for further discussion on this matter. Special witness dismissed. Okie dokie. I am gonna go lock myself in my room for seven years now. Mr. Attorney? Yes. Could I ask your name? Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright. I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I remember you, Mr. Wright. I remember you. And we're back. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. You have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must. Ah, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Zack. There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. Is he gonna go, you'll have to catch me first and throw down a smoke bomb? I fucking hope so. I most certainly have the authority to declare a verdict on you. Except, tell me, how do you plan on announcing your verdict when your defendant does not exist? Fuck yeah! Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? I am talking... ...about this! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Mr. Amar! The defendants escaped! Find them quick! Bailiff, close all exits from the building! <laughs> On the double, he must not be allowed to escape! I, I like that maybe he didn't do any magic, he just fucking booked it. He just started sprinting. That day in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigmar, aka Zach Grammary, did not just escape from court. He literally, unbelievably, vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again, not since that day. 
This is the Grammarly Miracle. Ah, ah, aha. Take care of my daughter, I guess. Bye. No verdict was declared. So he's innocent. After all, the defendant didn't exist. <laughs> so stupid. There has to be a way to declare a verdict like in absentia. Or you can't just be like, well, you walked out of the room. Guess he's not guilty then. Oh, God. That's how it happened. The trial of magician Zach Grammary vanished along with him for all eternity. Uh, if you count eternity as seven years, I guess. New lawyer pro strat. Just put a bag over their head. Where'd he go? You can't call, you can't, he's not guilty. Where'd he go? I don't see him. The mysteries that remained behind were all solved, however. Where are they? But not until seven years later. Oh. He went home and called base. He can't be thrown in jail now. Mm-hmm. Well, that was that did not go how I thought it would. It is kind of gratifying that Phoenix didn't knowingly commit a four. I thought it was going to be some scenario that was just so contrived and so clearly set up that in order to get an innocent verdict, which is technically true, he had to fake evidence. It's more like he was set up to fall. To fall. Which makes sense, but I think it would have been more compelling and more in line with the Phoenix that we've seen in this game where he seems to be like, this isn't the same Phoenix we knew for three games. This guy's like going around doing shady stuff. Like, what's his deal? Uh, if, if it was like, oh, he, uh, it's, uh, this one case that broke him, you know? But this this is, it's, it's kind of like, like a retroactive redemption for the Phoenix we've been seeing for the, the remainder of this game. That trial seven years ago was the beginning of it all. This I know beyond a doubt. The mysteries of the past work their magic on the present. But you'll soon be finding all of this out for yourself. Me? Grandpa, which of Magnifi Grammarie's disciples pulled that trigger? I'm gonna say both of them. Because that's the silliest answer. Where the, maybe the clown. Where did the vanishing defendant, Zach Grammarie, go? Has anyone checked underneath the witness stand? What dark truth lurks behind the forged diary page? And what about the girl who was left behind? It's me, Shu Takumi. Thanks for playing my game. Oh. We're inside the computer. The past left, up th left us these four keys to unlocking the truth. This is rad. But that's not all. There are four keys in the present as well. Eight keys when all the questions have found their answers. The final trial will begin. But first you must chase the truth through then and now. Think of it as a game. Oh, the law is just a game? I like games. Oh, I, Phoenix Wright, will be your guide through this game. Hi, hi Phoenix. That terrible trial saw me pre present forged evidence. It ended half finished when the def when the defendant vanished. Court them hearts. That's sort of, yep. It's data Phoenix. Data I've data daddy. He took a programming. Mm -hmm. What became of me after that? As your investigation proceeds, the answer will become clear. Oh, and one more thing. There is something I must tell you. As Apollo Justice has his bracelet, so too do I have my own weapon of sorts. A gun! Phoenix Wright teaches lawyering. <laughs> Here's my assistant, Mavis Beacon. My Magatama! Oh my god. Got him. What does it do, you ask? That I would have you see for yourself. Well now, shall we begin? Where is she? Is she safe behind bars? Touch the arrow to switch between past and present. Let's begin seven years ago in the past. It is right after my last trial came to an abrupt end. Now that you know the game, let's play. This is, this is neat. Okay. Huh. I don't fully understand what's happening, but this is, this is great. So we have Defendant Lobby, so we have like different chapters we can jump between in order to piece together. This is cool. Oh, 
Can we see Charlie? The nightmare trial was over, and the new nightmare of figuring out what had happened had just begun. I wanted to wake up, to walk away, but I figured I'm the only one who could do this, probably. And besides, I had plenty of time. Thanks to the Bar Association Review Board's decision, it's hard to work when your attorney's badge has been taken away. Poor Phoenix. Seven years ago, detention center. How you doing, Maya? Oh. A strange sight doth mine eyes behold! Excuse me? Two men on either side of a single transparent pane. Yet it seems fickle fate has switched sides, so to speak. The forger of fakes walks freely, while the innocent languishes within these flexiglass confines. There's been no proof I forged anything, nor proof that I took the life of my dear mentor. Yet, these chains cannot hold me for long. The stage waits, and what, may I ask, awaits you? A little piano and a cold little hole in the wall. But since you are here, what shall we discuss? The shooting of Magnify Grammar, you for one. Who pulled that trigger, Valent or his partner, Zack? His partner vanished before the answer could be found. If I'm gonna get any closer to the truth, this is the place to start. And search. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I can't present my badge. <laughs> this is so sad. This is the saddest I've ever felt in Ace Attorney. Oh, it's like a piece of my soul is missing. Yeah, done took my badge. Let's make a new one. Yeah, let's make a new one out of cardboard. Mr. Valent, could you look at this for me, please? Hmm, yes, I accept your challenge. Well, ch challenge, huh? You want me to make it float, disappear, or shall I simply eat it? I didn't come here to play games, Mr. Valent, or watch you do tricks. Or eat paper. I could do that at home. He's gonna eat the diary. All right, let's, let's, first of all, first of all, yeah. Smile, you're on candid camera. I just had to say it, old habits die hard. Maybe I should do a few tricks for the viewers at home. Do a cartwheel. That guard keeps stealing glances in this direction and scratching his head. Maybe our resident magician showed him a trick or two. The fateful trial. I have to hand it to my partner. He knows how to make an exit. That's talent. Yes, he made my attorney's badge disappear and he never even touched it. Glory's spotlight always leaves someone weeping in the shadows. Yet his very disappearance itself a revelation. Revealing what? Zack Grammarie killed Magnify. It's as good as a signed confession. That's certainly been public opinion's take on it. I grow tired of my cage and the time of my release is near. I must go and prepare. Planning on jumping back into the magic right away? As long as an audience waits with bated breath, they will be valent. And also, yeah. Now that my partner has disappeared, Magnify's repertoire is mine. A valent Grammarie has a tradition to uphold. Is that true? Seen in this light, the trial was quite good to me, verdict or no. And you can't pay for that kind of publicity. Blackmail. The suspicion on you hasn't lifted entirely, Valent. After all, you received one of those letters, too. You were just as obligated to follow Magnify's instructions as your partner. So I was, but only Zach Grammarie followed them. Let us not speak any more of who shot what. Now that my partner has vanished, the question is moot. I'm more interested in learning something else, actually. What might that be? I want to know what Magnify had up his sleeve. How could he coerce you and your partner to kill him? The trick up his sleeve. <laughs> Perhaps you do not know. Know what? A great magician never reveals his secrets. Oh, we're back, baby. I didn't think it would be that easy. The audience must remain forever in the audience, bathing in the reflected glow of the spotlight. My Magatama, one of my most prized possessions, which I got during a certain case from a person we will apparently not speak of. It can show me the locks on people's hearts. And if I can unlock their hearts, they'll tell me their secrets. The Magatama starts it all, and the Magatama ends it. Mm -mm. The suspicion on you hasn't lifted entirely. Valent, after all, you see one was right. I have to present something to get him into 
his Cycloc universe. Yeah, the Magatama at the top. There's a god I'm glowing on the touchscreen, so I gotta... Ooh, 3D! My burger senses are tingling. Is this a different version of this theme? It's game. I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this one. There must be a path leading from the evidence to the truth. It's nice. And that's what I'm gonna find. To ask someone to take a life, even one not long for this world. That's asking someone to commit murder. Yes. Our mentor was fond of dramatic moves and dramatic finales. And he got his wish, his life was taken. What weakness could be so powerful as to coerce someone into committing murder? My guess it was a matter of life or death. Care to explain? Your troop lived in a world of showmanship, the flashier, the better. Thank you for the bits. And flashy so often means danger, doesn't it? Let us make this as painless as possible. If you have proof of this danger, then show it. Um, uh, the gun? The gun's kind of dangerous. Why, that's one of ours. Specially designed for your show, I gather. A single bullet, one shot. What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Wright, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valent. I'm crying something far more tragic. An accident. Zack and Valent's quick draw shoot him. How long has it been since those shots were last heard? So, so there's a lady that stands in the middle and they shoot at everything and not hit her? Am, am I, am I, am I on the right track about what accident might have occurred? Was the shoot -em canceled because someone might get hurt? Of course, what other reason could there be? Well, it could have been canceled because someone had already been hurt. Fascinating, my Faustian forging friend. Think stupid. Um... He and Zack shot each other, and they've both been replaced in the, in the same vein as Mr. Hat. You know, uh, uh, Trucy's, like, puppet. And Magnify's just controlling them with a series of strings and pulleys from far away. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Tell me what would have happened if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? The performance of magic is not concerned with what-ifs. It is concerned with precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? I don't think I know her name. So... Yeah, I don't have a... Hmm. Looks like I've chosen the right path. Let's just hope he walks it with me. A life was sacrificed, so the show might go on, and this shows who it was. I don't think I do. I don't think I have that. I might have to do another loop around. I may not have enough evidence right now to pull this off. Maybe it's time to do a little more legwork. I gotta do more investigating. Yo, crushed. So my fi finest memories from working with the grumpy gamers. Finest. I'll have to think about it. Come up with some fun. Uh, uh, goodbye. Go somewhere else. Lobby number two. Anonymous. Guess I mean. I Fortunately, I've played the other games, so I know that you usually have to get other evidence and, and stuff in order to break through all the locks. If this was my first time seeing the Cyclops, I might be like, what's the answer? And just throwing everything. Lobby number two. Thanks for the hydrate. Didn't think I'd be back here for a while. I didn't want to have to remember that day. Mm. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. Ah, your honor! Yes, Mr. Zack. There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. We're just going through on again. Charlie's nemesis, Stewart. That's not my plant. He's gone. When I came here on that fateful morning, I still had my badge, but now... Like an amputated limb, I can still feel it itching. He's got phantom pain for his badge. <laughs> Where do I start? I don't even have the authority to investigate. Hey, you there, sir. Down on the hands. Down on the hands. Floor on your head. Now, now, now. What's the big idea? My ears. No unauthorized personnel aren't allowed in here. 
But that would mean all unauthorized personnel are allowed. Zoink! Fucking, fucking Meekins is back? I just like to, I just say it like it is, sir, and it's usually wrong. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. We've met before, haven't we? Can we get Meekins back instead? Someone in chat said it first. And either they had a galaxy brain or they knew this was coming, but either way, I... Of all the characters to come back, met before, haven't we? On a case two years ago? No recollection of that, sir. Huh? For me, working on a case is always in the present progressive tense, sir. There is no past, there is only now, sir. Uh, okay. okay. You're the bailiff, right? Yes, sir, court bailiff Mike Meekins at your service, sir. Uh, I've asked to meet with the bailiff at this court who let the magician escape. Hmm. Let me try to make this as absolutely clear as possible for you, sir. It was me, sir. But you were a regular police officer once, right? Sometimes bad things happen to good people, sir. Something tells me it's a long story. Let's not go there. So, you were in charge of security at the time of the vanishing. He made a- he made a gavel noise. I'm dying over here! Oh, it's a hard knock life, sir. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. Guess I wasn't the only victim. Here, let me show my... Let's talk to him. Wait, I can examine the background. I don't think I've ever been able to examine this room. Let's go. Poor baby. <laughs> you know I think this was the lobby I used for my very first case. This plant has seen me grow from a rookie to an ace to a has-been. I hate you, plant. Just kidding. I can't stay mad at you, Mr. Plant. I guess this door was officially a prop in Zach Grammarie's latest show. His last show. He passed through that lobby door and vanished. But to where? He choreographed that entire fateful trial according to his grand scenario. I hate magicians. Not kidding. I must have seen that painting a thousand times, but I never really looked at it until now. I guess my head was too stuck in the trials. Never had time to stop and appreciate art. I have time now. Okay, let's appreciate. Actually, it's pretty lame. Damn. I actually took a nap on that couch once when I was still practicing law. Boy, was that a mistake. That's when he got bunked. I never even sit on the lobby sofas now. I never let my clients sit on them either. It's bad luck. Man. He was an art student. He was, wasn't he? Hey, Meekins. What's going on? Slash sirs. The last time we met, you were a police officer, right? In fact, you're still wearing your uniform. Sir, I, I wish I didn't have to tell you this. But last year, tragedy struck a rising star at the precinct. I lost my case files four times in three days. They fired me. That takes real talent, actually. They don't know what they're missing. So here I am, sir, forced to start from square one, a lowly bailiff. But your uniform. I took it with me as a souvenir the day I was fired. That can't be legal. So, you were the one who let the magician get away that day? I'm dying over here! A star rises among the court bailiffs full of hope, then tragedy strikes. Is there anything you can tell me about it? About Zach Grammarie's disappearance? Oh, the humanity! That's enough of that. His disappearance. He's dying over here. Why, yes, I'd say it was around 2 o'clock p.m. when I heard a commotion in court. I opened the door to see what might be amiss. The door slams open, slam, and some guy's face is right there in front of me. Face! So you saw someone suspicious coming your way. Oh, thank you for the boots. And I, being a bailiff of little standing, I gave chase. I chased that silk hat all the way down the hall, sir. I have a diagram of the court building here. Aha! Uh -huh. There's courtroom number seven. That's where I was, sir. All by myself, nary a friend to call my own. Okay, and which way did Zach Grammer you run after bursting through the courtroom door? He went up like this and around the corner like that. So I, with no delay, ran after them with no delay. When I turned the corner, I saw that magic man run into the defendant lobby. Swiftly, I ran. Following him, I threw myself boldly into the room. 
Well, I remember it like I was right here, like it was right here, because it was lobby number two, sir. Thank you for the hydrate. You ran into this room. I don't see any place to hide in here. Unless he's standing behind the plant to this day. Believe it or not, sir, I don't, I didn't believe it. Here, in this room, the magician, gone, vanished like a puff of smoke. Except there wasn't even any smoke, he was just gone. Did he vent? That's impossible. That, that word, oh, how many times I have said that word. Even the sound of it causes me indescribable pain. I'm dying over here. Okay, I won't say it again, promise. But you have to admit, it's imp difficult to vanish into thin air. He's under the couch. He's just on his side for seven years. Did you search the lobby? I searched. Why the pause? There was nothing here at all, sir. That's right, nothing was here, sir. How can he talk so loud and still be hiding something? Chat, chat. He's dying over here, have some respect. So Zack was in this room when he vanished. Absolutely, sir, I saw him with my own eyes. Eyes! That silk red, that red silk hat, that flowing cape. He ran right in here, right inside this room. Silk hat, cape, that's Zack, all right. Well, there was one other person at the at, at the scene of the of the uh, also wearing considerably small though. I don't know if you could even with a hat and a cape. I don't know if you can think that an eight year old is a forty year old. He was really small, but maybe he was just far away, sir. But sir, look at the room. There's not a single place to hide, sir. There was nothing I could do, but nothing, sir. What about now? Have any ideas? Sir! Ideas about what exactly, sir, if you don't mind me asking? You've had quite a bit of time since then. Has nothing occurred to you at all? Do you have any idea what trick he might have used to disappear like that? He's also hi- Oh my god. Only two. Only two. I should have known. Dooba 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 doop. I like the 3D Magatama. That's a cool effect. What did he do? Okay, Mr. Meekins, what do you know? Spit it out. Hey, who? what's with the atmosphere in here all of a sudden? You know something and I'm gonna find out what. Zach Grammary vanished from this room. How'd he do it? How, sir? Well, sir, I can't say as I, sir. Why are you so nervous if you aren't hiding something? Well, sir, I, you see, at the time I was here and... Listen, it was impossible. What could such a little girl possibly do anyway? Thanks for the prime. Enjoy your doki. Now Phoenix is the one doing a perceive. What did you just say? Guys, uh, did I say something, sir? No, you screamed it through that megaphone of yours. There was someone else in the room, wasn't there? Sir, I'm gonna have to invoke my right to remain in a state of not talking. It's okay, Meekins. You don't have to tell me who Zack Accomplice was. I know who was here in the room that day. It was you! Mike Meekins, age 24. That person was you! Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I, I've i never seen that girl until just the other day. Mr. Meekins, I'm not buying it. Sir! Sir, that day, she was here in the room, sir. But he wasn't. You mean, you chased her into this room, not him. Sir, in my days as a police officer, literally days, I learned a thing or two. Just one thing, but it was how not to mistake a girl for a seven foot tall magician. He's seven feet tall? Seven Zach isn't that tall, is he? You have a point. I find it hard to imagine that anyone would mistake a little go girl for Zach Grammary, but you saw something, and therein lies the trick. I think you know what it was, Mr. Meekins. Tell me, does this trick look familiar? What trick do I have? The but is it something in here? Uh... Monster slipped out. It does from time to time. What trick could he be talking about? Another page, IV report. It's chart, syringe. Syringe isn't really a trick. There's the pistol. Which isn't... So much... For the first time today, I have no idea what they want me to throw out here. I don't have a lot of things in my 
inventory that resemble a trick. We have the photo, which has a bunch of random stuff in it. How would we have this evidence in the past? Uh, well, this is from the past case. This is all stuff that came up in trial. So we have the stage pistol, which isn't necessarily a trick pistol. It fires one real bullet. That's not really a trick. And then the diary also isn't really a trick. Maybe we don't have it yet. That's also true. It's possible if you... Yeah, okay. All right. Answer me this, chat. Do I have the thing he's looking for? No. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I may not have enough evidence. All right. Maybe it's time to do a little more lag work. I was like, I, none of these really seem like a thing. Okay. Like a ghost trick. All right, bye, Meekins. Bye, Meekins. I could present evidence to him, actually. I don't know if he respond to any of it. Any thoughts on this, Mr. Meekins? This is an honor. Sir, I've offered my opinions on plenty of things, even things I knew nothing about. But no one's ever asked my opinion of before. There's no need to shout, really. No opinion? None! I know nothing about that, sir. I thought... Ah, never mind. You know anything about this? Nope. And what about the journal? He probably doesn't have any thoughts about anything. How you doing, Will? Get Cecil on the case. God, that would help. Maybe we'll talk to all these ghosts to see what happened. That would be an amazing crossover. Ace Attorney crossed with Ghost Trick. You're like, man, what happened at the scene of the crime? And then it cuts to Sissel and he has an exact play-by-play -play of what happened. And then you prevent the case from happening. And then in the middle of the courtroom, all the witnesses and documents just disappear. And they're like, well, uh? And you're like, what was the point of any of this? Let's go back to... Oh, <gasps> Charlie! My man, Charlie! Brian Cole offices. Good. Great. Good. Great. I'm getting a million emails. I'm like, what? They're all fine. Oh, morning, daddy. I'm so glad you came. You okay, daddy? They picking on you? Ha, 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 I'm fine as always. This old boy here is to help me after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. It almost makes you look seven feet tall while you're wearing it. Thanks. My first show's today after all. She, she did, she did say first show. She did say first show, didn't she? They had it all planned from the fucking start. Two weeks had passed since then. I called her into my office. True, see, there's something we need to talk about. It's been two weeks since your father disappeared. We need to start thinking about your future. I uh, did some calling around, this is hard to say, but you have no living relatives. So? I was wondering if you wanted to stay with me for a while? Just until your daddy comes home. It won't be long. I hope. That's not like it's gonna be like seven years or something. He just went out to grab some milk, Trucy. Milk and cigarettes. He's just on his way. Uh, of course, it's totally your choice. If you don't like it here, you can go wherever you'd like. I could look up some places you might like to stay at. This is so weird. Mr. Attorney, Daddy told me about you. He said I could trust you. Huh? Really? So if I stay here, does that mean you'll be my family? Uh, I guess so. Getting weirder. Uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, actually, why don't you call me Nick? Or you can call me Daddy if you'd like. It doesn't have to be today or anything. He's the one who offered that? Okay. Okay, say, Daddy. Her her real father disappeared just like a couple days ago. It seems a little bit soon. He's consoling a child. I get it. I get it. Just seems a bit abrupt and a bit sudden. That was quick. Yes? Two, we two weeks. Yeah, right. They said that. Still. If I move here, I have to switch schools, right? And I was thinking, I haven't paid for lunches at my last school for a year. So thanks, Daddy. Yeah. Oh, and this office? It's a little blah. A little color goes a long way, you know? Ah. Oh, and Daddy, you got fired from work, right? Don't you worry one bit. I'll work twice as hard. We'll make it through this. Trucy did replace her father, like, super quick. The... She's not processing. No. No, she's not. Trucy, how old are you? 
Oh, I'm eight. But don't let appearances deceive you. I'm a young professional. Stick with me and you'll do just fine. Uh, thanks. Why does it feel like she's already in charge? Let me show her my badge. Oh. Hey, you want to see a dead body? No. All right. Hey, Dun. So, Daddy, you got fired from being a lawyer, right? You could at least kind of look aside or something when you say that. It's actually kind of hard for me, for Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. Wait, is that foolish pride? My other Daddy always used to talk about that. Actually, that's pretty accurate. So, here's my idea. We'll make a new office. Law just seems so stiff, doesn't it? And no one will be my friend at school that way. Well, that won't do, I guess. I just don't know much about anything other than law. Or even much about law, if you were to ask some people. Maybe the problem is calling it an office. We should run an agency instead. You mean, like a talent agency? Forgive me for asking, but doesn't that require talent? You've got me, don't you? I'm a professional. Professional. Yep. Now, after all, I am directly descended from the famous Zach Gramry. Directly descended. He's your father. Oh. And now I'm directly descended from the famous Phoenix Wright, too. I think an eight-year-old just massaged my ego. Daddy. Could you tell me a bit more about your daddy, Zach Grammar Yee? Daddy? Sure thing, daddy. Which daddy was that again? Daddy's so amazing. The biggest star of Troop Grammar Yee, and they're big. The Grammar Yees. They were on television a lot. Haven't seen them on much recently, come to think of it. Big magic happens when you put Zach and Valen Grammar Yee together, you know. Once they made a giant waterfall right there on stage. Hey, Dayan. This is great having fun in the background. How you doing, Dan? And this giant trout swam up the giant waterfall. Let me guess, there was a giant fisherman waiting for him at the top? I wish I could have seen more of Daddy's magic. I shouldn't have brought it up so soon. I wonder what will happen to me with Daddy and Mommy both gone. Mommy? Yeah, what about Mommy? I haven't heard anything about Trucy's mother. But I have my magic and a great daddy even if he is unemployed. You know, I think things are gonna be okay. I wonder if she'll talk about her mother. Just a professional. So, Trucy, you're a professional? Yes, uh, it's like that thing they say. Baby frogs grow up to be frogs. They say that? I always thought it was funny, though. What was? Aren't baby frogs called tadpoles? Maybe they thought it would be easier to understand that way for kids. How stupid. Right. So, in conclusion, you're a professional magician, Trucy? That's right. Well, want to see a trick? You're going to do a magic trick? Yeah, what do you got? Actually, I would like to see your trick. The future of the agency depends on it, after all. That's the spirit. Ready? Here goes. Ta-da. Hey, folks, it's Mr. Hat. I gotta say, it's good to be seen. Yarr! Whoa, what? That was startling. The amazing Mr. Hat, isn't he great? Your friendly neighborhood, Mr. Hat, at your service. You know what I want more than anything? I want Zach had a magic trick planned where he, like, hopped up into the ceiling in the, in the defendant's lobby and there were some, like, giant cogs that he just got stuck inside of by mistake, and he got all grinded up in there, but then his soul rained down from the ceiling tiles into Mr. Hat. So she's not doing a ventriloquist act that's her dad's soul inside of the puppet, and he's been with her this whole time. That's, that's what I'm hoping is what happened. Ghost trick. <laughs> he certainly makes an impression. Doesn't he? I'm so glad you like him. Though my routines do get a bit heady at times, get it? Heady! My friendly neighborhood, Mr. Hat, nearly gave me a heart attack. Amazing Mr. Hat added to the court record. Hmm. Maybe I'm on to something. What is your mommy? What does she do? Could you tell me about your mommy if it's okay? Mommy was so pretty. She was like an angel up on stage. On stage? You mean with your daddy? Yep. She was always there with Zack and Valent, smiling. But then, she went away. Went away. It was a grand illusion, but she made a mistake. She vanished, and I guess she didn't know how to get back. 
Maybe so. I cried then, a lot. That's when Daddy gave me this. Here. This is your mother? She's beautiful. Her name's Th Thalassa. Th Th Thala isn't isn't fear of deep sea thalassophobia? Was she did she get caught in the waterfall they made on the stage? Was she the trout? And they want us to think it was the gunshot trick that got her killed, but it was the waterfall trick that got her killed. That would be funny. Uh, Thalassa Grammarly. Poor girl, I didn't know her mommy had gone missing. And now her daddy's vanished too, right before her eyes. Hey, daddy, you won't. Don't worry, I won't vanish. I promise. We'll see. Right, you can't even do magic. You're like a backup plan. Daddy always said to have a backup plan. I guess all I rate is as, all I rate as is a backup plan. Lock it out of the court record. I think that's probably good enough for today. Sorry to ask you so much all at once like that. It's okay, after all, we're family. I just hope you're ready. The right talent agency opens tomorrow. But we are, are we representing anyone? Me and you, that makes two. I think you need more than that to make an agency. Besides, you may be a magician, but I'm no talent. Oh, I'm sure there's something you're good at. Well, and you put it that way. You mean you don't have any tricks? No old standbys? This will not do. A boy should always have a trick or two in his pocket. Okay, I'll think of something. That's the spirit. See you bright and early tomorrow. Welcome to the team, Daddy O. The team, right. Sometimes when magicians vanish, they leave something behind. That's how Trucy became Trucy Wright, my daughter. To be honest, I was pretty lost those f first few days. Thinking back on it, it was a pretty dark time in my life. But Trucy, happy, smiling Trucy, she was my light. And so that's how the agency went bankrupt. Can you go back and talk to Charlie? I didn't talk to Charlie, did I? Oh, he get a check mark. I gotta go back. Let me out of my way. Gotta just push her out of the way. I gotta talk to Charlie. My mentor's favorite plant, Charlie. I guess watering Charlie is my only real job now. Wait, I have a child now. I can't feed Trucy like this. She probably needs more than the occasional watering too. I'm guessing. Kids need more than water on top of their head, right? Maybe it's stuff in the soil too. I gotta go to, I gotta go to Lowe's. You can still see that hotel from the window here. Every time I look out, I think back on those old cases. I wonder if the view looks different now that I'm not wearing my old badge. I really dig the far out view, daddy. Far out, daddy-o. Thanks. She must have learned a lot of words from her parents. Edgeworth, help. Uh, an old movie poster hangs on the wall. Finally found out the title after not knowing for the longest time. I actually rented the movie the other day. Cried my eyes out. Uh, just thinking about it makes me tear up. Wait, it's just allergies, really. I should show it to her when she's a little older. Wait, what was it called again? Damn it. Quite the collection of law books. My mentor bought all of them. I used to be too busy to read them. Now that I have the time to read them, there's no need. But I can't just sell them. Maybe Trucy will want to read them someday. Nah. My desk. Not that I have any reason to sit there anymore. I guess Trucy can use it. It's great for studying math, English, geography, magic. I'm not crying, I've just got some dust in my eye. It's just been raining on my face. So we got... Yeah, let's go to Drew's studio. We did, did get some good additions to our court record from Trucy, but I don't know if it's what we needed. I figured you'd come here sooner. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. It's a me. I decided on sooner, Drew Misham, was it? I haven't done anything illegal. Uh, yes, you ha you admitted it in court. And I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. I suppose you have that right. 
That day, the entire court descended into chaos. Only you stood still, your eyes calmly watching. I admit it made quite an impression on me. I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. Phoenix Wright, was it? I'll answer what I can. I'm not sure, but... Feels like I'm being watched. Intensely. Oh. Is her... Is her sketchbook a bear or a frog? I'm guessing frog. Ah, oh, this is my daughter. Vera, say hello. She's gone. Shall we begin, then? Let me, let me take a little poke around. The mailbox wasn't installed yet. Interesting. I guess he wasn't trapped in his apartment yet. Going home by any chance? Uh, no, I was just checking out the door. Oh. I think I'm far too stubborn to take hints like that. <laughs> That's not a hint. That is very explicit. Are you leaving so soon? You're opening the door and pushing me. What do you mean? Hmm. Paint splotches on his shirt resemble the regions of Japan? Mm -hmm. Do I have Mario saying babies.wav on the deck? N uh, no. When did Mario say babies? I should add the clip from Mario vs. Donkey Kong, though. He's like, Get back here, you speak monkey! In partners in time. Oh! That makes sense. Babies! What's this painting here? Oh, that's one of mine. It's an illustration for a book. It's not on sale yet, of course, but I thought it might be a good business. As a father, I'd like to be able to put food on my daughter's table. Not a feeling I know anything about, at least not yet. I just keep watering Trucy. She's so far so good. Paints are scattered all around, probably the ones he's currently using. There's something very artistic about a messy room. Not that this is anything compared to my office. I guess that would make my office a masterpiece. Her, 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 her. Her, 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 her. Hmm. So he does have some of his technology. Well, by technology, I mean a lamp and a thing. He does have the time. Hmm. Okay. He all splotches Hokkaido. Paints and pigments are lined up on the shelves with some noticeable gaps. Oh, yeah. That is Hokkaido in the very northernmost part. The part in his hair looks like a bird, though. I don't know what that part of Japan is. It's embarrassing, but I can't afford all the paints I want. I insist on buying the ones I use with my own money. I can see how you'd want to do that, sure. Perhaps you've heard that you can make any color. As long as you have the three primary colors, well, it's a lie. Poor guy. Hmm. Oh. Pop time just tried to post a bunch of emotes that didn't post. Okay. Uh... You use these gigmo gizmos for painting. They're pretty elaborate. Ah, uh, those. Those aren't for painting. They're for analyzing. Paint composition, age, every conceivable angle. Tools of the forgery trade, I guess. Pub time divided by zero. Oh, no. All right. What about over here? There's some finished paintings stacked here. They don't look all that bad, really. I'll sell you one for 50 cents. That's okay. They look kind of heavy. Oh. Maybe he needs to work on his sales technique a bit. Hmm. Maybe I'll just sidle on over here for a closer look. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. Oh. Oh. Hmm. This is you and Vera? Yes, yes. We took that one quite recently. I know, I'm a painter. Why not paint the portrait instead? I've never been that good at people, unfortunately. Uh, right. Shouldn't you practice? What about the tiny painting? That's an awfully small frame. What's that inside it? A stamp? Ah, uh, please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see. Mm. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's Zack and Valent. The Grammarys, isn't it? The post office issued that commemorative stamp last year. I just... Yeah. Seeing it in color and make... The fact that... Trucy's mom wears blue in the act. Also, yeah, it was a year ago. Oh, they issued the stamp last year. But it only got sent them recently. She... Yeah, she was taken after her dad and then and, and seven years later she... 
She's taking after her mom. God damn it. When the Gravities were at the height of their popularity. Not anymore. Now that one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Dabba dee dabba die. Vera went to see one of their shows when she was quite small. I know you think she's small now, but then she was very, very small. She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time she came. they came on TV until the end. I see. That stamp's quite hard to come by, I hear. I still wonder how she got her hands on it. So he really had no idea. Hmm. Come over to stamp out of the court record. Hmm. What about this ominous envelope? What's this red envelope? Ah, oh, don't touch that. That's, uh, it's quite important. The painter's face just changed hues. Guess I better behave, though it's tempting to just grab it. That's a pretty bottle. Ah, don't touch that, please. I'll get in trouble. It belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. She looks at it often. There's a light pink fluid inside. Nail polish, I'm guessing. They, they always showed this, this weird kind of glass hand when she, whenever she was painting her nails or whatever. It always seems like a very weird design for a bottle. And still does. Hey, how you doing? Let's talk it out. We got... You don't need a pill for core evidence. Yeah, old habits. Judging from this place, you're a... Painter? No, I'm a plumber. No, not sadly a profitable one. I've never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get by were it only me. Your daughter. Her mother grew weary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. He's so sweaty. And he has so much hair on just that one side. Forgeries. The forgeries! Don't look at me with those eyes. I know what it is that I do. More than half of the paintings they bring me are stolen. And who knows what my copies are used for? But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe me when I tell you this, but that was my first work outside painting. What? To think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial. I never even imagined the possibility. Then why'd you take the job? I was well paid, very well paid. I think he feels worse about it than I do. The past is hard to escape. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me, the better. Get out of my house. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be quite so easy. Yeah, someone pointed that out, Nico. And the blue stain looks very deliberately something. Yeah, I guess there's a, yeah. I see it. He's trying to forget what he made. Looks like I'll have to remind him. Also, yeah, what Weep said. Appreciate it. Um. Um. Can I present the, the book or just that one? The diary? Mr. Misham, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. I have not been in touch with the outside world for some time now. Welcome back, Colin. Enjoy your donkey, thank you. Uh, don't do that, team nerd. It will explode the website. But that isn't much of an inspiration to me. It's like Googling the word Google. Don't do it. Oh, so now he's the sensitive artist. What about this hat? Mr. Hat. True C's locket. What about the grammarese? What about this gun? What do you think about, um, the notebook page? Your work. Don't try to pretend you for gore. Sure, all you did was make a copy, but that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. Me. And my client. I'm responsible too, which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I knew it would be difficult to escape this. Then let's talk. Talk, you say? The diary. Well then, ready to tell me about this work you did? It was unlike anything I'd attempted before. What? Wasn't me. What'd you do? What are you all doing? You breaking the website? I guess it would be a little different from paintings. That is not what I mean. In all my previous work, it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy. The client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page as reference. The second, a printed document I can only surmise was written by my client. 
So you used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote? Yes, as I said, that was my first job of that nature. So, who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I never met them, not personally, I... A cyclock, of course. It seems like you're still hiding something. Something about this work. Ooh! Ooh! You're hiding something. <laughs> yep. Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Misham? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no Cyclops in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Hmm, why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand, no backing down now. So what's Misham hiding? The forger, the sample, the client. He, we know he's hiding the forger. So, yeah. I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. What is it then? You told me what you knew about the client, and I couldn't see any Cyclops. Any what now? Cyclops? Some, some, kind of, some sort of asylum security? New hairstyle, perhaps? Psychomantis? But then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? That's what Phoenix said. As I said in court, I do not know. Remember this? I remember. I want as much as I could, but I don't remember. I never met them, I did not. Not personally, those words triggered the Cyclock. Again, with the Cyclocks, now I really must know what they are. So, you didn't meet with the client, but someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence? Hmm, perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business, but I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about Cyclocks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is? The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. The poppycock! Language, sir! I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could it have been with me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you, then I don't have many other people to choose from. The real forger is... I mean, this is... Quite trimple. Hey, yeah. The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous! My daughter's only twelve years old, Mr. Wright. I've always been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. Nice comeback, but you're shaking in your boots. I've got you now. The only two people with access to the studio are you and your daughter. The Cyclops tell me you're not the forger, which makes your daughter the only possibility. <laughs> I feel very much on the verge of going psycho lock myself. My daughter's a magician. And I just met her a couple days ago. You only just met your daughter? Magnifi's diary. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter, Vera, not I. She's only 12. A genius, you might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio, and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytical devices I bought when they became necessary. They're my little girl's playthings now. Uh, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? Savira so was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here, to the studio. What? Why didn't you say so sooner? But their face was covered, and they did not want to talk to me. So they talked to your daughter. I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. Then that little girl is the key to our mystery client's true identity. Your daughter! Okay, what do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a bit more? Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Talk to Vera. Mr. Isham, I have a request. Let me guess, you'd like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy, extremely so, actually. With only one exception, which was, oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished, and she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. Please let me speak with her. All right. Hello. Uh-oh, this could be tough. 
How you doing? Vera, was it? He left her alone with a stranger? Well, not just a stranger. A guy who was paying them a lot of money to commit a crime. That's not a stranger. That's a... Um... An accomplice? Not really accomplice. It's worse. <laughs> it's, the answer is it's worse. Uh, I, would you like to have a friendly chat? Uh, I'm Phoenix Wright, ex-lawyer and pianist. I'm still looking for the keys that say do re mi, can't find them anywhere. <laughs> I'm no good at this. I need something to get through to this girl. Vera, was it? Uh, would you like to have a friendly chat? Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, this is just the same. Okay, wait. Uh, what, what would make her, I guess, I guess just the, the diary? Or the, the page, rather. What do you think about this? I think I just made her nervous. I need something to grab her attention, but what? Not the page. Oh, you want to see a dead body? Uh, all the stamp. And then there's this. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. She can talk. Yeah, so this stamp, how can I keep her talking? So, so the only person that she ever talked to other than her father was this stranger. And the only thing that got her to talk was the stamp of the Grammarys. So through that, I can deduce that the person who hired her, the client, was a living stamp. Uh, great magicians, aren't they? Isn't Troop Grammar Ye amazing? Uh, hmm, yes. Oh, I especially like those two, Zack and Valent. I mean, they're uh, just so magical. Aren't they, aren't they? Yeah, whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic, you know? Man, he's good. Me too, me too, I love them, they're so cool. It's like, like magic, yeah. All right, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. How do you do, fellow forgers? Oh man, I love magic and committing crimes by fabricating evidence. I went and saw, I went and saw them with Father the other day. The opening ceremony at the Grammarie Museum of Magic. The Grammarie Museum, they have one of those? I guess it makes sense now they have their own commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once when I was little, with Father. The grammar used on stage, it was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together, they do it all. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this. You know, about Zack and Valent, maybe? Uh, oh, sure. All right, better get asking before she changes her mind. So about this crime you committed. Uh, let's just go down the line. I don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there's lots of good people, too. Actually, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped once. Kidnapped? Since then, she's been... Well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammarie Museum. With you, in fact. Uh, yes, actually, she was quite insistent on it. Much to my surprise. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. That person gave me a good luck charm. A good luck charm. For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently, she received something. A gift. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret! From that client, huh? This I have to hear about. And the sus just keeps on piling on. So your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things? I really like painting, a lot. Father's always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So you did this too? Oh yes, that was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips in the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy. Odd, her work was the last nail in the grammar coffin. I guess no one told her. That would be uh, beyond devastating to her. Let's not. Welcome back, Rand. No, don't unlock the cell. She's spinning in a chair. A 
believe it. They're the best in the world. Oh, you mean Troop Grammar Yee? Of course. Father gave it to me. Your father? I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh, oh, uh, I guess I just took it. Yeah. Took it. Father got a letter from that person. That person. You mean that letter was from the client. Oh, we talked about the Grammarys forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. They're a sneaky one, this client. So they were trying to get on her good side. Stamp updated. Sense from the real client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't inspect this, did I? Speen. Speen. You got, you got anything in there? Can I open it up and get sad? I don't think I... Oh, wait. Yeah, there she is. So this is Trucy's mother, Thalassa. She's pretty. I can picture her on stage with Zack. Still, she looks like a down-to-earth type, too. I guess Trucy takes after her. Wing. Wing. Yeah. Is there going to be some sort of detail that I need to remember from that? I hope not. But why else? Wait, client. Tell me about the client. That's why I'm here. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job, and you talked with them? What's this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Eh? If I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no! Right. Time to do some psych unlocking. Shit, I keep backing out. You seem to trust this client quite a lot, in fact. I'm trying to save. I can't hit the save button? It won't let me hit the save button. Alright. Because they gave you this stamp? No, that's not why. They listened to me. To my problem. The problem that keeps her inside all the time? Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. A good luck charm that your client gave you? I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. I want to save. I haven't saved in a long time. That's fine. Is this your good luck charm? Uh... Is it the stamp? It must be the stamp. If this doesn't bring good luck, I don't know what would. I see. Good luck charms are different for different people, I guess. Actually, this can't be it, because she took this from her dad off the envelope. This wasn't given from the client. What do you mean? If you say it's lucky, then it must work for you. That's the beautiful thing about good luck charms. Mm-hmm. See that innocent smile? Everyone has a different way of breaking the news. That's the beautiful thing about being totally wrong. Uh... Um... Is this your card? I mean, I have enough evidence right now to pull this off. Maybe it's time to do a little more legwork. Is it the, um... Is it the polish? I looked at it, but I didn't pick it up as court evidence. I'm gonna just side on over here. Maybe I gotta check it again. That's a pretty bottle. Uh, don't touch it, please. I'll get in trouble. Hmm. So I guess it's not that. What else does she have on her? Buh. Are there things I have to present? They look pretty incredible in this stamp. I mean, it's like magic. I know, I know, I love the Grammarese. They're just so magical. She's talking up a storm now. Better get what I can out of her before the storm passes. I don't think there's anything else. I guess I could ask her about the, um... The actual page she wrote. Just gonna go through real quick, like... She's not gonna know anything about those. This one, yeah, she's not, no. Just go to the page. No, nothing about that either. Something I still haven't examined. Hmm. 
What have I not looked at? Uh, uh, is this just the paintings? Yep. Hmm. Do, 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 do. What have I not examined? Hmm. I have no idea what that is. Oh. Everything we got at all. What have I not looked at? Going home? Yeah, it's the door. Hmm. Paint scattered around. Is it, is it, is it in the studio? Sure. Thought that was the thing. Look, look at me. Look at me. Yeah, that's the door too, never mind. Yeah, it is the door. I already looked at all these. Hmm. I don't know if I have what I need to progress either of the other Cyclops. Or do I? Well, they were asking about a trick. Actually. Actually, that's probably the trick. For Meekins. Let's go back to Meekins. Welcome. Load up new Tane. Um. Hi. Yeah. Do we have to? Absolutely. Cyclogs. Cycor. What do you know? Well, I said it was impossible. There was someone else. I know who was here in the room that day. It was Trucy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Does this truck look familiar? Mr. Hat? <laughs> What's that? That girl's favorite trick the amazing Mr. Hat. She uses it in her show down at the Wonder Bar. Have you been to the Wonder Bar? So it wasn't a waking dream, was it, sir? Come again? That night on stage, I saw a vision, except it wasn't a vision. It was a hat. An amazing Mr. Hat. He really exists. Can we get a DKR uh, for Meekins? Yeah, you mean this? The vanishing trick. I remember it clearly, though the details are a little vague. Zach Grammary exited the courtroom. I gave chase and cornered him in the corner room, sir. Zach Grammary, don't even think you can escape Meekins. Down on your hands, floor on your head. Hello? Something the matter, mister? Uh, no, that is. Sir, I'm currently chasing a suspect, sir. Zach Grammary, do you know him? Oh, I love Zach Grammary. His magic's the best. I'm his biggest fan. I see, that's why you're wearing that costume you're wearing. Anyway, that very same Zack came into this room. But no one's been in here except me. But he has to be in here somewhere. Under the sofa, in the trash can, behind the painting, under the rug. Now they've lowered the volume of the ballroom. Yeah, I had that thought too. A lot of the sound effects are quieter than the music. Which means the, uh, the feedback noise isn't as loud. So Trucy was his accomplice. Imagine my astonished surprise when one week later, I just happened to walk into a bar and see him, Mr. Hat. I couldn't believe my own eyes. For a while, I thought it had all been a long dream. A dream that lasted a week? But it wasn't the magician who disappeared. It was Mr. Hat. <laughs> Though it seems complex, what really happened that day was quite simple. You were standing by the door and out came Zack. But that wasn't all. Another person got in on the act, and she was standing in front of lobby number two. Along with Mr. Hat. Ah, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So, while you are standing in shock and amazement, the magician rounds the corner. The smaller hat to represent her is very good. Most likely runs through the closest door into lobby number one. This is where you come in. You turn the corner in rather lukewarm pursuit, 
And at that very moment, Trucy runs into lobby number two. Then all she has to do is tuck away the amazing Mr. Hat. Sir, I, I only lost sight of him for the briefest of moments. Then I saw that cape, Zach Grammarie's red cape fluttering like a, like a cape. Astounding, sir. All my days of posing queries and making inquiries and chasing quarries wasted. It was as if I could see them melting away like an ice cream cone left by the side of the road to die or the scattered remains of a messily eating chocolate parfait. Such sweet sorrows. Literally. I'm sorry. I had no idea how much you'd suffered on account of this case. It... It's an honor, sir. I have apologized to people many, many times, sometimes more than once. But this is the first time anyone's ever apologized to me! Actually, about that girl. I'm sort of her guardian now. Is that so? Sir, you should know that I harbor no ill feelings whatsoever in my harbor. Okay. I let the defendant escape, but that's the stone-cold truth. Just another step on my way from singing the blues to wearing the blues. Someday, sir, I'll be standing side by side with the great Detective Gumshoe. Welcome back, Chris. Thanks for five months. Uh, Mr. Meekins, this is a free ticket to the show at the Wonder Bar. If you want, it... It is an honor, sir. Sir, I can't count the number of things I've had taken from me, sir. But no one's ever given me anything for free. Right, I'll see you in court next time then, sir. I look forward to it. All eyes were on Zach Grammarie that day in court until his mysterious disappearance. Now part of the mystery has been revealed, but the magician remained out of sight. It would be seven years before I met him again. Uh-huh. Over a game of poker, perhaps? Wow. Beep boop boop boop. Hey, thanks. I'm having fun. Whoa, to the present? Whoa! To the Borscht Bowl Club! Quickly! To the BBC! Present day, Borscht Bowl Club. Back to the future. Oh. I'll be taking my leave now. Still have some work to do back at the office? Then I guess I'll go back to my piano. To be honest, it's better when you aren't playing. This frigid culinary dungeon almost feels comfortable. Later then. Kristoff. Yeah, two hours left on my shift. Wonder if we'll get any customers tonight. Ahem, do you know who I am? Oh wow, now it now it's quite blatant, isn't it? Now that we've seen what Zach looks like, it's like, uh yeah, he's even wearing the same shoe same hue of red. Holy shit, who is this guy? Who I am? No, but if you hum it, I can play it. Just kidding, I don't do requests. How about a different sort of request? You see, I play cards. Oh, a customer. I was just hoping someone would come in and save me from a night at the Keys. I seek a true competition. I have heard the Borscht Bowl Club is the place for this. Now I see the rumor is true. And this is... A friend of yours? Ah, oh, don't mind me. I'm just your friendly neighborhood newsman. Ah, he will not be playing tonight. Son of a bitch. When his business is finished, I shall send him home. This competition will be between us, no others. The Right Talent Agency represents two artists, and I'm number two. I play piano, well, sort of. It's actually just a front for my real talent, which is playing poker. Don't ask me how I got started. I don't remember. But I'm good. Real good. It didn't take long for the rumors to get around. Go to the Borscht Bowl Club if you want a real game. That guy's never lost. People don't come to hear me tickle the ivory. They come to watch me play cards. Is this a seedy poker club? No, it's a restaurant. We don't play for high stakes. There's no money involved. But real players carry cash. And they're always thirsty. It's a handy source of income for the club owner. So it is a seedy gambling den. You just didn't, you don't think of it that way. He played card shark once. Hmm. Then let's compete. I'll take you to the room. The hideout, yes. But before we go, yeah. Allow me to, to introduce myself. My name is Shady Smith. And I'm Brushel, Spock Brushel news reporter. Who? Oh, I'm 
No, no. Phoenix Wright. Huh? You must always look a man in the eye when you make your introductions. You still do not know who I am? Have we met? Today in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. What are you talking about? I am talking about this. Immediately gets tackled by Gumshoe. Mr. Enigma! The defendant's escaped. Find him quick. Bailiff, close all exits from the building. Would Phoenix get addicted to the Blotro? Maybe. On the double! Gumshoe shoots him and he catches it in his teeth. That would be great. <laughs> but you can't be, but you're... Zack Grammary? Yes, the reincarnation act of the century. Pity I have only an audience of one. You. Zack Grammary, this must be a bad dream. In a sense, this guy ruined my life. You there! Uh, duh! We will play soon. Ready the room. Duh! I will be preparing the hideout for you. This is great, by the way. Because it's kind of like the like a DL6 or whatever the other cases were, where it's like, you know, things brought up, and then the final case brings it all together and connects all the loose threads, but actually getting to see this scene playing out as it happened... It's pretty cool. Are you really him? The Zack Grammary? Now I am Shady Smith. Remember this. How many years has it been now? Six? In exactly three days from now, it will be seven. I caused you much inconvenience, I fear. Yeah, you could say that. Is she well? Trucy, I mean. She's fine. I've got her working already. Hope you don't mind. I hardly need express my gratitude, but you have it. This is why I've come. That, to settle a matter of cards. By which you mean poker? Those eyes, he's serious. I despise losing above all else. And so I've decided that I will win tonight, no matter what it takes. I know this guy's type, and they're dangerous. Everything's about the competition. All else is secondary. Perhaps we should take this time to talk before we play. I know you have much to ask me. And I, you. Okay. First, let me uh, take a little look around at the Matryoshkas. One of the restaurant tables. This one's the closest to the piano, which makes it the hardest to eat at, I hear. On days when I'm playing it, that is. What do you think about the ukulele? The sound is slight, the annoyance curtailed. Ukulele in a Russian restaurant? Then you must go to a Hawaiian restaurant. Flying shirts don't go with my complexion. Ha, <laughs> Yeah, I give up. Hmm... A bowl. This is uh, grape juice? Is it refreshing? I usually drink too much and it ends up making me thirsty. Oh, Mr. Wright. There is something inside that bottle. Huh? It's my business card. You aren't surprised at all. Perhaps you don't like magic? I sure felt surprised. Maybe I had my poker face on. Hmm. Is this your card? Why'd you put it in the bottle? Phoenix on a wine shirt? Oh, wait. I must say, it comes as quite a surprise. I never knew you played. I'd do anything else if I could, believe me. Oh yeah, there's something you could help me with. Do you think you could make that piano disappear? It'd help out in a lot of ways, really. That's a good face. Ah, ah, wah. You say the funniest things with the straightest face. People always tell me that, except I wasn't joking. Nah, yeah, right. Let me present to you my badge. Look at this gun. Mr. Zacky, tell me about this. Mr. Wright, we meet for the first time in seven years and you offer me this, please. It wasn't a present. This guy's a hard sell. Probably won't get a rise out of him unless I show him something real interesting. Soup. Like some soup. Like some borscht. Some soup to soothe my soul. Give me the borscht to soothe my soul. Mr. Zacky, tell me about this. Can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about your wife? This person in the photo is Trucy's mother? How did you come by this? Trucy showed it to me. She said her mother was gone. Then it is so. Huh? She is gone. What more is there to say? A uh, lot? I know, I know. What, you still here? According to my in-depth research, Trucy's mother, Magnifi Grammarie's only daughter, end quote. Is that right? What? 
Magnifee's daughter? Is that true, Mr. Zack? Brushel, you say too much. Yeah, I... Yeah, what? Why am I the bad guy? Why? Zack decked him. Oh, thank you, Zack. In any case, Mr. Reich, this discussion is over. The last of Grammarie, she's the most mysterious of the whole lot. I need to gather me some more evidence, clearly. Hmm. Anything about the letter? What about the letter to you? What about the syringe from the scene of the crime? What about his chart? That's not gonna matter. What about the page? What about the actual photo? Okay. Maybe I can talk about her now. Right. The meaning of competition. We competed that day seven years ago too. Ah yes, you must have been surprised. Called to the detention center out of the blue. There's a fantastic time Daisy comic called Zach Grammar is a jerk. <laughs> Thank you. I will check it out. Two. One. Showdown time. Yeah. Yeah. I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. You chose- you choose your defense attorneys by playing poker? Some are hired, others fired. When you compete, you see a man's true nature. Well, yeah, but- and like, like, poker is a game of skill and chance. Not purely luck, but like, uh? You know what I speak of. I know that you do. Trucy's power? Trucy, she's in a class of her own. For seven years, I've played poker here at the Borscht Bowl Club, and I've never lost once. I'm good, but not that good. I win because whenever there's a big game, I bring in Trucy. And she sends me signals. Daddy, he's got a good hand. You might have a chance if you act quick. Better calm soon. Yeah, it's all about which jokers you buy and which deck you're using. We're playing a game of cards, but I took out all the face cards. Here you go. Can you tell me what her power is? Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions is a staple of performance magic. But those of Trucy's line possess far greater skill. Is he saying because her mom was the daughter of Magnify, there's like a weird magic bloodline thing going on? Because I don't know how I feel about all that. Her line? Recall if you you were the second man to whom I've lost. Magnify Grammarie. That was the first time I learned of this power, as you call it. Don't worry about it. The Fae Clan. Let me boot a blotcher again. You already have it booted up. You can't fool me. Wait, so you're saying her power is genetic? It's just in the grammar ye blood or something? Blood. Son of a... Uh, why? I'm sorry, but it is not something told lightly to outsiders. And it's nothing you need to know this time. At this time. Some sort of grammary secret then? Fine. I'll pull it out of you. She's 15 this year. Still trying her best to follow in your footsteps, you know. I see. When I planned my disappearing act, it was the thought of her alone that gave me pause. Wait, you were planning on vanishing from the get-go? Yes, and for that I must apologize. However, I could not be found guilty that day. Because of this. This? A transferal of rights. You see the signature? A transferal? That's Magnifi Grammar's signature, isn't it? I hereby give all rights to the secret staging and performance of my magic to the recipient named below. Zach Grammary. And the recipient's name is you, Zach Grammary. Hmm. Yes, it is I. Wait, this page looks torn. You recall the diary, yes? How could I forgore? First, take a close look at this diary. We don't have to go through the whole thing again, do we? Note that the page has been ripped out, and it just so happens that Uzaki Tamri slept for 56 months, Your Honor. I dare say that's a long time. I know. How could I forget? That scrap of paper lost me my attorney's badge. What you got here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for gifting that sub. 
Hope you don't mind, my daughter is going to join us. You'll love her. I use cards in my magic tricks. See, she loves cards. She'll fit right in. How's your poker face? She can poker face like the best of us. Ninety up. Yeah. And we saw this the other stream. It's good. It's very good. Ante up. Attack of the real one all along. It makes sense. They talked for a while. It makes sense he would write a thing and then he'd take it, but then... Why? 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 Why to all this? Magna V gave it to me that night. You could have told me this earlier, like seven years earlier. Once again, I must apologize. It was all I could do to prepare for my escape from that courtroom. Yep. The greatest of Magnifi Grammarie's illusions are true art. As such, they are well protected by this document. Only its bearer may perform his illusions on stage. Sounds like a pretty important thing to have if you're his disciple. As the rightful heir to his art, I too wanted a rightful heir. Rightful? I'm sure you know who I chose as my successor. Your daughter. That is why I've risked all to come here tonight. Brushel? Sir? Ah, here you go. What's this? A letter passing the rights I've inherited to Trucy. I would have you sign here as a witness. But, but I'm not a lawyer anymore. And you need a public notary besides. I may not look it, but I'm a certified notary. You are? By day, I wear notary's glasses and hunt for news. Also, by day, I wear reporter's glasses and notarize. When I take off the glasses, I can't see very well. <laughs> Your signature, please. This is the first reason I've come here tonight. Transfer rights out of the court record. Mm-hmm. I had a feeling that that was what was in there. I finally figured it out. Now I know why you've come out of hiding only now. It's been seven years, you said? Precisely. Seven years. There's a law that covers your situation. After seven years, missing persons are considered to be legally deceased. So if someone was to vanish from the face of the earth seven years ago, they would lose all rights as a living person after seven years from that day. Not to mention all their possessions. Exactly. Which is why I'm here. I risk showing my face in public for the sake of this document. Before my seven years are up. You might say, I am securing my daughter's inheritance. Do you really need this document? Wouldn't Trucy inherit your estate automatically? Not in this case, I'm afraid. This case. I received the performance rights from Magnifi Grammarie. However, this was done in secret without witnesses. Before Magnifi died, two potential successors to his repertoire were named. Myself, Zach Grammarie, and Valent Grammarie. Not Trucy. I see, so you do need this document. I have known Brushel since before I vanished. He is a man I trust. He's the best man I've ever known. By God, I would take a bullet for this man. I would get bonked on the forehead for this man. Anything that this man needs, I would provide. He is the good, best man in this entire franchise. Good old Brushel. He's the best. Now, only three know of my rebirth. I took the liberty of looking into Trucy's background and found you had no other close kin. It is as you say. Okay. I was kind of hoping he'd say something about the mother at this point. I know everyone else, but Trucy's mother is a mystery. Well, the prelude may have been longer than the main attraction. Shall we begin our game? My final competition? Final? Why? As you said, I have come out of hiding today to make this document legally binding. Once that is done, I shall slip once more underground. Without seeing your daughter? It would be best if I did not. Seven years ago, we played. Seven years ago, I lost. I already lost to Magnify. I do not care to lose to another. And I've heard that you never lose. It's just a rumor. Yes, for it is impossible to never lose unless one has an ace up one's sleeve. As a magician, it causes me no end of irritation. To think a mere lawyer might be out there pulling the wool over so many eyes. Hey, I just signed your document for you. Maybe you could try lightening up? That was that. This is this. For my final competition, I would destroy your perfect record, Phoenix Wright. This will be my final performance. You are warned. This guy's beyond serious. So much for a fun evening of cards. Brushel, you may leave. Ah, but it's your last game. I mean, what a scoop. I punch, and I punch, but still it is not enough. I just remembered a future uh, prior engagement. Toodles, gentlemen. Oh, a nice mean, your piano man. I'm just beating the crap out of him. Then let us begin, dealer! Da. You will be witness to our competition. Da. It is honor for me. 
Why haven't I seen her around here before? Ah, that reminds me. I saw a familiar face as I entered the restaurant. <laughs> he just fucking... So the dealer for the cards is a girl who's putting on a fake Russian accent, and he's like, I've worked here for seven years and I've never seen you before. And then she was fucking trying to cheat. Great. He did not seem to notice me, however. Hmm? Gavin, I believe was his name. You know him? After a fashion. Listen, Phoenix Wright, one can learn much from a true competition. Remember this. I, I gotta go back and use the Magatama. The grammar ye power. I was close to understanding it, but I needed more. And I knew where to get it. Trucy's mother. I need to meet that reporter again, that was clear. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. And one other thing. From the moment my final competition with Zack began that night, a name was running through my head. The name of a man now in prison. A name Zack Grammary knew. But how and why? Always comes back to Brushel. Can't escape, end quote. Solitary cell third to the... F okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta go back here first. Um, what is your deal? Do 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 bam bam boo do bam boo do do bam boom. I have to know more about this power of trucies. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew mine. And after you were done having your mind blown, you took her to play cards with you. Yeah, I gotta use the resources at hand. I always say. Yet I myself have no such power. But Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother? Thalassa Grammary? I will not speak of that. Thalassa's officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Um... All I have is the locket, isn't it? Isn't it? What else do I have about her? Well, I have- I, she's on the stamp. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Autopsy report, notebook page, IV report, his chart, strange the letters. Why doesn't he want to talk about her? Or is it the gun? Is it because he shot her? Probably. The Lassaraptor. Or am I not- do I not have what I need? I could put down a safety save first. I'm gonna ask again before I just start throwing things out. Chet! Do I have what I need? For this step? No! Okay, thank you. I may not have enough evidence right now to pull this off. Maybe it's time to do a little more legwork. Thank you, chat. Yes, and... Appreciate it. We need time evidence? Yeah, we need to go through time. Okay, well, let's go to Solitary Cell 13. I wonder who has such an elegant prison cell. Yeah. Well, well, isn't this an unexpected surprise? What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. It's the private prison Dio would have. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? My past is like my logic. Uh -huh. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete -a tete right? You look well, Phoenix Wright. You too, Gavin. Divorce Saga 2. It never ends. It's strange, you know. Here I am in solitary, and yet the books keep piling up. Looks like you've got more than books up there. Ah, yes, my collection. I have a few friends on the prison staff. They show me a little kindness. Just a little. There's more than a little kindness. That's some chair. Just looking at it makes me want to take a seat. You probably have to add a whole digit to the price of one of my office chairs. In here, a comfortable chair is the most valuable thing in the world. We have to add two digits to the price of the standard prison issue chair for this. Those prison chairs don't look so bad either. Maybe I should redecorate. A little envelope there? A, a specifically yellow envelope? 
That envelope's been bothering me since I came in here. It's not nice to peek at other people's mail. Oh, that is an ominous sprite he's giving us right now. You get mail here in jail? That I do, though they read it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed the pleasure of correspondence. Packages and the like are a different matter, however. It's like sneaking a peek is out of the question. Run! <laughs> Maya, run! Maya? She's in the prison cell across the way. Nice roses! You taking care of this one here? Yes, she's surprisingly delicate, you know. Requires careful tending, but she is my best friend, as they say. First. Come on now, I'm starting to feel bad for you. Oh? Of course, she's known to bite if handled roughly. Your rose bites! I was speaking of the photo next to the rose. My retriever, Von... Von Gole? Von Gol? Cute, but feisty. Every dog has its thorn. There, okay. Hello. He has a dog. Gavin's murder. That's great. Life has been full of surprises for both of us. I have no doubt you never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. And I'll bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith was the name of the man you killed. Did you know who he really was? Who he was? Zach Grammery. You know, the defendant. I remember him, of course. But you say Smith was Zack? Impossible! Don't even try to tell me it was a coincidence. What did I just say? Life is full of surprises, don't you think? After that trial, you were arrested and found guilty. But your motive was never made clear. A mistake I plan to remedy. You're not an attorney anymore, Phoenix Wright. What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I'm an evil human being. Isn't that enough? Not for me, it isn't. I need to know why you did it, Gavin. Why? You recall that case seven years ago? Yes. The trial where Zach Grammy pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration for that trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor reveals crooked attorney, was it? That was when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? The Bar Association Review Board voted unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous, save one dissenting opinion. Yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position, after all. For seven years we've been friends. And yet, I still don't understand you. But right, your friendship toward me was never pure. You suspected me then as you still do now, don't you? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what I think. Hmm. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Persistent, aren't you? I came here because I remembered something. The night of our game. Zach Grammer, he mentioned your name, Gavin. That reminds me. I saw a familiar face as I entered this restaurant. He did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe was his name. After that, he was killed, and I asked you to help me. Because I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. I seem to be in a bit of a pickle. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me, please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. I have to know. Why did you kill Shady Smith? No, Zach Gramry. How many? How many's he got? Yep. Well, he's got fancy ones too. Never seen Cyclops like these. Dark, cold, full of despair. Can I even unlock these things? Something wrong, right? No, it's nothing. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. He's doing his nails. Okay. What are you- what are you hiding? What do you got? What do you got? Oh, I can't use the Magatama? Oh. Oh. I need a Super Magatama. What do you think about this, Gavin? Jail Salon. 
Phoenix, when will I be out on my own? I hardly need to remind you I'm not a free man. I care little about the outside world, save advances in chair technology. No information forthcoming there, I guess. I'm just gonna go down the whole list and watch this animation every time. What do you think about this? Are you responsible for it? Huh? Hmm? You? Me? Them? Hmm. Just use a bobby pin. He has very fancy nails. Eh, I guess he does. Well manicured. Me guilt gaga. Don't tell him about chair advancements. It's just gonna make him sad. He doesn't know about our web 2.0 chairs. Do, 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 do. I don't know if I'm gonna get anything else out of him, but man, I'm gonna try. If Maya were doing the question, Gavin's neck would spontaneously break from all the shaking. And it'd be Maya in jail again. She likes it in there. Bobby Pin is going to be a client. <laughs> For a hairdresser murder? Yeah, probably. Okay. He has nothing to say. Hmm. Okay, bye. Okay, goodbye. Huh. Huh. Where to? Or when to? What do I need? What do I have? I've gotten... I have that. I have the transfer of rights. Hmm. I don't remember. If evil, why hot? I have no answer for you. Let me see what she was up to again. Client. Yeah. In the stand, that's why I listen to me. The, the good luck charm. The good luck charm. Right. I didn't have it, right? And I still don't? And I still don't. What's her good luck charm? Unless the good luck charm is... The, that same... I think it's the nail polish bottle, because we saw that with her when she was out. It's either that or the sketchbook, but either way, I don't have either of those. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So then... And what was over here? What was over here? This part makes people upset. Is there some very specific thing I have to do? Um... What was his deal? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The trick up his sleeve. In his wish, you explain the fascism in danger. Proof of this danger. A gun. Guns are dangerous. That's ours. It was an accident. Fasting. Tell me what, what can you prove with a single pistol? The force magic is my life, which is precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? A life was sacrificed so the show might go on, and this shows who it was. So, I previously chat said I didn't have what I needed. Either the picture of her in the locket or the picture of her on the stamp. And the transfer of rights isn't going to be that either. So I think I'm still missing... Yeah, it's got to be Mr. Hat. He did the crime. Because just showing a picture of her is not enough. There has to be something that indicates... What happened? Hmm. Looks are a form of power chat and power corrupts. <laughs> That's why they're hot. <sighs> no man with that big a hat could be innocent. So is there still stuff in the present day I'm missing? I should write down what everyone needs. So I don't have to go through this every time. Vera wants to know... I want. I need for Vera what her good luck charm is. And Valent... I need, um... 
uh, 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 who got in an accident? Question mark. Dental plan. Um, and any more about this power? I have a special knowledge of power. Trucy does. Trucy got power from her mother. I'll not speak of that. I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. So. Why doesn't he want to talk about Alassa? What am I missing? Is there is there something I have to look at somewhere? What? Lisa needs intel. Battle plan. What the fuck am I missing? Uh, I mean, I mean, I haven't gone through and presented literally everything to everyone like I just did with Kristoff because I'm trying to not brute force it like that, but maybe I need to. Maybe I need to present something to someone. Oh, this is on the table now, and it wasn't before. You're thinking what self-respecting man would use nail polish? No, I wasn't. I don't care if you use nail polish. Not really. I know appearances are a big thing with you. You know what I say. One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things except nothing less. That certainly does look like first-rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It's crystal. If you're so drawn to it, please have one. It's on me. Nail polish slipped in the pocket. I don't know if the guards are going to love that, but okay. I think I have what I need now. Can I show this to him? What do you think about this, Gavin? What do you think about the thing you just gave me? Yeah, he's nice, actually. The color is the, the polish is colorless, it said. Ariadoni. Ariad Ariadoni. I've heard of that brand. And this must be the brand symbol. It's supposed to be some kind of flower. Wait, no, maybe it's a hand? Wait, on second thought, is that an eagle? Who makes these things up anyway? You think they try for a clear symbol at least. Sure. So it's like Ariadne, but Ariadne. Okay, let me try showing. If this is wrong, then fuck, I don't know, man. That's all I got. Back to the studio. All right, talk, Magatama. Take his chair. I, listen, I'm not into cruel and unusual punishment. You don't take a man's chair. You trust them because of the stamp? They gave me a good luck charm. Is this your good luck charm? Take this was what they gave you, wasn't it? I, well, now it seems very clearly it was Kristoff. Not that it, things were pointing at them before. The same bottles over there on your desk. Your good luck charm, right? I heard once cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Ah, of course it does. I'll just refrain from commenting any more on that one. I think I know who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? Christoph Gavin. Take that! This man is a friend of mine. Know him? His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I promised... I promised not to tell. Sweet. Well, yeah, we just time. We did. Wait, we did time. We did time heist it, didn't we? She has that same bottle on her desk, but we didn't get her inventory until we talked to Kristoff in jail in the future. So we did do a little bit of a time heist. The client! Elise Donim wrote the magic bottle. Wait, did she? Was that the name of her book? I'm sorry I can't talk about the client. I promised. If I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore. I've got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, then. I think they might be the devil. Huh? Right. She did say in court after before she collapsed something about the devil. Or maybe an angel. What? What do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. When they gave me this. I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? Thanks, Satan. No, the client was gentle, with a gentle smile. So where'd you see this devil, then? It was so quick, I don't remember well. 
But that's when I knew that person wasn't like other people. That's why I believe in my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw was. But it's pretty clear that Christoph Gavin has her charmed. Well, I think that's all. I'll be leaving now. Hey, I'm sorry for what happened. If you want to apologize, try my client, Zach Grammarie. Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad, very sad. I'll put on my smile next time I come, promise. I hope to see you smile then too, Vera. Oh, okay. Take care. Thinking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. You did do something bad, small child. Yeah. It's not really your fault, though, but... Yeah. Okay... So what did I- what did I get? Do I, did I unlock a new scene? No. I don't think I got any new evidence, did I? I don't have anything about Thalassa. Which is what I think I need for both the detention center and the, uh, the, 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 the Borscht Bowl Club. So what? What else can I do? What else can I do? Shit. Maybe there's randomly something new to talk about. Damn it. Tell me, uh... He didn't just brand a guy with juice ball for no reason. Tell me why. Mm. Mm hmm. Maybe she needs to be older brothers separately. That'd be cool. I mean, I think she only saw Kristoff until she was in court and saw Clavier. Eat the nail polish. Yeah, 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 I know. I would like to see that letter, but they kind of implied I can't. Whoa, whoa! I've never seen psych locks like these. Can I even unlock them? What the heck? Something wrong, Mr. Right? No. Everything's fine. Hey, uh, what's over there? Quick, grab it! Hmm. Hmm. I do have what I need? Let me save. Did something change? Oh, I didn't mean to hit title screen. God damn. Put me back. Load from save point. Let's try. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. Apparently, I was mistaken. Let's try some stuff and see what happens. We saved, so if I blow up, it'll be fine. And if it's like the older games, I can't actually lose by messing up Cyclops, but. Alright. Her mother! I know why you don't want to talk about her. Because you gave this to Trucy after she disappeared. Well, Mr. Zack, let me be frank. No, you're Zack. It is true I do not wish to talk of her, and now there's another I could care less about. You. Ah. Take care you do not end up missing yourself. For some reason, it's extra scary when magicians threaten me. I better rethink my strategy here. She's officially missing. I know why you don't want to talk about her. Because she was part of the troop. The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yet, there's another story behind the fame. One that not many know. Oh. The Lassa lost her life during a rehearsal. To you and Valent Grammarie's bullets. It was an accident. It wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Thalassa? I'm sure Valent would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. Her eyes. I love Thalassa's eyes. To think they could read my mind was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that I felt like an embrace. She is dead and Magnifi Grammarie has joined her. The only one with her power left now is Trucy. Mr. Zack? I do not know. I don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. So there's someone else. Someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Thalassa's power. 
<laughs> How would I know? My chances are slim. It would take a miracle to learn the truth, or maybe one has already occurred. There is someone else with the power, and I know who. It's Meekins, of course. It's gotta be Meekins. Oh no, it's Spark. Oh, we have the last one now. She's the mother and the daughter of Magnifique Grand Marie, whereabouts currently unknown. Who else can see? Is it Apollo? Is that what his bracelet's about? This boy? His name is Ifragor. Something weird. <laughs> Who could he be? An attorney. A an attorney? His perception powers are genetic? I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. I call him Apollo, that's his name. So, what are we to make of this, oh great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like, but you could at least say something like, I'm this boy, I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Thalassa. Actually, it's more of a ring. I skipped the line. What did I skip? A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Wait. Hang. Wait. That line. Yeah, no, that's fucking crazy. Um... Do I need to pick up his bracelet somewhere? I have it? I do have it? A link between... Apollo and Thalassa. Crow. On top of your point. Yeah. I was not expecting Apollo to be connected like, personally to this shit. Uh, okay. Yeah. Any points? Sure. His chart. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So it's a range. That's fine. Did I inspect this? Was there a thing here? Found used this to manipulate the time of death, washed it, and left the scene. Which is why it shows no signs of use. Yep. The letter. On the 13th, I'm ready to go with your shoot. No reason why. Does the reason why have to do with Apollo? I don't understand. Uh, Sage Pistols, fine. The diary. I don't need to go into that again, I don't think. The amazing Mr. Hat! Is this the missing link? Between man and Muppet? Hmm. Trucy's locket? Don't tell me. Was there some does she have it in the in in the does she have a bracelet in the the picture was tiny though? There's something sparkling though? Don't fucking That's so small. This is Trucy's mother to the last that she's pretty. I can picture on stage with Zack. Still, she looks like a down-to-earth type. It looks like there's something in her hair. But it's so crunchy. I hope that's not it, but it might be. I can try it. And then in this stamp... Same thing. It's pretty crunchy. And I don't immediately see anything. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try it, I guess. Oh. Can I examine Zach's signature? I'm sure he's written it many times, being an ex star and all. Can I look at her profile? Probably can. I bet there's plenty of people out there who'd kill for a Zach Grammery autograph. Especially since his disappearance. And then the nail polish. Oh, I can't look at the profiles on the screen. Let me try from here. 
Apollo. Green Horde defense attorney I happen to meet. I call him Apollo. I don't know what his name is. Just what I call him. Kristoff, currently incarcerated as central president for the murder of Shady Smith. Fairly magician, Zach, murdered Russian eatery, the Borscht Bolt Club. Trucy, future star magician, Phoenix Wright's daughter, found of her Mr. Hat trick. Uh, the most popular stage magician today, Valent, once performed with his partner, Zach. Drew, painter known for his illustrations, poisoned the Drew studio. Magnifi, founder of Troop Grammarie, great magician, mentor to Zach and Valent. How is his facial hair doing that? Uh, Mike Meekins, bail for responsible. Maybe this is Apollo's dad. He's only 31, though. Uh, the last, uh, Trucy's mother, daughter of Max Ward, Grammy, best grand unknown. Mm hmm. It's a nose hair beard. They're all in fashion. Arrest on suspicion of poisoning her father, currently on trial. The yeah, spark. This was good from miles away. Yep. Yeah. I'm just gonna try the locket, and if that ain't it, then it ain't it. If it ain't the locket, I got no leads whatsoever. Maybe I have it, but I don't know what. I know why you don't want to talk about her is the steam. I got a lot of put together. I know. There's too many characters in the series that's like, what? They're like 22? And they already have an established career as an attorney? What the hell am I doing? And there's guys like Meekins who are like, oh, I'm doing okay, I think. I'm doing alright. There's someone else with a power, and it's Apollo. This boy? A ring. I have evidence about the missing link. It's the locket? He's laughing because I'm right, Mr. Zack. This face is your response, Mr. Ex-Attorney. You did say that I wouldn't laugh if I knew the facts, right? Yeah. All right. Few magicians will tell you they're going to produce a dove and take off their hat. It's almost more effective to not reveal your hand in advance, Mr. Wright. Which I've just done, clearly. Question is, do I have a trump card in here somewhere? Think, right? Think. There's a link between this boy and Thalassa. It's more of a ring. I don't think I have it. If it's supposed to be something that indicates his, his bracelet thing, I don't think I have anything that strongly points to that. But maybe there's more I can do in the past. If we go to the past, maybe, just maybe, we can get more out of Valent. Samurai Jack. Shit. Yes. No. Alright. Hi. Riddle me piss. If you're not world renowned success by 25, you may as well just die in a gutter. It feels that way sometimes. <laughs> uh, you guys wish as I was taking this flashy danger. Danger, danger. Mr. Grammar Yee. Mm -hmm. A life of sacrifice the show must go on, and this shows who it was. Is it the locket? Have I gotten past this point? I don't remember. But that's Zach Grammarie's wife and Trucy's mother. Thalassa, I believe, was her name. Ah, uh, Alakazar! But how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Still in denial mode, eh? Thalassa was at the greatest risk of being shot, and this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. Is it the fact that the pistols fire real bullets? Mr. Wright, I envy you. It appears your chosen profession is far more lenient than mine. What do you mean? For us magicians, a single misstep can be fatal. That's what I'm showing you with the gun. A single mistake can be fatal for an attorney, too. So it can! The last is the key. I can see how our name affects him, but just the name isn't enough. I need to recreate that day in his mind. Starting with where she stood. Is it the fucking stamp? Troop Grammy's performances were very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your fame. We were not merely the latest craze, we were an age, a golden age. You do have what you need for Valentine's Zack, I'm sorry. I understood, thank you. Um, it's all here on this stamp. There's the last of yes. The stamp shows how dangerous it was? I uh, disagree. Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? I don't know! 
A part of his memory still locked up. There's one thing you're failing to address. What's that? I think the gun should have worked there. As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader, Magnify, was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But Mr. Wright, then he would have hid a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. Bounce got a point. If one of the troop members died in an accident and Magnify covered it up, his innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? I'm so close, there has to be something about how Thalassa's death could affect Zack and Valent's relationship with Magnify. I see in your eyes you still have something to say. How can you possibly prove more than you already have? I'll prove why Thalassa's accident tied your hands so completely. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, is it Apollo? Is it Trucy? Um, shit. This, this gives us too many options. I'll prove why thoughts of accidents tied your hands so completely. So if they shot... Let's say that Apollo was a descendant of the Grammaries. Because that seems to be where things are headed if he has the gift. Um, he has the shining. So... If that's... Then, first of all, why would he not know that? Why is he not part of the family? And then why would Thalassa being murdered force... Force their hands? There's either something obvious I'm missing, or there's some step in logic that I'm not connecting. That makes this make sense. And so I'm not really sure what they won't. Approve why Thalassa's actually tied your hands so completely. I don't think it's evidence, though. I think it's a person. Because all the evidence shows is like, yeah, she was part of the group. And yeah, they cared about her. I want to say it's a person, but then I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Think stupid. Stupid would be me just saying Apollo for no reason. A person. It's going to take a little knowledge of the players to crack this one. The accidental death of Zack's wife tied both your hands, and this information proves why Magnify held so much power over you. It's not stupid, I forgore. I don't know what I- I don't know what I forgore, though! They've thrown a lot at me in this case. Hi, Nicole! How you doing? We're having a good time in here. Hey, Nicole. If you just got here, can you give me your immediate impressions with no con- chat, don't- don't- don't lead the witness. What are your impressions of this gentleman right here? Spark Brushel, age 29. Hate this guy. Great. <laughs> that- that'll be all your honor. Thank you. Uh... Shit. That is the correct answer. Um, hey chat. Hey chat. Am I supposed to present a profile? As the answer to this question. Why is there any one of him? Because we're having a bad time. Yes? Okay. Alright. So it is a person. Hmm. Thank you, Trent. Hmm. That was... But me picking profile was less. I know what the answer is. And more, I don't think that any of the evidence supports any of that. Why did Magnify hold so much power over you? Is it because of Thalassa herself? This case is a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, I'm bad at Rubik's Cubes. Green Defense Center, I happen to meet. Kristoff. I don't... I don't think it's Kristoff. I don't see how he's connected to anything. There's Zach. Yeah. He held something over both of them. Is it Trucy? I... She's... She's his granddaughter. I don't see why that would result in something akin to blackmail, though. Well, part of it just seems to be the fact that he was like, okay, of my... Well, maybe, maybe the idea... I'm feeling like it all comes back to the intellectual property, right? For who the... Who's gonna get the rights to his magic. 
And with, with his daughter as part of the troop, it would stand to reason that she was the one who was going to get the rights. Then she died in a terrible accident that was definitely an accident and not at all part of a scheme by Valen or someone. Which then throws the line of succession into question. The case is called Turnabout Succession. Fuck. So, she's dead. Then the next in the bloodline would possibly be Trucy, but she's too young. She's only like... Well... I don't know when she got shot, but it wasn't wasn't recent. She's only eight years old. She's young. So, if that's the case, then it's like, okay, which one of you two does it either pass to? Or is it a case of one of you is going to get it until Trucy comes of age, and then she'll inherit it no matter what? It kind of seems like, based off of the, the note that he wrote, it's just like, this. it goes to this person. It's up to them to decide. So, Zach could have been the one like who's like, well, Trucy is, is part of the bloodline. She's got the gift. So give it to me, Gramps. And he's like, yeah, but like maybe it should go to Valent for some reason. And so he's like, Do, whoever makes me the happiest will be the one that gets the, the rights to my IP. So I can make you guys do whatever I want. Come back around the liking brushel. Damn, no. So if that's the case, if that's what it's all about, if that's why he has all this power over them, I still don't know the answer. I still don't know if it's Trucy or her mom. I feel like you could make an argument for either. Again, it's hard for me to point at a person and be like, this is why there's power. Why not both? Because I have to pick one. I mean, I saved before all this, so it wouldn't be too bad if I exploded. I'm gonna say Trucy. Great! Good! Great! I'm fu I'm getting sick of your shit, Valen! You'll never make a good blackmail artist, that's a compliment! Not a career choice I've been considering. Okay, what about... It's all about the people involved. Yeah. Apollo's included. Well, that's the thing is, I don't... Apollo being connected is tied to the other conversation. I don't. I haven't seen anything here to bring up Apollo. Okay, let's try... Let's try... The Lassa. It wasn't a question of who shot the Lassa. The Lassa herself was the problem. What do you mean? She was Zach Grammarie's wife, Trucy's mother, and Magnify's only daughter. Ah. There was a terrible accident, and the two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnify's power over you, I don't know what was. It was... It was an accident! You present three different forms of thought the last in a row. Yeah. They like to do that sometimes. Like, what's the answer to this question? The same thing, kinda? There's no proof, none at all. But the lasso went missing, and your mentor blackmailed both of his disciples. It doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was a complex family. You mean Troop Grammarie? The Master Magnify, his only daughter, and his two disciples. That does sound like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Do not be tempted into faulty flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. But that is all it was. An accident. Zack and Valance tore the force. The guns blaze, the bullets fly straight toward that beautiful body on stage. And then crash, zing, pow, into everything but her. Now that is magic. I don't know if shooting a bunch of stuff on a stage is magic, but... It happened one day when we were practicing. Same trick, with a new twist. And tragedy. The twist was, what if we shoot her? But as for whose bullet stole Thalassa's life, we shall never know the answer. Why not? Thalassa disappeared from our lives, and Zack was bereft of his wife. Trucy lost her mother, and Magnify his daughter. You gotta raise the stakes. You gotta keep the audience guessing. And that led to blackmail, I take it. It's all part and parcel of the darkness that comes when the curtain falls. Darkness. Depends how I deal with a nail gun. Why did Magnify Grammary try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died. All I can say is it was a critical time for Troop Grammary. A passing of the torch from Magnifique to Zack and Valen. We all sacrificed so that it might be a success. 
The lass's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. What do you mean? In time, we, myself, and Zack found we could no longer oppose Magnify's wishes. Magnify forced us to perform his art for his benefit. I guess I can understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter. But do you not find cowardice in his actions? Hmm? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing, but then to hang that death as a guillotine above our heads? Things were dark behind the scenes in Troop Grand Marie, that's for sure. Does Trucy know? She was not told, naturally. Who would want to know that her, their father might have taken their mother's life? True. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. Sorry to dredge up old memories, but this has helped a lot. Not to find Magnify's Slayer, I should think. True. Ah. After that accident, there was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter. He called himself a newsman at the time. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room, doing his... research. Would you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I have forgotten. But in the course of his interviewing, he became quite close to my partner, Zack. I liked him not. I see. His name, I do not recall, but his scent, the cloying aroma of mint. This baby could fit so much trauma in it. Yes, whenever he smiled, which was far too often. I see. Thanks for your help. It does no good to interview with the past, Mr. Wright. You will not uncover answers, only wounds. I'm sorry. Not that sorry. I'd begun to notice a dark curtain hanging over Troop Grammarie, and I began to realize what I had to do. I had to protect Trucy from that darkness. The reporter he mentioned, the newsman, I never learned who that was at the time. That's not what never means. Though I've got a pretty good idea who it is now. That smile and the sickly sweet smell of mint. The last floss thin thread connecting Zach Grammarie to this world. Sooner or later, I'd have to track him down. It all comes back to Brushel. Okay. That's progress. Meanwhile, in the present... Oh, both of them. Okay. Let's go to Drew Studio first. Present day, Drew Studio. Yeah, well, 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 what do we have here? Remember me? Of course I remember you. Journalist meets ex-attorney in bar, end quote. Can I ask what you're doing here? Mr. Mission was poisoned and his daughter's... I fucking hate him. Oh, I get... Nicole, every one of his sprites is horrendous. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, how I know, yes. It's caused me no end of grief, to be honest. Journalist wishes he'd track down case just a little quicker, end quote. Were you on the trail of this case the whole time? Zach Grammarie was a good friend. Zach said something to affect back at the Borscht Bowl Club. Oh, this sucks. Thank you, Snowbeal. I will never be a memory. Right. Yeah, Brush will never be a memory. Oh, hey, Viz and Shiver in a call. I hate it. Thank you. Um, it's access to that effect, yeah. What a character, what a man. If a little, no. A lot, no. Extremely rough around the edges. Do you think I could ask you a few questions? Oh, you serious? I mean, I'm usually the interviewer, not interviewee. Journalist asks questions, not other way around, end quote. I've wrapped back around to loving him. Give it time, you'll wrap around a third time. Fine, shoot, I don't care. People have been asking me all sorts of things lately. Family forgers. He's growing on me. I hate. It was tragic what happened to Drew Misham and his daughter. Forgery is a serious crime and they paid the price. Can you get the who timing again? Probably not. You know what really did them in though, don't you? A forged diary page. The night I interviewed him, I found out something about Mr. Misham I hadn't known. What's that? You know, we always felt like he was being watched. Every day for seven years. Walls of ears, potatoes of eyes, end quote. Being watched, you mean he felt guilty? No, no, I'm not talking about feelings here. You know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on the case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on back of neck, freaks out, end quote. Because you felt guilty? Why would I feel guilty? You felt like you were being watched, huh? I wonder what it all means. 
Tell me about your paranoia. Drew Mission felt like he was being watched. And you along with him. You sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No, it's nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. But I felt it too. Journalist Shuri is being watched, end quote. Don't you wonder why Zach Grammy got rubbed out after seven years? Right after commit right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from that courtroom. Then for seven years he talks to no one, not a soul. Then just as the remaining time was almost up, he contacts me in order to have this made. And then he dies. Starting to put the pieces together, are we? And you were being watched this whole time? Maybe not just me, maybe you were too. I don't like him saying that while he's looking at me like that. Me? Talking about Zack. I'm watching Brushel. Don't watch him. I met Zack through that case, actually. You mean the shooting at Magnify Grammary? No, before that. It's not widely known. You mean the accident during the quick draw shoot -em practice? My, 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 you're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite the scoop. I wanted it all. Money, fame, women, a little puppy. All for me. I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled of fresher mint than they do now. Valent Grammary did mention one particularly nosy reporter. In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnifi Grammary at the time. I knew his daughter too, of course. Thalassa, was it? Really? Then Thalassa disappeared quite suddenly at that. And Magnifi wouldn't say a word about it. My evil habit got the better of me. Journalist catches scent of a scoop, goes on feeding frenzy, end quote. I set up a one-on-one -on -one interview with Thalassa's husband, see? Zach Grammary. Something strange was in the air over at the Troop Grammary in those days. The whole screwy mentor-controlling disciples scene started by then, I'm guessing. The lassa, she was part of it all, right? Come on, you can tell me off the record. Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, you can't say off the record and then grab your pen. I kept prying and eventually became friends with Zach. Sure, he punched me once or twice or five times, but over time he came to see me as his confidant. But Valen... He's been waiting this whole time. Seven years, eh? Waiting. For his big comeback, of course. A big revival of the Magnifi miracle. Of course, it was all a dream. Because of this. The performance rights. In the absence of any official documents, he was golden. Who's to say the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Valant? So Valant waited until Zack died, legally at least. The time finally comes and Valant's like a kid on Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at the Sunshine Coliseum, you know. If that document sees the legal light of day, it's gonna put a bit of a damper on the big show. He's a sorry one, that Valent Grammary. Lost out to his partner at work and in love, too. Love? It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. What has three sides and all of them pointy? A love triangle. That is pretty classic. When you're in a performing troupe, that's your world. It's like family. One with an entire high school's worth of drama, intrigue, and backstabbing. And in the middle of all this, Thalassa has Trucy. And then she dies. I need to find out more about this Thalassa. Can I, can I present something about her? Like the group of them? Mr. Brushel, could you take a look at this? I hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. It reminds me of like a fucking tire with a mohawk. Yeah. I would take Luigi over this man. Holy shit. That is the most shocking thing I've ever heard Nicole say. Uh, what's the angle? Actually, no, that's that's okay. I don't need an article. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on this. I hear you. I hear you. You want me to sniff around for a scoop? Well, I, you've come to the right nose, my friend. It's odorless. Thanks. Okay, that was less than informative. What about the locket? Mr. Brushel, do you know this person? Do I know that person? Of course! I was friends with Zack after all, he hit me a few times. Five times, actually. But still, I never forget his wife. Thalassa Grammary. Magnify Grammary's only daughter. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, why the heck not? I hate that he's such a useful witness and informant. I hate this. So, Thalassa married Zack and had Trucy, see? It was her second marriage, actually. You mean she was divorced? I hadn't heard this one before. Not quite. Her late husband was a performer too. He died in an accident on stage. Tragic, really? They had only been married one year. I didn't know. 
Ah, but she was a beauty. I still carry a portrait photo of her around, you know. You carry a picture of a dead magician from seven years ago? Hey, would you look at those bracelets? Damn it. I've known Trucy since she was a little thing, too. She's got the better deal, really. She's got you for family, after all. What do you mean? Just reminiscing, you know. Thalassa has another child besides Trucy, end quote. There is another one. What? Always two. But Trucy said she was an only child. Ah, uh, yes, this one she had with her previous husband. So, her previous husband? Her first husband who died on stage? Yep, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan now. That's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. Thalassa had another child. Do you think I could borrow that photo? Sure, I can be generous on occasion, you know. No, just this random lady photo I've been carrying for seven years. You can have it. I won't need this locket anymore. Better return it to Trucy before I forget. People and events all get tangled together and get biggerer and biggerer. Don't you think? I was too busy wondering about biggerer to listen to what you were saying. He makes his own toothbrushes with his own hair. <laughs> he, he is a toothbrush. Sometimes you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. He took Trucy's locket for seven years. He got that from her when she was a child. Oh, shit. Oh, that's really bad that we've been holding on to that for seven years. Maybe so, but still. His name, yeah, his name is Spark Brushel. I have to do what I can. And I have to tell what I find to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtain on this little play. Apparently, that's not my role anymore. Magnify. I was just wondering what Magnify would think of all this. What do you mean? Haven't you seen it in Trucy? She's got his power. You mean, how I can't lie to Trucy? It was the same with Magnify. And with his daughter, Thalassa. It's a strange thing. You think it's some granary gene? Magnify told me once back when Zack married Thalassa. He said Zack had good eyes. But not good like a Grammarie's eyes, not that good. I wonder if Zack ever played a game of poker with his wife. Who knows what the Grammarie's secret was? Maybe nobody now that Zack's gone. Zack Grammarie. And then, uh, Spark Brushel died on the spot. Guess he ate some of that poison lying around in the, in the gallery. Shame, really. Was just starting to get to know him. The end. The plot had finally begun to reveal itself. It sprouted from a warp in the Grammarie fabric and grew, swallowing everything. Wrapping itself around the Grammarie's power. Reporter finds Tasty Stamp. End quote. Nom 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 nom. End quote. Ack. Err. Dow. A power which passed from Magnify Grammarie to Thalassa to the next generation. And I would once again need to meet... The one who bridged it all together. Too bad he's already dead. Nothing more to be done about it. Oh, look. I can go to the present day when he's not dead yet. Let's go to the Sunshine Coliseum. I have a theory I'm mad about being plausible. I'm mad about everything that's happening. Sunshine Coliseum. Well, this is a blast from the distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Valent. Seven years has it been? Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I've nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. But then I realized I needed to hear it from you. Fuck him up, Phoenix! He has a mustache now to indicate that time has passed. It's true. I have walked a difficult road these past seven years. Because you couldn't perform Magnify's repertoire? Do not be deceived. Valent skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. Zack. His rather well-performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Zack Grammarie murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. He said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? 
I remember it as if it were only yesterday. Yet, that was not the way of it, in the end. For while he vanished, the suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said? I had no idea. Yet, the very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They cover the greatest magic show in history as if it were a vaudevillian distraction. And here must I stand, smiling at the ball. What am I if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened? Magnify's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get the answer from you. That... We, I just said, hello, how are you? And he went, ah! <laughs> I know I'd be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds an awful lot like something I heard seven years ago. Only two locks. Only two. They might be beefy locks, though. Magnify's death. Ask what you will, you'll get nothing from me. I'm as much a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years, I have endured. Now finally the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Valent. But right now, I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Welcome back, Neuronatural. Valent, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. Yeah, 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 oops, you know, oops. And what might that be? I see it bears the Grammarly seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. Oops, my bad. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnify's miracles. What? Zack Grammarie, he wrote this? He passed everything to his daughter? True Cianigmar, actually. She's officially my daughter these days. <sighs> Preposterous, Zack. Zack is gone, vanished into the void. This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. Ah. Where? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived in thrall to the dead? You're not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnify. Yes, it was Zack, it was. And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Did you think there might be some way out of it? Say, if you could prove Zack Grammary shot Magnify? Was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valent. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnify? It was the clown. The clown what did it. Um. Um. I don't- who- who killed him? Who? It was Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat what did it. Um. So, do I know this? I, I, it's possible I need to go show this picture to What's-His-Face. To Zack. To, and get more information. Charlie! Sphinx the Time Traveler? A little bit. Um. Because I can't present a profile and I, I, I mean, I don't know. If I do have what I need, then I don't know what it is. We'll come back. We'll come back. Maybe it's time to do a little more legwork. I may know this. I mean, I have my guesses, but I don't really know. Do 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 be be do be be boop be. A man in a costume is handing out balloons to the kids. It's nice to know kids still like balloons somehow. They're a favorite of mine, balloon sellers. That is, I would have them join me on the big stage. They could hand out balloons to the children in the audience. When all those balloons get in the way of seeing your show, bravo. The possibility had not even occurred to me. Phoenix Wright, entertainment consultant. Get out of here, Blue Badger. That sure is a big sign. Yes, it's a favorite of mine. Impressive, isn't it? I considered using it for one wall of my house when the show is over. Your house is that big? Actually, as fate would have it, I currently live in a one-room apartment. But following the wild success of my show, I intend to build a luxurious mansion. 
I was torn over just how big to make it. Until that sign whispered the answer to me. That's really beautiful. I feel like you meant that genuinely. The Sunshine Coliseum, was it? I'm not sure it actually qualifies as a coliseum, but it's a great forum. Yes, it's a favorite of mine. I've always been fond of Sunshine. Speaking of which, have you heard what happened here recently? Oh yeah, something about something going on during some concert. Exactamundo! I see no reason to hide the fact that I too was involved in that case. Well, that's something. Did you help solve it? Ha! What do you take me for? No, I merely served to deepen the mystery. He sure fucking did. That's obstruction of justice. And obstruction of Apollo justice. Yeah. I'm a magician. It's my sworn duty to create mystery whenever possible. That holds up in court. Yeah. Right. I don't think I've ever seen a hot air balloon so close. It's a favorite of mine. I've often thought of how to use it in one of my shows. Perhaps for the climax of Valent's quick draw, shoot him returns. I stand on stage, I shoot, and the hot air balloon is pierced. It explodes. What do you think? Thrilling, yes? Uh, a little, I guess. No one inside the Coliseum would be able to see it. Bravo. It took me four days of planning to realize that. He's good. Uh. Alright. Goodbye. I bid you adieu. A dooby dooby doo. A ruby ruby roo. Gonna do a quick little save. But I'm pretty sure we got what we need here. He's kind of a dumbass. I mean, it's Ace Attorney. It's like 80-20 that whoever you're talking to is a dumbass. And 100% that you're a dumbass. Okay. I know why you don't want to talk about her, and it's because of the stamp, right? Yeah. My, uh... My, my evidence has been shuffled around slightly. So I can't just use muscle memory to pick the right thing. Yep. There's someone else with that power! Take that. And it's him! I forgot. I mean, I know at this point, he hasn't really interacted with Apollo much, if at all. But, um... It's still funny that he's like, oh, I can't, I don't know. Uh, the missing link. Yeah! Actually, I know something. Your marriage to Thalassa was her second. How'd you know this? Her first husband, he died a year after they were wed, yes? He was a performer. They met when he joined us Grammarys as a guest in our show. After Thalassa wed him, she left the troupe for a while. Thank you for the bits. The guide said present her portrait, and I read us present Thalassa's profile. No worries. Thank you for the bits, though. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph of her here. I couldn't help notice what she was wearing when I first saw this. Those bracelets stand out. They are a Grammarie family heirloom. This boy wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. What? So that's why. Why what, Mr. Zack? I took this photograph of Thalassa before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I bet I know where that other one went. She gave it to this boy, her son. A Grammarly family? Lawyer restored. Tell me. This strange power, I myself do not know from where it comes. Yet the fact is that it was passed down the Grammarly line. It runs in their veins. What is it? I asked her, Thalassa once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. Tension. If she were to face a person and they became tense even slightly, then she would know, no matter how hard they tried to hide it from her. So she could see it? Not quite. This is the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that they were... She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting this tension without the use of a particular object. Or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait, were they something she wore? Yes, her bracelets. I admit the first time I saw one of those, I felt there were more to it than just fashion. But what kind of power could a bracelet have? I have made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Let's go. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two are brother and sister, yes. 
And the brother, too, has this power of theirs. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight, after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. I would not see her live her life without knowing. I understand. I'll tell the two of them when the time is right. I am in your debt. Once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. Does it make, does it reverberate at a certain frequency when you hit it with a metal hammer? It is said to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something? Yes. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrist? I I thought he was going with, they, they adjust the temperature and that's how it like reinforces the grammary perception ability. We're like, no, no, no. It, it's, it's like the one ring from Lord of the Rings. It just, whoop, now it fits on your finger. And this has something to do with the power? What have I told you? The Grammary power reacts to tension in others. When a Grammary senses tension, they too become tense. And this tension translates into minute contractions of the muscles. So minute they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. With a bracelet on, one can sense these contractions. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrist. Precisely. But that alone doesn't really count as mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? I guess that sounds simple enough. My Apollo cosplay bracelet is pretty loose on my wrist. I'm woefully non-screen accurate because of it. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Like, like the photons that you're using to perceive stuff are bouncing off particles, and that's what, like, quantum mechanics kind of deal with. Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? I've heard of it before. They say athletes can see a moving ball at, like it was stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of the face and the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of a crowd before one may distract it. So basically, what you're saying is, the Grammaries can see really well. Hello, Dan. How are you doing today? Blech. 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 Thank you, Dan. Blech. 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 Chat, stop yelling. Dan is right. Is he, though? Is he right to do this? Dan chose violence on this day. Thank you for your services, Dan. Jesus Christ. Brush on my goat. How dare... Uh, the Grammarys can see real good. For them, seeing is more than believing. It is knowing. See you later, Dan. <laughs> it's like, I'm out. Their power relies on eyesight combined with exceptional focus. Things are starting to come into focus for me, too. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. But what if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something? Precisely. But wait, Trucy doesn't have any bracelets. They're talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary, she probably does it without thinking. I doubt Trucy herself has realized this. That is all I know of things grammary. Thank you, Mr. Sack. If this boy's bracelet is the real thing, then he will use it before long, thereby awakening his power. I'll keep that in mind. Well, shall we play a game? Ah, I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I'll tell you of that night. That night. The night my mentor, Magnifi Grammary, passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters sent. This was Magnifi's test. A test. In his last years, Magnifi worked us to the bone. No, to the pain. But that night, I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. It's a lot to justify character design. Yeah, someone just drew a cool bracelet on him and she was like, my God. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this, I give my art to you, Zach. What? It says, thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zach. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. How could I shoot you? You're my mentor. Bah! I thought you might say that. 
If I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? Then of course, I would have given Valent his chance. And if I had shot you in the forehead instead? Then it would be over. If you or Valent were to shoot me in the head, then I to the darkness would go and my art with me. A fitting end, don't you think? I guess. Ah! Yet this ending too gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Zack. And I am sorry I have done much that was wrong in my day. Yeah. It seems to me that Magnify wanted you to be his successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valence. That does answer that question I had earlier. He wanted to give him the first chance. And then if he failed the test, he'd either be fucking dead or Valent would have an opportunity. So, yeah, that's fair. I mean, Magnify sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps, but it is not something we'll ever know for sure now. I wonder, what is Valent up to these days? Waiting for you to die. If seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Ah. And now here I am, and his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know? What? You don't mean to tell me they've put the blame for our mentor's death on him? The trail ended when you vanished, Mr. Zack. There were even rumors that Valent had helped you pull it off. That's madness! Well, it seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated, even though I'm dead? That night, Zack Granary was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. But he left one thing behind before he parted. This. To whom it may concern, seven years past, I, Zack Granary, murdered my mentor, Magnify Granary. I apologize for the trouble caused by my son's disappearance from court, and here I confess. Oh. His confession to use as I saw fit. Confess to my crime. Of course, he'd killed no one. This was his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Valent Grammary. Zach's confession had a court record. Oh, so it's all good then. <laughs> then that, that just simplifies everything, doesn't it? Hmm. 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 Yeah. Good. Great. Um... What what did I what did I still need here? Right, I don't have a means to do. Do I have anything new to throw at him? Do 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 do. How about Zach's confession? What do you think of that? He doesn't think. Cool. All right, great. What about this portrait? All right, rad. I have a feeling Valent might be interested in the confession though, so. Shall we? Bum, 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 bum. I did it, Lamau Toodles, Zach. <laughs> An entertainer to the last. Boo doo doo beep, boo doo beep, beep beep beep, beep boo doo bop. All right. What he need? I forgot. Now if he's death. Now let me just make sure you guys have this valent. Not as long as I have this. Transfer of rights. What? This is a genuine article. It was notarized by the best man I know. He shot Magnify. It was Zack, and then he left. Who really killed Zack? Uh, killed Magnify. What about the confession? I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zack Grammary wrote one more thing before passing on. But this is a confession! In which he admits to the killing of Magnify Grammary. See? All according to your plan. I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fooled the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet it seems the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zack wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. Alaka! Kazoomji! I originally thought Valent was Phoenix in disguise when he first appeared. <laughs> that would be wild. Alright. You do know that this confession is nothing but lies? So you're admitting that you murdered Magnify. Yes, it is my opinion that Zach Grammarie killed no one. 
then you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So he vanished to protect me, his partner. Ha 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 ha. A stirring tale, it's true. Did you shoot Magnifique Grand Marie in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will, there is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnifique's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. I knew it. The devil. So Val- wait, the devil was the- well, So Val and Grand Marie did kill the great Magnifique. Heh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. So sorry, Mr. Wright, but it was not I who shot my mentor. What? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as? I don't know. Knack and talent grammary, maybe? It's Knack! It's Knack! It was Knack the whole time! Knack thumbs up dot PNG. Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. Yes, yeah, send me, send me a, a viz. Are you around? Send me a, a, a sticker on my DS. Send me a picto chat. There was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now. If it wasn't Zack or Valent who shot Magnify, then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means... Wait, you don't mean... Yes, the great Magnifique Grammarie himself. I, did, I didn't rule this out. So Magnifique Grammarie committed suicide? You find it hard to believe? To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room... The old man called out to me. So you spoke with Magnify? Yes, and this is why I knew what he had done. Magnify transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Zack, not me. I see. Then I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did, who did it. You owe me no apology, huh? My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of murder. What, your crime? Is Val Grammarie confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There are no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnify's plan. He wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. The little demon whispering inside my heart. The demon. Let me confess, I had intended to shoot Magnify. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? That night, I prepared something before going to Magnify's hospital room. Which was? IV fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then I would use the IV liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. But then Magnify called me back. I'm sorry, Valent. I'm giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please help him if you can. Damn, that's the way he put it. I left the room. And then I stopped. The shock of what I'd just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Magnify Grammarie killing himself. Then the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him and the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prints. Then I used the syringe to add the IV liquid he I'd brought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. Magnify died and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yes. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It's as I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. 
Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're gonna turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Zach Grammarie was alive! Well, not anymore. And now it occurs to me, what if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I, no, we never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Her? The mind races and the mouth flaps on my apologies. Forget this matter. I can only hope that the day will come when I again meet my partner, Zach Grammarie. Then I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. If no one in this case has died, <laughs> if Zack is still alive getting bonked on the head, if Magnify framed his own suit, if everyone's alive and they're like, surprise, I'm just going to snap the DS in half. I'm glad we had this chance to talk. Thank you. You no problem. Zack Grammarie, Shady Smith, whatever name you prefer, he's no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver, and the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I'd have to do to push back the darkness for good. And it would involve paying that man a visit. The darkness. They're all magicians. Every single one of them. Oh my god, we're getting there. We're so close. Sorry, sir. Prisoner Christoph Gavin's currently occupied. I see. Is he just sitting on the toilet in the middle of his cell? Do you know when it'll be finished? I, uh, well, could you go find out? Uh, certainly, sir. Please wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard, but there's something I need to see. Finally, I can look at his chair. That chair is just screaming to be sad, and, and if I sat, I'd probably fall asleep and have very expensive dreams. Apparently, Gavin brought everything in here with him when he came. All the things in here are more valuable than what I have in my office. Oh, well, I man, I'm a bit jealous. But I shouldn't be. I mean, it's still a prison. But it's a nice prison. My knowledge of flower names includes sunflowers, tulips, and that's about it. Or so I always thought. But now I see I was wrong. I know that this is a rose, I think. A rose is a rose. There it is! The yellow envelope. And the sender is Drew Misham. I was right. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. If this is the last letter Drew Misham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Does this say David Chrysler? 424 Apple Street, Blazing Springs, California. So this was not addressed to Kristoff. Here goes! Let's see if this atroquinine spray finds anything. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Good thing you brought that with him. Yeah, got it. Maybe it was an alias? You know, well, but then how to get to him? So this was Drew Misham's messenger of death. It was this stamp, all right, no mistaking it. And his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. The interview request came like you said it would, and they're looking into the case. I swear on my life, I won't tell them about you, so please release the spell you've put on my daughter. I'll write later with a with a report. Is that the last word? Drew Misham. Damn, dude, gotcha. Letter from Misham had the court record. Report, yeah. Decisive evidence! Unless this was also faked. What's this? A burglar in jail? How was your piss? Gavin! I didn't know you moonlighted in larceny, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Vera Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? I wasn't touching your stuff. You're touching it right- you're still touching it. There is no known survivor as of atroquinine poisoning, but it never hurts to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now then. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot I had it. Many thanks. 
I was perceiving. What? Huh? What? <laughs> huh? Huh? We've now seen all the clues in this case. What? Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We've come to the final chapter, the final trial. Find the truth. You're the only one who can. Looks pissed now. To be continued. Final trial is really short, the shortest trial in the game. For a long play, it's like an hour long. It might take you two hours or less. You don't mind passing six hours to get days of the night. Do a short stream Thursday. Thank you. You read my mind. Um. Yeah. Was that a pin? Let's fucking do it. Welcome to court. Huh? Me? Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you might decide. You must decide. Is the defendant Vera Misham innocent or guilty? I might just ask for more nudges if I'm getting stuck. The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Why am I a computer program? Courtroom number three. Preparations complete. Is this the... Is the jurist system just like a fucking AI? And that's why there aren't jurors in the room? Something inside me. Rising. Surfacing. It all comes back together. Phoenix is just a program. Always has been. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now. So close. Is this Danganronpa? October 9th, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number three. Lucky number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Bishop. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution's ready to rock. Prosecutor Gavin, how is the defendant's Vera Misham's condition? Acute atracrinine poisoning, according to her physician. She could die at any time. Thanks for the hydrate. Thus, her absence from the courtroom today. What? They can't put her on trial without her being here. It is unusual. They should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer, or they risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. Apologies to the defendants, but the show must go on. You can't declare Zach guilty. Yeah, right. right, if Vera dies, the trial will be canceled. I'm not going to let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years. I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while there's still time. Very well, your opening statement, Prosecutor Gavin. The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she'd done. Bro, Vera was poisoned with atroquinine. The exact same poison that took her father's life. What better confession could you ask for? Being the killer, she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come by. That is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no objections, I see no reason to postpone a verdict. What we need to worry about isn't the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you need to- you have to prove something. She was in court giving her testimony before us. I just had a fucking brain blast. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who her mystery killer was. I think- I think my brain just grew five sizes. Her- the prosecution's objection is sustained. There's s swelling in the brain. I should probably lie down. I asked the defense to prove its claim to this court. I already said the answer earlier. Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. I've got two things to prove here. Who did it and how. Which to hit first. I'm gonna show the how, because I think that's easier. How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Any comments before we begin, Prosecutor Gavin? 
Not a bottle or container of the poison was found in the defendant's body. That's rabies? Oh. So the vector of poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Mission? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Mission? Oh my god, we're back to all this stuff. <laughs> oh my god, we have so many things now. It was the coffee mug. It was the magic show. Letterbox, tiny frame portrait. We have different paintings. We have the notebook page. So the faked one. We have the letter from Misham. So even though we gave it back, we do have... We got the information from Phoenix. Thanks, bud. Tom! Hello, Tom. Thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome, welcome. We are very deep near the end of this game. No spoilers. Um, but we just resumed trial after a lengthy flashback and a bunch of shenanigans. So, hey. Uh, there's an address on here and a name I've never heard of. At least, I think so. It's too blurry to read. That's not just the resolution. It's actually blurry in-universe. And Misham's autopsy report. Okay. I'm pretty sure she got poisoned from the nail polish. What's this? What a beautiful bottle. I'd like to give whoever designed that a hand. Is that nail polish? Hmm, it's colorless. Ah, something the matter? Uh, no, nothing, nothing at all. So the killer put poison in this bottle and made her drink it? As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. Nail polish? It's like paint for nails. Know any women with red nails? Ah, my wife has red nails. I see, so she's been painting them all this time. Your Honor, I would like to request a new judge. Let's recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? I, I might have said something about the nail polish before, but it really only just clicked when it showed... The flashbacks come in handy sometimes, because she was like chewing on her fingers and then passed out. And I'm like, oh. She was ingesting it if off of her nail. Can we stop playing the game here and never finish it? No. Court is back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. I didn't, I didn't think twice about that at the time. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Oh! Prosecutor Gavin, when the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? Uh, well, I... Bailiff, have them check the defendant's nails at once, Mr. Justice. Yes. Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Yes. That bottle belongs to Vera Misham? Why do you ask? Know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No, just checking. Mr. Justice, you are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of this accusation? Here, let me show you. Read you loud and clear, Your Honor. I'm just gonna write down everything I've done in my life up to this point. Okay, got it. Understood, Your Honor. No problem. I know what I'm doing this time. Yeah, do I? Let us ask, who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? Kristoff. What's this? Kristoff Gavin? What's your game? Uh, Apollo Justice. Hey, my bro, there's no way he could do a thing like that. You should know that better than anyone else. Indeed. He is behind bars. I know. However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. He said, bruh. What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps it was seven years ago. But Christoph Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. It's simply inconceivable. Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. That face tells me one thing. Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, if you feel there's a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay, the defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. Your Honor, I just want to point out this is a clear conflict of interest on many fronts. 
Bailiff begin proceeding to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. The one with the very comfy chair. Ah, Your Honor, how nice to see you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Is he in cell four in Japanese? It's like an unlucky... No, no, that could be... Ah, Mr. Justice! I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Yeah. Why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Stiff upper lip, Apollo. You can do it. Does this bottle look familiar? Ariadoni nail polish? Why, yes, I use it myself. As did the late defendant, I hear. She's not dead yet! And? Was there something concerning this bottle you wish to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste indeed! This nail polish was how she was poisoned! Etroquinine, was it? You're well informed about the case, Mr. Gavin. Even in solitary, much comes to my desk, and I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier? Maybe you can explain this? You're being accused again, by him, again. Ah, and? You agree with his accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. You are suspected of the poisoning of the defendant, Vera Misham. Please testify on this matter to the court. I wonder how much he knew. He knew all along. Well, actually, I don't know if he knew about Apollo's heritage. He might have. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. The prosecution's case holds she poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too. Why, yes, actually, I am going to make that connection. Well, I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the missions. Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice, begin your cross-examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss, but I know he poisoned the missions. The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention, why? I'm wondering if when he gave her... Because he's the one who was like, here's your good luck charm, bring this with you when you go outside. And maybe he was like, make sure you never put it on your fingers. Unless, maybe that was like part of the arrangement he kind of set up with her. We'll see. Poisoning Vera. Owning the same nail polish. Oh, he's all oh, the bracelets spinning. Owning the same nail polish isn't sus, isn't it? Tell me, is this nail polish expensive? Ariadoni is a nail polish of the highest order. Not only is it a fabulously expensive, but it's made in extremely limited quantities. And you and Vera just happen to both use it. That can't be a coincidence. I'm guessing it's not a coincidence. It's simple. Ariadoni is the best nail polish one can buy, correct? Then if one wanted the best, one would buy it. That makes sense. Why, it's a bit like my feelings toward my brand name Gavel here. And my silk top hat. Go back to the brand name Gavel. Are we done showing off our fine tastes? Please continue with your tasteful testimony. Tasteful. I've been in solitary for half a year. How could I poison her? Can't you still make contact with the outside world in solitary? So he had an accomplice on the outside? Is this your latest accusation? I'm allowed a certain modicum of letter writing. A Gucci gavel. But the contents of those letters are closely checked. It would be extremely difficult to send a hit request. Prosecutor Gavin's on the warpath, isn't he? Yeah. You think so too, Trucy? I bet I know why. He must be nervous with Big Brother watching. And maybe that's a weakness I can turn to my advantage. Are we cool with that? May I continue? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. Big Brother is watching. The defendant is not dead yet. She's just resting. There are no known cases of someone surviving atroquinine poisoning. You seem to know a lot about atroquinine. 
I know a lot about a lot of things, which is why I suggest we pick up the pace. Or else you'll be short one defendant for what she's worth. The witness will refrain from speaking ill of the ill. My apologies. Shall I continue? Prosecution's case holds up. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Vera had no reason to want to commit suicide. And also, who would commit suicide by doing their nails? The answer is quite simple. Basically, allow me to explain. Beginning with, why did she do it? The answer is quite simple. She couldn't live with her own guilt. Next, why did she use nail polish to poison herself? This too is simple. So she could die doing something that she liked. Something that she liked? Once she saw the trial wasn't going her way, she knew she would die. And it's not easy to bring poison into a courtroom. Must I explain further? Hmm, I believe that's clear enough. Crystal clear. Wow, the two brothers together is like a two-man wrecking team. They could use a little more teamwork though. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too? Both Vera and Mr. Mission were poisoned with atroquinine. Though that really can't be a coincidence. The defense is repeating fallacious statements based on conjecture. The prosecution requests concrete, unambiguous proof of the witness's crime. Objection sustained. The defense will please present concrete proof. Does Gavin seem strange to you, too? It's like he's all grown up. I think that's how prosecutors are supposed to be, actually. Though he is acting different than usual. I'll bet it has a lot to do with his brother being in the room. Well, let's make this testimony count, Apollo. Quick and painless. My bracelet should do the trick. Okay. I'm questioning my ex-boss. His testimony seems watertight, but he's lying. I'm sure I'll be able to see something as long as I focus. I must perceive. I'm assuming it's on the last line. That's also when he goes from normal talking to ominous glasses pose. Let's see. Let us see what we can perceive. He is staring right back at me. You aren't going to suggest. Yeah. I was responsible for poisoning. Oh, he is not moving at all. He's not even blinking. My father too. Okay, so it's not the eyes. He's so fucking intense. That's a lot. Let's try again. Maybe, uh... Does he have a scar on the back of his hand? That seems probably important. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it might not be important, but maybe... And I don't think his scar would be by itself a- What the fuck? What the shit? Excuse me? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What was I thought like maybe it would be like sweating or he scratches it or something. The devil. She saw the fucking devil. Oh my fucking god. Ay, 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 ay. Holy fuck. That is terrifying. Oh my god, look at that. Gotcha! Gotcha! I wish I didn't, though. Uh. It was you who killed Drew Misham? Yeah, but what is your proof? His hands look evil! <laughs> A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father too. Your hand tensed unnaturally and a little devil appeared to give me the news. What? And let's assume for the sake of argument that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Ah. Then I must be very talented indeed. You see, Drew Mission was killed on October 6th, while well, I was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. If that's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. But you found a way all the same, and I found it too. This is how you poison Mr. Mesham. Ish the stamp, the tiny frame. It's gotta be the tiny frame. 
I don't think it's the envelope. That's how we connect it to him. My, my. No. And here I thought you'd become so far. Why not? I admire how you, lacking any confidence whatsoever, choose to barrel on. Your defense lacks even a shred of elegance. Much like Phoenix Wright, come to think of it. Relax, just as I come this far, I must know the answer. How did the killer get to the victim when the killer was in jail? When you phrase it like that, that makes it seem more obviously the letter. Oh wait, the red letter, specifically, right? But except that's not the poison. Or no, this was him sending the stamp in the first place. I have the little literal stamp. No, I don't. I don't have this. Unless you're saying literally the stamp on the envelope. So, this. What? Why not? Why not? Why? What did it? What? Had? What? Why did it? When? When? How? What I am? When I am? Him? What? Nail polish, show ticket, envelope. Ferris card, coffee mug, red envelope where it was sent originally. Hidden painting, letterbox, tiny frame, portrait, portrait, landscape, commemorative stamp. I thought that was one of the paintings. They put it next to all the other paintings, chat. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. Good night, Mr. Misham died. He was seen writing a letter. Atchikonine was found on this stamp, Mr. Gavin. So am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell. Got him. Got him. We got him. Case closed, Your Honor. I'm sure that's it. That is all, Your Honor. Well, a stamp is just a small painting. When they're all small, every painting's a stamp. This gets it. Order, order. Poison on the back of that stamp. After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. Daddy? That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Mission write you a letter. That's how you killed him. What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spock Brushel's testimony. Don't flash back. Don't flash back. <laughs> Damn it. Don't make me keep looking at this man. Well, that's the thing. See, after he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp, a so-called postage stamp, end quote. Whew. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence? He does have a point. How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. <laughs> really, Clavia? You should be seeing through these weak spine bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Mission would use that stamp that night? Least of all, Christoph Gavin locked away in his cell. Well, it seems that the defense has run out of things to say. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Christoph. Clavia? Honestly, I wanted to believe you, but the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You were, Christoph. What are you saying, Prosecutor Gavin? Air forehead. What was your accusation again? Huh? Uh, it was that, um... This poison stamp killed Drew Misham, yeah? To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. That's right, which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned, why? Uh, why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Misham died by that stamp. That is all. Coincidence? Kristoff, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? 
What are you up to, Clavia? I could ask you the same question, Kristoff. Heh. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well. I shall take his claim head on then. Justice? Oh, wait, wait. You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Apollo, motive! He's talking about motive! He's changing the subject again. Hmm, indeed. It's hard to see how an attorney could come could come to want to kill a painter. Here's something. Why didn't he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. He hates art. So what does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. A motive for murder. A motor murder. Yeah. This is a vital, if not the most vital element of this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I'd say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital. That's pretty vital. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Then let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misham? Um, could be, could be the fabricated evidence. Mm-hmm. I bid thee farewell. Could be that. Could be the red envelope. But we can't prove that this is from Kristoff, I don't think. Ms. Drew Mishram, a deposit of 100000 in a designated account. Please send a receipt once you've confirmed the transfer. Sign a paper sent in the unclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. Within three days, I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. It's pretty vital. What reason did he have? This isn't a reason. This is just showing you tried to kill him. I think the reason is the notebook page. Christoph Gavin's motive becomes clear when we consider why the stamp came to Drew Misham's studio in the first place. Would the stamp have also worked? And why was that? Forgery, Your Honor! Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I've seen that before. A page from a diary, wasn't it? Magnifique Grammarie's diary. When attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes. But did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven. Objection. The defense attorney on that case was Phoenix Wright. Who other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And here, the second. Phoenix found a workaround for proving his innocence without having to pay Apollo. <laughs> the perfect comeback. It'll take seven years and we'll rely on the dumb luck of finding a magical attorney, but I won't have to pay for him. Those were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Mission by the client who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poisoned commemorative stamp. Drew Misham drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old? The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase anything and anyone with connections to the forgery. To keep them from talking? But he made a mistake. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. The killer's time bomb was delayed. The poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame. Where it sat for seven whole years. You girl boss too hard, your honor. Air forehead, do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemed up the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp. 
and it was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago. Adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Misham was none other than Phoenix Wright. Sorry, but that's not how this is gonna go down. Oh, then how will it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Oh, old boy. Uh, uh here. What's this? I don't know. Just got over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. And one more thing. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. I understand I'm asking the impossible of you. Yeah, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. A Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before? Now here's a question. Just who was Shady Enigmar's previous defense attorney? No, th this can't all be. But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you, Christoph Gavin. Order, order. What is the meaning of this witness? I mean defendant and former lawyer. Let me begin by denying this. Objection. It's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin. And impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly did you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? That would be difficult. I'm afraid this line of inquiry won't yield. You... Hair forehead? Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks clammy. Evidence! Evidence that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that forgery seven years ago. Clavier? Just prove it! Clear up these doubts now or I swear I'm off this case. You must have thought of some evidence. Apollo! Prosecutor Gavin looks like he's in physical pain. That darkness. I have to pull that darkness out of him, and proof is the only way I can. What proves Christoph Gavin's link to Drew Misham? Uh, I've got just the thing. Which is saving, just in case I explode. Well, Mr. Justice, you claim Christoph Gavin requested a forgery of Drew Misham uh, seven years ago. Prove it! It can be proven. Simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not... Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then... I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. Very well. But if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Objection. Your Honor, you do the defense in injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about his claim. Should the penalty not match his passion? Ah, uh, I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time. <laughs> well, Mr. Justice? Fine, Your Honor. All I have to prove is any kind of link. Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Misham. I know I just saved, but... I don't want to have to go through that again if I fuck this up. Full penalty. Is it 100% of the bar no matter what? I have something that clearly does the job. Very well, Mr. Justice. Present your evidence. Show the link between our witness and Drew Misham. You honor my attorney's badge. Um... Uh, between, between the two of them. Well. I don't know why Vera's card is still here. I don't... I don't know. Vera Misham. Vera, Vera Misham. Hmm. I don't know. Um, the, uh, uh, the coffee mug. So the envelope, I don't think we can definitively tie this to Kristoff. Just, it, it, they could say, oh, Phoenix wrote this, you know. I have to match it to his handwriting, I guess, but that's not the thing. 
hidden painting. No, but for a large peach in the foreground. Uh, the letterbox, it's empty. Tiny frame. Portrait, it was supposed to be a person. Acrylic, and I see scene of vivid colors. Landscape, finish, rough sketch is still visible. Remember, stamp. Nope, a page. Well, okay. Hmm. And then the letter from Misham. Is it that shrimple? Is it just, look, he mailed him a letter? Why else would he do that? Is it that simple? It's the only thing that seems like an obvious connection. Go. This evidence proves there's a link. Objection. Why are you already objecting? You can't object, you're the witness. That scrap of paper? I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. Can't let you submit that, Apollo Fox. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Hey, that's Daddy's handwriting. What? Mr. Wright's handwriting? What's the meaning of this? I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? Trucy, shut up! I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright? When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habit. If it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Reproduction? Can this... Can this be submitted as evidence? When Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. What? He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin, and the contents of your personal mail. I feel like this can't be legal. <laughs> Any part of the Regardless, this mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. We interrogated a parrot. Let's stop pretending like laws have any power here. Evidence based on a video a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery. Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor Gavin? As embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor, your decision, please. The defense's claim is denied. What? Only actual evidence is permitted in a court of law. Please remove the defense's evidence from the record. Better luck next time, Justice. Well, we've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination, but the defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Kristoff at this point. Apollo, do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence, I don't have anything I can use on him. Very well, this ends the special witness's cross-examination. The show's over, yet the crowd screams for more. Only now do I understand why. Prosecutor Gavin? Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years. And I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean out the family closet, eh, Kristoff? Clavier, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself before you say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine? Or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor, your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Apollo, did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin. The witness is badgering the prosecution. Prosecutor Gavin, try to remember what's really important to you. Fame, success, everything that you've ever wanted and dreamed of, or the truth? You amuse me, Air Forehead. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't, not even once. Seven years ago. Finally, 
You just couldn't resist, could you? Yeah, right. Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. Okie dokie. State your name and occupation for the record. Ma'am! I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Didn't you find anything unnatural about it? Unnatural? Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment, you call in Drew Misham. It was almost as if... Almost as if what? Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Brr. Correct. I knew that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. I knew because you told me, Kristoff. What? It was the night before the trial. All the creatures were stirring. Not... Especially the mouse. Clavier! Kristoff? Oh, I'd seen you at this prosecutor's office the day before the trial. Uh, <laughs> that's how he prepares for a trial. I won't be appearing in the trial, actually. Why not? I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought information. Information? The attorney who will be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen, I want you to call on a special witness. Then... Meep, 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 meep. I wondered about it at the time. How did Kristoff know so much? Prosecutor Gavin. Kristoff, we were supposed to face each other in that trial. A fair fight, brother to brother. I deserved that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You showed me all your research on the case. The victim's belongings? Which would have included Magnify's diary, wouldn't it? Mr. Gavin? My, my, Clavier, you disappoint me. You find trees, yet miss the forest. You're the one missing the forest, Mr. Gavin. You, I think that's just called discovery. The opposing side showed everything to me. I was flabbergasted. That's normal procedure. What? You can't sweep this under the rug, not anymore. Tell me what was going on behind that trial. Why not? I've achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Apollo. I think we're finally going to shine a little light on the black belly of this thing, Trucy. We've done everything we could. I hope it's enough. Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the, the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammary. Two cards. One card. Hit me. Showdown time. That's how poker works. You go, hit me. Enough. And they keep giving you cards. You lose, Gavin. Thanks for the work. Now go. That's why he needed a new attorney. Because he played poker against them. That's great. To be honest, I don't know what his reasons were to this day. As far as I could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost in a game of poker. I can come to no other conclusion. Daddy used to say something. If you want to know a man, you have to compete. Zack wasn't watching his points or the cards. He was watching the man behind the cards, Christoph Gavin. Get good, Zack. <laughs> he hasn't gone to the second blind Bellatro, filthy casual. I couldn't believe it. Phoenix Wright, a second-rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs and has a really good record getting his clients pronounced not guilty. He dismissed me and went with that pitiful excuse for a man. He deserved to die for that error alone. Hold it. So the one who requested that forgery was... Oh, I'm not admitting to anything. My point is, damn it, these two men shamed me and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zach Grammery both deserved what they got. I think these are new sprites for him where he's kind of smirking. He's up to something. I mean, we know what he's up to. So you asked Mr. Mission to forge that evidence. 
so you could win. But then, when you were dismissed as Zach Grammarie's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap. You fed me information about the forgery you made. Then you gave your dirty evidence to him. You are free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. Ha. Ha ha ha. Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. Prosecutor Gavin? Perfectly? You're mad, Kristoff. Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? Cancelled when the defendant vanished. Ah, I get it. So, Kristoff, you've been living in fear for seven years. What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation trashed. You couldn't leave things to chance, so you watched everyone involved with the case for seven years. You know, why do we keep flashing back to... You know he always felt like he was being watched. That's what he said every day for seven years. But I felt it too. Journalists show he's being watched, end quote. Don't you wonder why Zach Grammy got rubbed out after seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? You'll never see the last of me. Wait just a minute. Zach Grammy was seen by this reporter? How is that possible? Was he alive after being gone seven years? Finally, I knew this moment was coming. I just didn't think we'd get here so fast. Zach Grammy gone missing for seven years, Trucy's father. What's wrong, Apollo? Go get him. Right. Leave it to me. You've got it. Leave it to... You've got... Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Kristoff was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember him quite well. Shady Smith, was it? Poisoned in a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The details don't really matter right now. Uh, what matters is that traveler was Zach Grammery. What is it, Apollo? Huh? Keep going. We'll talk about it later. Uh, did did she already know? Maybe he visited with her. Someone please explain this. Yo. What's up, Vasily? How you doing? Welcome. Thank you for the raid. I hope you had a great stream. Um, we are very near the end of this game, so we're deep in the spoilers if you've never seen this game before. I have not played it before, so no spoilers if you do know what's happening. But I appreciate the raid. And I hope you're good. And if you need me to get caught up, I have no idea how to get you caught up. There's a lot happening. Multiple layers of nonsense. But it's good. It all started seven years ago. The great magician Magnifi Grammarie's death started it. Magnifi Grammarie's death and his student, Zach Grammarie, the suspect. Whoever defended Zach in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Yeah, I don't know if it was Alex or, or Kells doing the stream, but I hope you had a good one. Thinking that Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. Drew Mishram? Actually, it was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gavin? Precautions? To keep people from talking, of course. These two know too much. Leave them alive, there'll be nothing but trouble. That's when you planned your poisoning of the forgers. Atroquinine. Applied to a commemorative stamp. But luck was on Mr. Misham's side. The bomb didn't go off. His daughter? She saved him by taking the stamp, I see. But that wasn't the only bomb he set up. The Eridoni nail polish, of course. You noticed something when you requested that forgery. When Vera Misham is nervous, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. What a goddamn psychopath. <laughs> I met someone. They bite their nails. I can use that to poison them if I need to. Ah! That nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been, well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. That person gave me a good luck charm for when I absolutely had to go outside. It protects me. Yes, apparently she received something, a gift. She won't tell me what it was. It was from that client, the one who wanted that note made. It was his insurance. Insurance? As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. 
But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And the nail polish would do the rest. His time bomb sat there for seven years. And then they went off almost simultaneously. Yeah, that's how I feel, Judge. Nail polish doesn't last that long from my experience. Well, it wasn't nail polish, it was poison. If you're finished, may I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. Mr. Gavin, have you heard a single thing we've said? Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. What? Clavia, surely you understand. We're back to the evidence, the lacking evidence. Nothing proves a link between him and the atroquinine that took Mi Drew Misham's life. Objection! What about the restaurant? You killed Zach Grammer here to keep him from talking. I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again if you like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shady Smith about whom we know little else. You can't seriously think I knew he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Misham, suspected in the murder of her father. My trial has been finished for six months now. God, the worst person you want to have commit a murder really is a lawyer, huh? Hmm. I'm afraid we have strayed considerably from our purpose here. This court concurs with the witness. It is defendant Vera Mishram who's on trial here. No, but you were doing so good, Apollo. As long as there is no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find Vera Mishram innocent. Your Honor, Phoenix Wright spent seven years collecting this evidence. You still don't get it, do you? You just don't get it. Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Misham to bite her nails? Oh, he's not. What? It wasn't me, I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips was you. What? What? Evidence is everything. There is nothing more. He just didn't reverse this. I believe this discussion has reached its conclusion. Your Honor! Mr. Justice, you have performed admirably well for a novice attorney. I respect your partner, Phoenix Wright's determination as well. However, without direct proof, you have nothing. Isn't that right, Clavier? Unfortunately, yes, Christoph, you're right. That is, you would have been right until now. What? Did the news not reach your desk in solitary? The eyes of the nation are on this courtroom today. This is the trial case for a new judicial system. That's right. It totally for gore. The jurist system! Jurists, you say? The current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. This new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of a joke? What could we possibly gain by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless, emotional mob of irrational mouth breathers? Way to endear yourself to the jury. Common citizens have something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. He, is, is he saying common sense doesn't exist within the courtroom? Because he's not wrong. Nonsense! There's only room for two in this court. Me and the law. Oh, he is having a time right now. Keep the riffraff out. Out, I say. No, no. They're not in the court, actually. They're watching everything by video camera. <laughs> they had an extra sprite where they're, like, looking at him instead of just looking straight across like they normally do. How can you allow this? Incidentally, the one responsible for making this happen was Phoenix Wright. F Phoenix Wright. So, everything was leading to this, of course. 
Right. 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 Uh huh. Oh. Oh. I won't accept. I can't accept. This is no court. Law. The law is everything. Law is absolute. You let ignorant swine soil your courts. Kristoff, it's over. There's a lot of new sprites showing up at the very end here. I'm not crying. Clavier! The law is absolute. You can't be serious. What? Odd, I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. The real contradictions were the law along the way. The law is the end product of many years of history, the fruit of human knowledge. Like a gem, polished to a gleam through trials and errors. It is this fruit we receive and pass on, and face in our time. Why do you say a fruit, and then instead of listing literally any fruit, he said a gem? Your Honor, are you eating rocks? And it's always changing, growing, nurturing, it is our task as human beings. Except for you, Kristoff, you aren't changing, you've stopped. You're not needed anymore. This game is a commentary on the court system in Japan. I couldn't think of anything to say. Maybe because I still haven't been- I still haven't seen enough. But someday, I'll know what law is. That's a disturbing thing to hear from your defense attorney. And I'll fight to change it if I have to. Okay. Spoilers, he will not. <laughs> Narrator, and that never happened. I see no need to further prolong this trial. This began as the trial of Vera Misham accused of murdering her father. The painter drew Misham. However, several other incidents were reviewed and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your decision. Jurists of the court. For the death of Drew Misham, how do you find the defendant, Vera Misham? Innocent or guilty? What do you think, chat? I turn to you now to consider this matter. Yeah. Oh. Alright. Save. Oh. The save button disappeared. October 9th, 12.48pm, Juris Chambers. This ends the trial for this case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. Defendant Vera Misham is currently in intensive care. If a decision cannot be reached today, it may never be reached. Text your vote now. The factors involved are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? If so, she is guilty. Or was there another reason for Mr. Misham's death? Did another person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been provided for each of you to input your decisions. If th that is all. Please, wait! Number six. Yes, jurist number six. There's something in the jurist handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I have looked into all your dossiers. None of you are involved with the development of the case. With the development of the case, I see. Does that answer your concern? Wh who the hell is number six? It's time for your verdicts. Make your decision in the case against Vera Misham. After seven years, the truth is ready to be heard. Judge wisely, judge well. I don't think I can save. Beep, 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 boop, beep, boop, beep, 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 boop. I- I'm number six? What? Oh, oh. Judge wisely. Yeah, I can't pause or anything. It's fucking Lamarar? Yeah. Eh. Um. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah, I'm tempted to pull it because... I don't know if there's, like, one that might be better than the other. Rather than, like... I'll just do a quick pull. Uh, which? Not guilty. Guilty. I'll give you a minute. No, don't. Why not? Don't pull? Why would you pull if this is good or bad ending? Because if I... Can we do both? I didn't save before this. Because if, 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 if I'm like, oh, well, I, I want to say she's not guilty, right? And everyone's like, no, guilty is the better ending. Then I'm like, okay, I want to know. You see the bad thing. That's true. Probably just want to watch a video. Yeah, I don't think we're going to play the entire thing again anyway. Could look up a video later. I'm probably, just because we're running late, probably just going to end the game and then 
end stream uh, once we're done. But I'll watch it in my own time. It's a landslide. What do we got going on? Not guilty, 90%. Alright, then my instincts were correct. Let's go! Boop! Not guilty. Guiltant. Oh, wait! Ooh. Oh! Oh, I didn't put that to- Oh! And so a verdict was reached October 9th, 2.14 p.m. Shutakomi? The first verdict under the jurist system. Did we see that earlier? Did we ever see Lamarar's wrists? Ever? And was she wearing a goddamn bracelet? Did you really not? No, not at all. No? The final Takumi. Her eyes. What about her eyes? It said that she had beautiful eyes. God damn it. Innocence by unanimous decision. The record will show that when the verdict was announced, special witness Christoph Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than any ever heard before or since. What a great sprite. A laugh that echoed in the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. October 10th, 8.30 a.m., the morning after the trial. In an intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Vera Misham opened her eyes. Why is it the same? I, I guess we're at Phoenix's room. Why are we at the Hickfield Clinic still? Vera, I'm so glad. I don't cry, Apollo. I'm happy too and proud. You did well, Apollo. When I thought about what if Vera, I, hey now, don't you start crying that too. Uh, sorry you had to see us like this. Vera? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If I hadn't, you never would have bitten your nails. No, I was wrong. Staying locked inside like that, clinging to my good luck charm. Vera. When I opened my eyes, I saw you. I finally understood. It's important to be a part of the world. To see things with your own eyes. Looks like that poison had some effect after all. It killed off whatever was holding Vera back from life. I knew you'd pull through, Vera. I mean, that's what Apollo was fighting for the whole time. Your future. I won't forget it. Here, let me thank you. N no, really, it's okay. Whoa! Whoa, look, it's me! I love it, thanks! It's very good. Is that me? She really captured your essence, Apollo. Well, I think so, at least. That reminds me. Do you know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean daddy. Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Uh, I... Uh, no, it's okay. I'm through looking away from the things I've done. I hope I can look him in the eyes again someday and apologize. I'm sure he'd be happy to hear that. He brought all those things for me when he came to visit earlier. You mean that stack of videos? Mr. Wright finished watching them all? You know, I knew my real daddy was alive. Huh? I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. You did what? Well, how? I'm not telling. He promised me that day he went away. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy, but know this, I will be watching and one day I shall return. You're the next Grammarie after all. <laughs> I'm an accomplice. Oh, Trucy. In the end, he couldn't keep that promise, could he? It's okay, Phoenix is my daddy now, even if he can't really play the piano. That he can't. Oh, and I've got you too, even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. Glad I made your list. Hey, hey, come to think of it, where is daddy, the one who can't play? Do you know Apollo? I think he said he had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's a new mommy. Hey. Tee hee. Oh, Trucy. Hmm, yes, Vera? I was wondering, could you show him to me one more? W once more? Sir Hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here goes. Do us an impersonation, Mr. Hat. Objection, man. 
Not loud enough. And I like Miss Magic Underwear better anyway. That's Magic Panties, Apollo. Good. <laughs> Imagining Edgeworth saying, don't call me mommy. It's just, uh, very good. So your memories returned. Mr. Wright, was this all a part of your plan too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn as La Mirar. But you knew my true identity, did you not? That is why you chose me as one of your jurists. Ah, you're thinking into it too much. Besides, there was no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course it's a happy thing. For so long I thought I was alone. But now I know I have children, two dear children. I'm so proud of them. This, too, I think, is thanks to you. Are you gonna tell them? They do not know? Nope. They don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. I will go to them when the time is right. Until then... Uh, don't worry, I'll take care of them for you. They're... They're very important to me, too. A little annoying at times, but still. Have to keep an eye on her, at least. Because I'm the only one who knows she how she really feels on the inside. The time is right now. <laughs> Tell them now. Your bracelet. Yes. I've seen a lot of mysterious things these past seven years. But your bracelets were the strangest of all. I remember meeting him half a year ago now in Christoph Gavin's office. And then I met you. Two fates destined to intertwine, and I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing, that bullet, yet it tore who I was away. I mean... I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Ten years ago, during a simple rehearsal, it was a miracle no one died. But I didn't survive that accident. Trucy's hair tufts are supposed to link Apollo and Trucy. Maybe? That is why I left the troop, my family. The bracelet's not the strangest thing we've seen, no. Now, my memory has returned. I am myself once more. Just like her hair. Kind of look like hair horns. Gotcha. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Speaking of miracles, Vera Misham regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, fate. Sometimes a life is taken, sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they've got something worth living for. Okay. You know that's not true by your own cases. And that's pretty much the end of my story, for now anyway. Still got a long way to go, and this power of mine, well, it needs some work. But there's hope now. We lost it, but somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. Yeah, I think I'll keep at this lawyer thing for a while. Oops, training time, gotta go. Cords of steel. Here comes justice. Oh, I'm bet I'm glad you're staying with the agency, Apollo. It's like like I found my long lost big little brother. Oh. And don't you worry about troop grammar. Truce is on the case. Now that I have this, thanks to Daddy. Trucy Grammarie, frankly, I got my doubts, but Hat Grammarie, now that's pack, that'll pack them in. Whoa, 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 graphics. It's not every day you get a trial that rocks harder than one of our gigs, y'all. Yeah. That's why it's over. The Gaviners are breaking up. The news caused a run on tissues at supermarkets nationwide. Oh no. You are the real stars now. I look forward to our next jam session. Oh, sure, up the next bookmark in, our, in an adventure isn't one of the most debated in the series. <laughs> yeah, people have very strong opinions about these games. Well, it's finally over, you know, thinking about it. I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted and I've got time on my hands, maybe I'll take some lessons. Or maybe I'll take the bar exam again. Can you do that? I mean, I would hope that he's able to get his badge back based off the events of that trial. Thank you for the bits. Thank you so much. I'll get caught up once we're done with this. 
Considering its own merits and not Apollo Justice 2. I quite enjoyed this game. I had a lot of fun with this. More than I was expecting, really. So I was standing around eating snackus the other day when I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch, or better yet, make them ding. The power of science, although the pres preservatives might not be 100% safe. And if you enjoyed this game, you wouldn't like DD. Oh, that's interesting. Is it kind of a one or the other thing for most people? They said a lot of plot threads get abandoned when they change writers to the next game. Mm -hmm. An unlikely event to a wanting Russian fest come to Borscht. The only thing colder than restaurant is Borscht. Da, but if greater challenge is being required... Then come to the hideout. You know who to ask for. Thanks. You still have a job? Why does she still work there? I thought it was just a one-time gig. Rewatching this game made you dislike DD even more. Jeez. Well, I don't know what I'll do next in this franchise. I do think it would be fun to do more in this series. I'm having fun with it. So, Kataki Pastry is getting back to its eastern roots. Spread the culture and all. Yo, boss! Culture time! This is how we write root, capiche? But we're still about giving back to the people. Yo, boss! PR time! And this is how we write people, alright? Not that Waki's paying any attention. Whoa, oh, kids. I'm learning so much traditional Italian. Thanks to the mob. Bizoy! Chinese characters on cake was a fly idea like 3,000 years ago. Believe that. Man, you want to make it today, you got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what's, that's why I made the OG cracker. For real. I know it don't look like no cracker. Gee, what? You want me to call it the OG muffin? I mean, you could. Very great ace attorney like called Tyrion Cuthbert. Attorney of the Arcane. I don't know where all this talk about food's coming from. You ask me, there's only one food and that's noodles. Noodles forever. And burgers. I got a new one too. See this time? I just put a big chunk of salt in the bowl. Why pretend? Eldon's noodles is about the salt. Salt forever. Eat your burgers, Apollo. This fucking guy. My exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me unequivocal adoration of my department. You see, they used to call me Wesley Stinkler and Wesley Sticky Hands. They did, did they? But no longer I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Wesley Sicko reporting. Yes, curiosity is a sickness and I am the cure. Oh, man. That's wonderful. That's a, that's a great... That's a great arc he has there. I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. It's Lamb Roar! Light has returned to my life and with it, joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. Not that they know, I guess. I will think of them when I write my next song. Uh huh. Women. <laughs> Shouts to the localization team. Brusha, brusha, brushel. Brushel here, back on the beat with another interview. Eh? How do I feel about how things turned out? No scoop yet, but journalist confidence in mint condition. End quote! Finally, he's in jail. <laughs> Good ending. I'm glad we got to see Gumshoe, but I can't help but feel a little bit sad that we didn't get to see Maya or uh, Edgeworth again. I've decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I have to see a bit of the world outside to find what to paint. But I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. It's so sweet. The door is open. The world is waiting. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. 
Ooba dooby dooby. Oh. <laughs> Professor Layton! He was there the whole time! That's a very cute drawing. Yay, the end. Lane adventure. The the end question mark? Okay. I was waiting for some like post credits, just like, yes, I've received the memo. I'm on my way, Mr. President. We did it. What do you think? It was great. I enjoyed it. I am not having a single thought. I am not having a single thought. Hey yo, I just have some poo brain. I don't know what I'm saying, and I'm not having a single thought. I appreciate it. You hear me? See how I <laughs> waiting for Edgeworth. Yeah, me waiting for Edgeworth on the phone with the president. Uh, yeah, I, 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 a lot of my biggest kind of quibbles with it are, aren't really fair. It's, it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't have as much to say about Apollo and Trucy as I would Phoenix and Maya. But I feel like from the end of the first Ace Attorney game, I probably knew about as much about Phoenix and Maya. So... What's the tingle icon? That's just a badge. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a thing on the 3DS. Um, I don't even know if I still have it on here. No, I might not. I have some other badges in here. There was a badge arcade that you would spend money, which I never did, but they gave you some free ones. But anyway, um, so you, would, you could unlock just icons to decorate your screen with. So... I missed the Badge Arcade. I mean, I kind of don't... It took like an hour and a half to boot up every time. But thank you. Yeah, it was a long stream. So let me get ra wrapped up here. Um, me plus the stream win. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks so much for hanging. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, I enjoyed the game. Um, in terms of establishing a new cast, I think they did a good job making them fulfill the same roles but be distinct. Like, Apollo isn't just the same as Phoenix. Not that they're drastically different. They're kind of the butt of the joke in the same way, but... They have a different kind of vibe in court. Um, Clavier was great. I really enjoyed him. Um, people mentioned earlier that like he's not quite as brazenly antagonistic to Apollo than the way that Edgeworth is to, to Phoenix, where he's like beneath him. He definitely is a cocky guy, but he immediately feels more multifaceted, whereas Edgeworth took quite a while. It's not that Edgeworth didn't grow on me right away. It's that Edgeworth was immediately just like kind of an asshole and it took a while to be like okay there's complexity there's more going on with him and chat was clearly alluding to the fact that Edgeworth has more going on but I'm like from what I've seen he's just kind of an asshole the character development comes later and it did um but Clavier was a, kind of a very compelling character um not trying to win yeah and, and it doesn't feel like you know, you know it, it was good um they're they're a great combo against each other um so yeah and I really really do like the the perceived mechanic um, other than the man sweating in his armpits, which just took, took me forever to find. Uh, I'm glad I found the hand demon <laughs> quickly. Uh, but I just really like the idea of, like, having to pay attention to their mannerisms as a mechanic. To be like, oh, you're catching them. In the context of a trial, it's kind of absurd to be like, you scratched your neck. Why'd you do that? It seems like that should be overthrown by the, overthrown, overruled by the judge. To be like, stop. But, yeah, it's good. I, I feel like it does provide an extra wrinkle to the trials in the way that the Magatama and the uh, Cyclox added an interesting structural element to the investigation half of the game. I feel like the perception mechanic um, added an extra kind of element on top that I thought was more interesting. It's like a better version of the gimmick from Leighton versus Phoenix of having multiple witnesses and one of them will be like, I gotta say a thing about what this other person said. That was fine for that game. It's not bad or anything. This is just kind of like a smarter version of that. Where it's not just like, here's the answer. I like, I like the puzzly elements of this game. Yeah, I have poo brain while I'm streaming it. Um, but it's still very fun for me to kind of unravel the case and figure out what am I trying to press on? What's the line of questioning? And the fact that the game goes, yeah, you need to perceive something here, but you have to use your brain to figure out which line to look at in the first place and then try to drill down and be like, okay, what part of the statement are they going to be fidgeting towards? Now try to find their tell. There's a couple layers to it that only rarely really hung me up, but in general, I found just really comparable. I like Trish compared to Maya. I like Maya better, but I think, again, part of it's because I spent more time with her, so it's not a fair comparison, but I feel like Maya is just a level of just earnest and over the top. And Trucy's very sweet, and 
admits to crimes, which is endearing. But Maya is just like a special level of silly. That's just very, very charming. Maya's great. But Truce is good too. Game looks amazing. Really playing with and fully pushing mechanics. Yeah. Which is why it's like, it, it, it's a tough thing to come together with all of like, and I also that the cases were mostly very interesting. There were definitely a couple cases in all the previous games where I'm like, this case is a little bit weaker to me. But even the ones I struggled with more, I, I still thought there was enjoyable stuff in there. Um, so good game. I enjoyed it. Thanks for yelling at me to, to check it out. Because I wasn't sure after I played the last one if I was going to do more. Um, and I don't know, I, from where I'm sitting right now, I do not know if I feel compelled, if I'm like, you know what, I'm feeling like staring at a judge for several dozen hours. Um, I don't know if I would finish the rest of this trilogy first. I don't know if I would go to Great Ace Attorney. I do not know. I might have to bring it up on stream or like pull it or something at some point. Not right now, just in the future. I know everyone was like the way people set up case three. I was like, I'm prepared to hate this, but um, I don't know if I'll play investigations or not because I don't have a good way to play it, which is the main thing. Um, so I will see. I was like, no, yeah, there's a lot of other other games on the stream. Grand Series, may, maybe, maybe. I still got to figure that out. Um, probably five, six, then Grace Three, then Grace Three Two, maybe. We'll see. Ugh. But anyway, um, let me get caught up, wrapped up here. It is late. I got to wrap up. Thanks so much for hanging, though. We forget they localized. Yeah, maybe. You can skip six and no one will blame you. I mean, if I if I play five, I gotta play six though, right? Come on. But. Yeah, my, my, my thing is, I know that 5 and 6 were not worked on by Shu Takumi, and people have very mixed opinions about them, but I still think it might be fun to check them out. Again, it's going to kind of depend on how I feel, if and when we get to that. Just go in order. Maybe. Maybe. You play the sequels. Well, yeah, and those are not short games either, so. Did the stream tag come I swear I deleted the drops enabled tag. I need to find out why it keeps popping up. Anyway, um, Reb, thanks for the raid six hours ago. I hope you had a good. DJ, okay, thanks for four and a half years. That's a bunch of months. Thanks for being a good bean. Thank you. Xanry, thanks for 59 months. Almost a Kiwi Key. Atomic Trickstar, thanks for 35 months. Pixel, thanks for 100 bits. Remember, if you get disbarred from law for seven years, just reload. Kale the Dragon, thanks for 62 months. That groovy thing, thanks for five. Still catching on VODs. Glad you continued Ace Attorney. Thank you. I had a fun. Arjato Natsu, thanks for soup. He said the line. And Kiko Mana, thanks for soup. Ooh. Olux Workshop, thanks for 44 months. Vod Watcher crawling out of bed to get that good Prime sub. Back to the EP I go. Enjoy your sleep, G. Wire Mouse, thanks for 100 bits. I love this moment. It forces you to present the false evidence, even though you know it has to be fake, but Phoenix doesn't. Similar moment to make me pull the trigger at the end of MGS3. Obviously a bit sillier. It is really nice. The, the, the kind of, yeah, the couple different layers of like, what does this character know at this point? In terms of a final case being a bunch of overlapping stuff, I think it was paced very well. Um, the structure of it of going back five, going back seven years, then jumping back and forth between seven years and present day, but in a very limited, straightforward capacity was great. It would have been way more overwhelming if it was like a normal investigation for that phrase. I like that it was more structured. So it was good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dave Kaiser, thanks for a bits. I'm pretty sure I can't afford your services, sir. Pixel Kenji, thanks for 100 bits. It's gum shover, folks. Garbage Nirvana, thanks for 96 bits. Between this and Justice for All, if there's one thing his attorney's taught us, it's that you should never defend a magician. Smash Man, thanks for 100 bits. Don't call me on this or recall reading that in the Japanese version, Mike Meekins lost his job as a police officer, not from losing case files, but from losing his gun. Which do you think is worse? Probably losing the gun. Uh, Man Dog, thanks for 42 months. Enjoy your doki. Something, something, meaning of life. So long and thanks for all the fish. Anonymous gifted a sub to Will for his 21st month. Cola, thanks for 42 months. Jerry Doki. Catch you up on part four. Okay, bye. Enjoy. Ryan, thanks for 31 months. Uh, I found a weird girl. She told me to unlock Puppet Berry's cell. She said she wanted it for herself. Should I use the key she gave me to let her in? She was spinning in a chair. Don't trust anything she says. Creeper Chris, thanks for five months. Welcome back. Quincy Morrow, thanks for soup. Some soup to soothe my soul. Don't think I can stay since Storm killed my internet and Data says no to the stream. Friend and I were talking about Barotate. They asked if you had made a plush of him. And I was like, well, he has a box of Barnaby pins he needs to sell first. They said maybe he's hoarding them as a source of his scrunkly powers. I will not confirm nor deny. Uzugitan, thanks for 56 months. Finished case one from the VODs. Now I'm confused. Also in VODland, Past Barry just said how much he liked that the gimmick in this game wasn't Psylocke's. Lol. I'm glad that they came back in a limited capacity. I don't dislike the Cyclops. It took a while for them to grow on me. The main thing that's that worked for me with them here is that you were given these the four locations, four locations. So 
it wasn't as bad as Cyclops in a normal investigation where it's like there's so many places I can go, people I can talk to, it's hard to focus my efforts. This game went check mark. Like in the same way I was complaining, like the investigations I think are the worst paced part of the game for me. Um because I it's I don't want them to tell me exactly what to do, but it's almost too hands off where I'm like, are we done here? And I like having a, a big check mark to be like, you're good. You can, you're done here. You don't need more. There's no more information to pull from here. You're done. Um, so I made it a lot easier to kind of figure out, okay, if I'm missing something. I should play Death Poop. I should get back to Death Poop game. That game looks neat. Guys, investigations. No, if I wasn't streaming, I probably would have a, a walkthrough up just to be like, am I sanity check? Am I good here? Uh, Citizen King gifted a sub to Derp Snazzy. Fickle Cat, 73 months. The Chemist, thanks for six years. Enjoy your uh, your ice key. Thank you so much. H. Nero Nacho, thanks for 45 months. Bought a perceive. Wire mouse, thanks for 100 bits. Uh, yeah, no worries about that. Tom, again, thanks again for the raid and 76 months. End quote. Thank you. Uh, Fasiani, thank you for the raid as well. Agent Redhead and JB Henry, thank you all for the raid so much. I hope you had good streams. If any of you are still around from those raids, thanks for sticking out through the end of the game. He may roll, thanks for 100 bits. Ace 3 laws like Kingdom Hearts Darkness. Let's say yes. Mako, thanks for 100 bits. Even though this game is longer than Ace 23, you beat it in less streams. That just goes to show how much better you are getting at these games. Maybe. Maybe. When you do come back to the series, I think you should play Great Ace Attorney next since it's the last Ace Attorney game Shu Takumi made. Both games are longer with them being 30 plus hours each, but worth it. Can't wait until you play Shu Takumi's best work. Thank you. Did he work on... I thought he worked on both. I might have misread. But I thought he worked on both Great Ace Attorney games, right? In my new office temporary. I, it's new. I am streaming from home and uh, I'm having a good time. He did. Gotcha. He did both. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that's why I'm like, I'm leaning towards that, but maybe I'll be like, you know what? Let's do some more Apollo before we meet Herlock Sholmes. So that's why I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of like 50 50 on it, but it's not going to be right away. So as there's a billion games I got to finish. Thanks. It's funny, I just re-downloaded Hades to be like, I think Hades 2 is going to be releasing in early access soon, and I wanted to finish the epilogue in that. And then lo and behold, today, literally two days ago, I downloaded Hades, and then today they're like, Hades 2, technical test. Did I apply? No. I did not apply for the early release, because I'm just going to buy... So I'm planning on doing the same thing with Hades 2 as I did with Hades 1, which is buy it day one, early access, play through the early access content, and then not touch it until 1.0. Because that's what I did with Hades 1, and I had a great time. Because it gave me kind of a foundation of what the game was. I've been playing Super Giants games since Bastion. Uh, uh, they're, they're all great. So I was like, I don't care what Hades is. A new Super Giant game, I'm there day one. Uh, so I streamed it, if you're interested. I streamed the first release of Hades on like day one or two. Um, and then didn't touch it to 1.0, which was good. See you on the said No. Uh, Kings Mariah, thanks for 100 bits. Thanks for streaming this game. It's been a fun watch. Thanks. I appreciate it. I, obviously, chat's excitement is a big part of why I enjoy streaming these games. It's been a lot of fun for me. And getting to, to, to see everyone be excited for it is, is fun for me, too. So thank you. Arbiter Arjun, thanks for 100 bits. One more brushel for the road. End quote. Thank you. Jacob Megan, thanks for 100 bits. Congrats on finishing Apollo. I have mixed feelings on it. And a few, there were a few that were several missed routines. Uh, to make it even better, but all in all solid. Glad you enjoyed it as much as you did. Also, I posted the Zach Graham read to the meme parlor. If anyone wants to read it. Oh, thank you. Satchima Bob, thanks for 100 bits. Kratz on completing the game. I now need to speed through all the four Ace Attorney games I haven't played yet. So I can watch your next stream. You have time. I'm not playing another Ace Attorney game for a minute. The last one was already months ago. So you have probably about that much time before I'm like... Unless there's a big... Unless there's like a month where there's no games that come out that I'm interested in. Then I might be like, all right, maybe we'll see. Saw the marriage tweet. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, I got I got the ring a ling. Oh, do, do, do. Thank you. Yeah, uh, ba, ba, ba. Mr. Max M. Thanks for your hammy. Now, you know, now, you know, hope you enjoyed. Yeah, that was a doozy. That was fun, though. Thank you. Argento Nazi. Thanks for nice six bits. I'm still mad at Lamarar. Yeah, I, I'm a big, uh, uh, a big hater <laughs> of of like the kind of soap opera family drama, and they're like, well, now you know the truth. Your amnesia was cured. And they're like, I'll tell them when the time is right. Just tell them now. <laughs> what are you waiting for? So, yeah. Luba Duma, thanks for soup. And the verdict is poo brain. Always has been. But Bump is Cromwell, thanks for 10 months. The structure of the overall story was great at setting up Kristoff and the mysteries around him. Absolutely. From case one. Anonymous gifted a sub to Chris42 for their second month. Enjoy the bronze key and the emotes. Thank you so much, Anon. Smash links with other bits. 
Maybe I missed something. I like to rant about the fact that Phoenix ended up resorting to actually using forged evidence in the first case. It doesn't feel right. Even if his ultimate take down Kristoff, who otherwise wouldn't have been caught, then Kristoff might replace Manfred in terms of disproportionate retribution king. Apparently concocted an elaborate revenge plan just because some guy chose to have Phoenix represent him over Kristoff. That's definitely part of it. Um, I thought the whole point was that Phoenix didn't intentionally know... He didn't know that it was forged. He, he, what happened to him was the same thing that happened to Apollo in case one. Where someone shows up and says, here's some evidence that'll help you, mister. And they're like, uh, okay. And then in court, they're like, here you go. And then later it turns out, actually, it's not. Oh, the card. Yeah, because then he kind of did the same thing to us. Gotcha. You're, I, th I thought you were talking about the case from seven years prior. prior. That's fair. Um, yeah, no, you're totally entitled to be like, that's a bummer that Phoenix did that. But... I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I, 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 I what I said before, which I, I still feel the same way about, is that if we flashed forward seven years or what? Yeah, seven years. Um, and we're playing as this new rookie attorney, and then you're just in Phoenix's shadow because he's still kicking ass and still the great dude he always has been. That's not as interesting. You're like, well, now I want to be Phoenix. Why am I taking these crappy cases that I'm scrabbling around with, and I'm like looking up to this guy? It's more interesting from a narrative perspective to me to have a new character and have this guy taken down a million pegs and be like what the hell happened to you because now you're like the only lawyer worth the shit in this game you're not like why doesn't phoenix take this case that's never a question it's not on the on the table it's not in the cards so better choice than me and him that's the thing is he could have been your 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 counsel just kind of being like well what do you think you should do and like i would probably would have just been like i wish i was just phoenix right now with maya like that's what I know, and it's what I'm fun, what I'm familiar with, so. Yeah, you could make an MGS2 comparison there a bit, where, where like, with, but in, in MGS2, it's deliberate. You're meant to be like, I'm riding and I don't like it. <laughs> the, the game's kind of about that and deconstructing that, where you finally see Salt Snake and you're like, he's so cool, and I'm running around naked, coughing and sneezing. This sucks. Like, that's part of the game. Um, that's not a f p positive emotion. Um... So it would feel strange if that's what they did here. So I, I, that's why it's like, in terms of having a new protagonist, I find it interesting they went with someone new. I respect that Shu was like, I, there's nowhere else for Phoenix to go. Um, and he was like, the only way to go is down. And to give you a new attorney is like, it's an excuse because the reason that I play these games and I find them interesting is the cases and the mysteries and, and the, the, the puzzle element of it all of who did what and how and the motivation and how it all came together and this clockwork contraption. Um, the, 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 the protagonists and the supporting cast are important to me, but it's not the primary draw for me. Um, and so it's like a justified excuse to do more shenanigans with a new cast. So down, but secretly up, he's hot now. <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah, but thank you though. I appreciate it. I got to get the hell out of here. It's late. I got to have dinner and etc. Um, but let me, let me find someone to kick y'all over to. But again, I really appreciate y'all hanging. Thanks again for... Watch me be a uh, poo brain as I stumble through these games. It's a good time. Um, do, 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 do. Let's go raid a uh, squidly. Yeah. Uh, squidly is, uh, if you're not familiar, an indie dev working on Renane, which looks rad. You should wishlist it. Um, and he's currently playing Ludum Dare games I, I, from the looks of it. I don't know if he made a game for Ludum Dare or what. I don't know, but it seems cool. Did Apollo read his hamburgers? He's considering it. Fancy Panda, thanks for your bits. Looking at the logo in the corner of Apollo, just realized it looks like the super easy swap for Gam of a gotcha hand in the highlights. The tiny Ike? Oh, kind of. it kind of do. Hmm. If you do play AA5 and 3DS, you can't get the DLC case, which is worth playing RIP. I would never. There's a DLC case for the fifth Ace Attorney game, and I can't... Because the eShop is down forever. Oh. And six. Oh. Because in 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 um Layton versus Phoenix, I was able to still download oh but was that before the eShop? No, that wasn't before the eShop went down. But that was a separate download process. That wasn't through the eShop. I didn't have to buy anything. It's including the remaster on Steam. Hmm. So a different platform would be fine. Gotcha. So it wouldn't be a huge loss. I don't know what a raid message is, by the way. Uh, objection? Bar perceive? I don't know. Whatever sounds good to you. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I could play the HD remake. I'm enjoying the pixel art, but also I think the ones after this are 3D models, maybe. I don't know. Bye!
Thanks for watching. Get the hell out of here. You get going get. Thanks for watching, VOD watchers. I'm gonna go. I gotta piss. And also, it's hot as fuck in this room. I gotta open the door. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time watching these games. These streams. I'm gonna go. If you have thoughts about if I should do more of this, let me know. If you strongly feel about the other games in the, the Apollo trilogy or Greatest Journey or whatever it might be. Thanks again. And I'm gonna go. Bang.